College Football 25 is out and the Dynasty mode has a ton of new features that are going to make it so much more exciting and dynamic. And to take advantage of all the new mechanics, I wanted to do something crazy. And I reset College Football to 2002 and re-simulated history till 2023. So for each season, I will create the top 23 recruits from the real life recruiting class of that season. And then we will track the recruiting process to see where each one of them ends up. The recruiting in College Football 25 is completely revamped and adds a ton of depth to the whole process and now there's a whole new off-season transfer portal so when star players are unhappy they can leave and join a new program and the recruiting process will be what catapults teams to the top of the college football world we will also follow along with each season looking at player stats tracking team records jumping into some of the biggest games from the season to watch live plus there is now the college football playoffs so we'll be following along with that and we will see who is crowned national champion at the end of each season in total i created over 420 recruits over 19 recruiting classes and will be simulating through 21 seasons and this series will be four parts in total and will be 12 hours long all right boys so here we go this is going to be part three of this rebuilding series now first two parts are already out started in 2003 first video went all the way till 2007 second video went from 08 to 2012 so we are going to be in the 2013 season there are going to be five seasons in this video then there will be six seasons in the last video and that will be it so it's gonna be a four-part series now just giving you guys a kind of bit more of a rundown on what this is so I reset college football and the big way that I reset college football in this game is I make recruits put them in the recruiting cycle each season and then we follow along see where they sign and then we just kind of track along with all of those players careers and just kind of follow along with college football so in last episode's video the five national National champions were in 08 it was Oregon 09 Auburn 2010 Texas 2011 Georgia 2012 Stanford this is going to be 2013 I have a recruiting class made for this um, season as well which we'll get into a set in a second but real quick I would just want to show you guys some of the rosters so we follow along with these recruits we follow along with the teams and we will hop in and watch games live sometimes we'll watch some like Big Ten Big 12 you know some championship games of the big conferences but most we're focused on the college football playoff with that being a new addition to the CFB 25 game that wasn't in the previous NCAA games. So just we'll look at some of the top players right now. Then we'll look at the recruiting classes. Then we'll come back over to this area and I'll show you guys more of an in-depth look at the teams later. So just kind of some of the top players. So right now, Terrell Pryor is the number one quarterback in the country. He's had a really good start to his career. In this game, there is very little customization you can do at actually to the players so before you can adjust all their ratings adjust where they're from and then just put them in the recruiting cycle and you know watch where they went now I gotta kind of jimmy rig it so basically I'll go in find the best quarterback recruit that's from kind of a similar area of the country most of the time or whatever position running back receiver try to find a five star from that area who has a similar archetype as far as how he plays so, and I try to get the skin color right this guy was actually white where obviously Terrell Pryor was a light-skinned guy usually i'm pretty much bang on but this guy just fit Terrell Pryor really good and he ended up going to Ohio State so that is kind of how the process goes if you look at this guy's stats he's been a three-year starter his freshman year was actually insane 47 touchdowns eight picks 53 touchdowns last year I'm assuming they changed their offense didn't really pass the ball quite as much he also ran for 780 yards as a freshman so Pryor one of the best players in the sim 100% he's trying to win a national championship this year we also got Cam Newton now Cam really close to our real life Cam Newton so I'll assign a player to be that guy in the recruiting process then the only information I can actually adjust on guys is their name the hand they throw the ball with you can change their position you can change their physique so you can make them taller and heavier but you can't change their skin color or how they look at all and then you can change their gear so I try to make Cam Newton you know look like he did at Auburn Cam he won the Heisman I think two years ago I think he had probably the best single season out of any player in the sim he was absolutely insane he's in his senior season as well we'll look at his stats I think it was two years ago he passed for 4,700 yards 54 touchdowns six picks for 339 a game 
he was just like absolutely insane also ran for 360 yards that year he did win the heisman i'm sure he's been multiple time all american as well so terrell Pryor, cam newton some of our biggest qbs kellen moore is actually the backup for terrell Pryor at ohio state keep going down we just lost russell wilson he was one of the better quarterbacks in the sim we got andrew luck at stanford so sometimes the guys will go like to their real life school like Andrew Luck did, but a lot of the times, obviously, they won't. We have no control over that. Luck, only an 85, but we'll see too these guys have star development traits you can see in the bottom left some guys have normal some guys have impact so there's different development traits that each guy can have that will dictate how much they get better now there's also different abilities that they can have as well that are going to affect how they play so andrew luck coming off winning the national championship at, at stanford last year he's had a really really good start and they could have him unless he leaves early for the next two years we also have rg3 at marshall he's going to be a senior this year 84 overall 90 one speed then we do have a good crew of young guys coming in at qb which maybe we can get into more when we break down the teams we also have Derek carr only a sophomore starting at usc can click in on here he's got star development trait he was a five-star quarterback as well uh can look at some of the running backs here we got marcus Lattimore. Who's only a sophomore up to already an 89 at Boston College. We got Mark Ingram, who ended up back at Alabama. So big time backer for them. We got Michael James, who ended up at Texas. Eddie Lacy at SMU. Then all, all these other guys are obviously going to be auto-generated players that are just in the normal recruiting class. Getting into receivers, we got Josh Gordon at TCU, who had over a thousand yards as a freshman last year, who was really good. We got Tavon Austin, 88 overall uh, sophomore at Clemson. He ended up there. Clemson has a lot of our guys right now. We're going to get more into uh, actually breaking down some of the teams here later. We've got Alshon Jeffrey at South Carolina. Those might be the big guys. And all those guys were like sophomores. Like we have some really good receivers kind of in, in coming along here over the next few seasons. Then you'll notice I put an apostrophe by these guys' names as well. That just makes it easier when I'm rolling through all the lists of players and stuff to see one of those. And I, oh, that's one of our guys right there. So that's why I kind of do that. Uh, Kendall Wright at TCU. So TCU's got him and Josh Gordon. They were actually teammates at Baylor, which is kind of funny. Uh, Travis Kelsey, one of the best tight ends in the country right now at Nebraska. Um, defensive ends. We got Daquan Bowers at Miami, who is one of the best, biggest recruits in the country in the sim and in real life. Uh, right end, we got Everson Griffin at, at Oregon, who played at USC in real life, but he's here. We got Cam Hayward at Wisconsin. Big time, big time kind of interior, inside, outside pass rusher type on the end. Uh, Vaughn Miller at L LSU, going to be a senior for them, speed rusher archetype moving to d tackle we got marvin austin really good at ohio state marcel darius at miami really good as well outside backer middle we have bobby wagner only a sophomore red shirt sophomore and he's a 96 overall one of the best players in the country so bobby wagner at clemson looks like an absolute freak show manti teo at uh outside linebacker for oregon 89 overall is a sophomore so he's really good courtney upshaw jr at alabama he went to his real life school moving on to corners janoris jenkins at ohio state one of the best corners in the country drake Patrick at Miami, only a sophomore up to a 88. So he looks really good. Patrick Peterson, a junior at Alabama. So some really good corners. Free safety, Will Hill. Uh, senior at Florida, good player. Harrison Smith, senior at Penn State. Then strong safeties. Eric Reed, who's only a sophomore at Washington, 86 overall, so one of the best safeties. Okay, so that's some of the best players in the country. Just I kind of want to show you guys that. Now, to get a little bit deeper into just how the recruiting goes, I'm only going to touch on this at kind of at the start of each video, but basically, right here, so we can go by quarterback. I have Jameis Winston here. So I tried to find the player in the recruiting class that matches matches up best with Jameis Winston and basically assign him that guy. Then once he signs with the school, then I can go in, change his name, change his height and weight and change his gear to make him look more like the Jameis Winston who actually played at Florida State in real life. So the one who fits the best is going to be this quarterback right here. He is the number one QB in the class. He's going to be a five-star recruit, number two player nationally. He's from a similar area of the country. He's going to be an improviser archetype where he's a bit probably more of a field general, but I try to match their skin, obviously, tone, color to their real life counterpart, and this guy's going to do that. So overall, I thought this was a great fit for Jameis 
Winston, and I do this for every player in the class each year. So if we look at his top five schools, it's going to be LSU, Ole Miss, Auburn, Texas, and Alabama. So definitely a group of schools that the real life Jameis Winston would have definitely been, you know, interested in. Then the other real life quarterback in this class is going to be Paxton Lynch. Now, Paxton Lynch played at Memphis, but he's actually from the state of Florida. Big, big player. I think he was either a really high second round or late first round pick by the Denver Broncos. Bit of a bust in the NFL, but was pretty good in college. So this guy is going to be from Florida also. Improviser archetype Paxton actually was a really good runner. This guy's only 6'1", but we can up his size once he signs. And he's looking at Florida State, Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, and LSU. Big five-star recruit. So then the rest of these guys like this, Hines, Waller, Spalding, McMahon, these are guys are going to be staying auto-gem players. So obviously where these guys, like this guy's the number 10 player in the country. Obviously where he goes is going to be important. He could turn out to be really, really good. He's looking at LSU, Texas, Alabama, Mississippi State, Florida State. But we're not going to be focusing on those guys as much just because, you know, it's more interesting for me to look at the real life players, kind of track them, and then the, and then we'll kind of see who the other stars of college football are as we go. Okay, getting into running backs, and we have two. The number one real life back is going to be Todd Gurley. Now, Gurley played at Georgia in real life. So he's going to be a five-star recruit right here, 17th player in the country. He is from North Carolina in real life, kind of could have went anywhere in the country. And right now he's looking at Texas, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Kansas State, Florida State. A bunch of the big, biggest schools in the country for sure. Then the other back is going to be Kenyon Drake. Now, Kenyon's from Georgia, but he actually played at Alabama. Here he's going to be a four-star running back, elusive back archetype, going to be a four-star, and he's going to be looking at Ole Miss, Auburn, Mississippi State, Florida State, and Tennessee. He was, you know, Kenyon was really good at Alabama, had actually a really nice NFL career as well. Okay, getting into our wideouts, and we have four. So the first one is going to be Amari Cooper. Now, Cooper played at Alabama, but he's from Florida. It's like a top 10 pick by the Raiders, really long NFL career, really good in college, route runner archetype, and he's Amari's one of the best route runners in the world. Um, Five-star, big-time recruit right here, and he's looking at Georgia, Miami, Florida, Florida State, Wake Forest. We also have Sterling Shepard. Now, Shepard's from Oklahoma and played at Oklahoma. Five-star recruit right here. He was a second-round pick by the Giants in the NFL draft. He's going to be looking at Kansas State, Nebraska, Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, and Michigan State. Next up, we have Stephon Diggs. Now, Diggs in real life from, uh, played at Maryland. Here, he's going to be a four-star recruit route runner archetype we can obviously adjust his size up a little bit he's more like six feet six feet six foot one and he's gonna be looking at florida state georgia Clemson, Florida, and UNC. Obviously, he's been really good with the Vikings and the Bills in the NFL, now playing for the Texans. Then our last um, prospect is going to be Doriel Green Beckham. Now, Green Beckham was actually the number one overall recruit in this class. He's a wide receiver. He's like 6'5", 6'6". He was out of Missouri, played for Mizzou in real life. So this guy's going to be a deep threat archetype, 6'4", four, four-star recruit. Now, this guy was, Doriel Green Beckham was kind of a bust in college and in the NFL. Got suspended, but he was a super big recruit, so I wanted to include him. He's going to be a four-star, 63rd player in the country. He's looking at Bama, Auburn, Georgia, Tennessee, and uh, Clemson. Now, we have no tight ends in this class. We do have three offensive tackles. Now, the first one is going to be Ronnie Stanley. Now, Stanley is from Nevada, but he played at Notre Dame. So, kind of from, you know, more of the southwest area of the country, but ended up in Notre Dame. Going to be a pass protector archetype, five-star recruit. He was a first-round pick by the Ravens in the NFL draft. He's looking at Texas, Oregon, Oklahoma, U.S in Alabama. Next up, we have DJ Humphreys. Humphreys played at Florida, but he's from North Carolina. Pass protector archetype, he's going to be a five-star recruit. Um, and he's looking at Alabama, Clemson, LSU, Ohio State, Penn State. And then our other one is going to be Taylor Decker. Now, Decker's from Ohio, played at Ohio State. Here, he's going to be a four-star recruit. He's looking at Wisconsin, Ohio State, Michigan State, Michigan, and Penn State. Moving on to guard slash center. I actually had to move this guy into center and it is going to be Josh Garnett. Now, Garnett was from the state of Washington, played at Stanford, was one of the number biggest recruits in the country. I moved him into center because this player fit him really good. A five-star fourth player in the, in the country. He's going to be more from the West 
coast area of the of the country and he's going to be looking at oregon utah byu stanford and colorado which are all kind of schools that he actually would have been considering in real life okay moving on to dns we got three so the first one is going to be dante fowler fowler played at florida he's from florida here he's going to be a five-star third player in the whole country speed rusher archetype just like fowler fowler was the third overall pick by the jaguars in the nfl draft so he's going to be looking at florida florida state miami so the three big florida schools then georgia and clemson as well next up we have leonard williams now williams is actually from florida but went all the way across the country to play at usc he's going to be a five-star recruit six player in the whole country 6'4 280 which is actually pretty similar to what leonard will be i think more like 6'5 even a little bit heavier but really good player drafted in the top 10 by the new york jets really good in the nfl really good at usc so he's going to be looking at oklahoma oklahoma state arkansas texas and lsu then our other one is going to be eric armstead now armstead is from california but played at oregon was a top 10 pick by the 49ers in the nfl draft gonna be a four-star recruit run star stopper archetype we're gonna make him a little taller but his weight is pretty similar he's gonna be looking at ucla usc oregon stanford and cal so all kind of those west coast teams okay moving on to d tackle and the first one is going to be Eddie Goldman. Now, Goldman is actually from Washington, D.C., but played at Florida State. So actually more up north, even though he played at Florida State. He's going to be the number one player in the whole country. Speed rusher archetypes, so good interior pass rusher from the outside. And it looks like he's going to be playing more in the Midwest. So he likes Wisconsin, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Michigan State, and Michigan. But like I said, he is actually from more of the north area of the country. Uh, then the other defensive lineman is going to be DeForest Buckner. Now, Buckner is kind of a DN, D tackle hybrid. He played at Oregon with Eric Armstead. He is from Hawaii. It's really hard to find recruits from Hawaii. So I put him in California. I found a guy in Cali because, you know, that's going to fit him well. Power rusher archetype on the inside. Four star recruit. He was a top 10 pick by the Niners as well. Got draft uh, traded to the Colts in real life. And he's going to be looking at USC, UCLA, Stanford, UNLV, and Utah. So kind of staying in that. That West Coast area. Moving on to linebackers. And the first one is going to be Leonard Floyd. Now, Leonard Floyd played at Georgia. He's a big, long outside linebacker pass rusher, just like this guy. So 6'5", 235, power rusher archetype as a outside linebacker, not a DN though. He's going to be looking at Florida, Miami, Florida State, Clemson, and Georgia. Then we also have Shaq Thompson. Now, Shaq from California, but went up and played at Washington. Really good outside linebacker in, in college. Played a bit of like running back as well at Washington. Got drafted by the Panthers in the first or second round played with them for the last like 10 years this guy's gonna be from cali run stopper archetype four star recruit and he's gonna be looking at usc ucla arizona state san diego state and stanford and our last linebacker is gonna be Reggie Raglan. Now, Raglan played at Alabama. This guy's going to be a four-star recruit, pass coverage archetype. Raglan's bigger than this. We're going to up his size a little bit, but looking like he's going to stay in that area of the country. He's looking at Georgia, Florida State, Alabama, so kind of down south, and then two north teams as well with Ohio State and Michigan. For a cornerback, we have one real-life recruit in this class. It is going to be Ronald Darby. Now, Darby played at Florida State. He's going to be a five-star recruit here, number eight player in the whole country. He's going to be looking at Georgia, Alabama, Clemson, Tennessee, and Auburn. Okay, getting into our safeties. The first one is going to be Marcus May. Now, May is going to be a five-star recruit. He played at Florida in real life. He's from the state. 16th player in the whole country. He is going to be looking at Florida State, Georgia, Auburn, Florida, and um, UAB. And then our other safety is going to be Landon Collins. Now, Collins played at Alabama, but he's actually from the state of Louisiana. Got drafted by the Giants or Redskins. I know he's played for both of them in the NFL. Really, really good at Alabama, though. Hasn't been quite as good in the NFL, but was sick in college. Going to be a five-star star recruit 21st player in the whole country his number one school is going to be alabama like in real life then also texas tech stanford oklahoma state and ohio state so that is the recruiting class guys and we're basically going to check on that again at the mid-season point and we'll see kind of halfway through the season where some of the guys have signed and then we'll look at that again at national signing day okay so now we're going to actually advance into the regular season here and now that we're at the start of the season, we can look at the top 25 and we'll get a look at where everyone's ranked. So Stanford's actually defending national champs, but Wisconsin's ranked ahead of them. We got Oregon, Ole Miss, Kansas State, NC State, UW, West Virginia, Florida State with Cam Newton, Ohio State with Terrell Pryor, Georgia, 
Notre Dame, Alabama, Penn State, Miami, all 90 overall. So that's kind of where we're sitting right now. Obviously, there is the 12-team playoff as well now. So, you know, you just got to get in the top 12 and you have a chance. Looking at the Heisman, the Heisman, I really think they need to adjust. Preseason here, we have a bunch, four running backs and a wide receiver. A ton of wide receivers win the Heisman with like, 1200 yards and like 10 touchdowns and the win the Heisman over a quarterback with like 4500 yards so I haven't been paying super close attention to the Heisman race just because I feel like it's kind of broken right now but it is what it is okay now I want to kind of go in and look at some of the individual teams um so we'll kind of go through some of the highest ranked teams in the country look, do a bit of a deep dive on their roster so here's Bama's and one thing you'll notice too if this is your first time watching one of my videos but you used to watch my NCAA 14 videos the overalls are way less so in those videos I, I, sometimes my team would have like 15 guys who are 99 overall it is very rare like actually we'll just go look like i don't even know if there's 199 no there's a there's 397s in the country right now so you got to kind of keep that into account like a guy who's above a 90 overall is one of the best players in the country so here kind of going down to alabama they got cartney upshaw they got mark ingram they got patrick peterson for some of our real life guys and they got some young guys with dominic easily vic beasley um on defense D Milner. Uh, they do have a Blaine Gabbert, who's their backup quarterback. This louder milk, they just kind of started over him. Looks like Gabbert might start next year, will be his big shot. But they have a ton of our real life guys on defense. Um, looking down, Clemson. Now, these guys have a ton of our guys with Bobby Wagner. Um, they got Chance Warmack. They got Tavon Austin, LaMarcus Joyner. But where it's really interesting, they have a senior quarterback this year with this Greg Matlock. But then next year, they're going to have Marcus Mariota. So he's a true freshman this year. He was one of the biggest recruits in the country, 92 speed. And he's from California. He's obviously from Hawaii in real life, but I put him from California. And he went all the way across the country. Country. He's only got normal development trait, which kind of sucks, but really good abilities. He's fast. He can throw the ball deep. So really excited to see what Mariota can do with Clemson. Florida State, another really interesting team this year. They have a lot of 90s. They have guys on the O-line, you know, three on the O-line right here. Some guys in their front seven. They have a really good wide receiver, 91 overall. And then obviously they have Cam Newton. So Cam Newton, 90 overall, senior quarterback, 94 speed, 91 throw power, good accuracy, throw on the run, legit just one of the best players in the whole sport right now. He won the Heisman two years ago. Good receiving core. It was a little better last year, but still really good. So Florida State definitely has a shot. Georgia, they used to get a lot of our recruits. Not as many the last few years, I feel like. They got uh, Jadavon Clowney last year. So they got one of the number one players in the country. I think he was the third overall recruit. Going to be a 6'6", 260 outside linebacker. Impact development trait. So he has a chance to get really good. They also got this Cyrus guy. He's an offensive lineman who went to BAM in real life. He looks like he could be really good. So they got a couple of big guys in this last recruiting class on like O and D line. LSU, they got one of the Pouncy twins and they got uh, Vaughn Miller, but they're not great overall right now. Marshall, if they go on a run, I mean, they have RG3 as their quarterback. So I, I would definitely not be opposed to seeing them go on a run at all. Another team here. So Miami, um, they have some of our guys. They got Marcel Darius. They have a good squad overall. I don't know who their QB is. 87 overall. They got a couple of 87s who they could pick to start from. Some offensive linemen. Got really good linebacking core. They got Marcel Darius, Quan Bowers, Alec Ogletree, who's a redshirt freshman up to a 89 overall already. Trey Kirkpatrick. So a bunch of guys on defense. They got Ha Ha Clinton Dix coming in as a freshman right now. Really good overall. Just Justin Hunter at wide receiver. So they have a ton of our real life guys. Now, Michigan, this is an interesting team. Some O-line, really good running back this year. They got Jake Matthews on O-line. But what we're going to be keeping our eye on is it looks like Braxton Miller is going to start for them at quarterback. Now, Braxton Miller played quarterback receiver at Ohio State in real life. Here, he's going to be a Michigan man. Good speed. He's got impact development trait. 91 speed, 92 throw power. So he has a chance to be a really good player. It looks like he could even end up being possibly a four-year starter at Michigan. Ohio State, they have obviously Marvin Austin. They got Jenkins, Kellen Moore, Terrell Pryor. Um, JJ Watt at D tackle. So they have a ton of our real life guys, all kind of 
older now. They haven't been getting as many the last few years, but definitely going to have to keep our eye on them. Oregon been consistently one of the best teams in the country. who have been recruiting amazingly well defensively. They have Everson Griffin right now. They have Manti Teo. I don't know if they have anyone else, but oh, they have Anthony Barr as well. Redshirt freshman on defense. So they just do a really good job at recruiting defense. And they're always one of the best defenses in the country. I feel like Penn State, uh, they got Central Henderson, redshirt freshman left tackle who's already a 90 overall. William Golston, sophomore, 86 overall. Harrison Smith, I feel like they got an impact player on offense though. Oh, they got young Sammy Watkins coming in the door. We have a bunch of really good young wide receivers in this in the last recruiting class of last year's video. So that will be interesting to keep our eye on. They're all kind of just spread throughout the country. TCU, they have one of the best receivers in the country with Josh Gordon. Really, really good last year. I think he had a thousand yards as a redshirt freshman. He's got impact development trait. Let's just look at his stats. Almost 1,100 yards and 12 touchdowns in his first year last year at TCU. Texas, this is another team we want to keep our eye on. They got some good players at the top of their roster, LaMichael James, but what is really going to be the interesting thing, they got true freshman Johnny Manziel in the last recruiting class. So Johnny Football is going to be stepping in the door as a true freshman, star development trait. He has some really good abilities, magician, option king, extender, off-platform, he has a chance to be an absolute stud. So it could be a four-year starter at Texas. They also have LaMichael James. They also got DeAnthony Thomas from Oregon's real life team in last year's recruiting class. Not a great group of receivers, but this guy's a redshirt freshman, 87 overall. So throw the ball to him a ton. Definitely want to see Texas go on a run over one of these few next upcoming years. USC. Not great, but they do have Derek Carr starting 82 overall sophomore. So I'm going to see Carr for quite a few years there. Washington has a really good team, 97 overall. Eric Reed. I think they have a receiver too. I think they have Justin Blackman, who's going to be their th number three receiver this year. Good quarterback, so we'll see what they can do. Um, Wisconsin, Wisconsin's interesting, so good tight end. They got Cam Hayward on the D-line, just really good players all the way down. Not great at QB, but for whatever reason, they get just really good re receivers in each class. They got Julio Jones a few years ago, who has still hasn't played a ton. That's the other thing with this. Because I create these players and put, put them as certain players, I can affect their overall or their development traits before they are created. So sometimes guys are big time recruits. Like Devontae Adams was a five star recruit. He does have star development trait, but he only is starting as a 72 overall. And even though he is a five star recruit, some guys will start as an 81 overall. Or sometimes they'll start as an 81 overall, like Marcus Mariota, but he has normal development traits. So he might not actually improve that that much. So that is something that's kind of interesting with doing it this way in this sim is I don't have control over that. I can't just make everyone like 99 potential, really good development traits and just let them rip. So it is a bit more random. Some guys will end up being really good. Other guys are kind of bust and we have no way of controlling that. Okay, so we are going to sim to about the midway point of the season, a little past that. And then we're going to look at the recruiting again. We'll look at the top 25, some stats and just see how everyone's playing. And remember, we will hop in and watch games live. Super sim through, watch some of these, these games live once we get to either the conference championship weekend or college football playoff. Okay, so here we are week 10. We're going to look at the recruiting first. We'll see where some of these big guys have signed. So first up, we have Jameis Winston, and he is committed to LSU. So that is a huge pickup for the Tigers. They get an absolute stud at quarterback, picks them over Ole Miss and Clemson. Then the other guy, Paxton Lynch, is going to go to Michigan, which I actually don't love because we do have Braxton Miller there. I like when these QBs spread out, don't go to the same schools because obviously only one can start. But he picks Michigan over Florida State, Alabama, Ohio State, and Texas Tech. Looking at running backs and the number one running back, Todd Gurley commits to Notre Dame. So Notre Dame gets the number one back, picks them over Ohio State and Kansas State. Kenyon Drake is still up in the air, so he's looking at Ole Miss, Auburn, Mississippi State as his top three. Wide receivers, Sterling Shepard goes to Oklahoma State, so he went to Oklahoma in real life, ends up at Oklahoma State here over Kansas State and Nebraska. Amari Cooper ends up at Miami, so Miami over Georgia and Florida, they get a big time receiver recruit. Then we have Stephon Diggs, and Diggs picks Florida over Florida State. Then lastly, we have Doriel Green Beckham, big 
like outside wide out and he's going to pick Alabama. So is Alabama over at Auburn and Georgia. For offensive tackles, the first one, Stanley is going to go to Oklahoma. Man, they get so many good offensive linemen at Oklahoma over the course of this sim. He picks Oklahoma over, over Oregon, Texas, and USC. Next up, we have DJ Humphreys and he picks Penn State and it was down to Penn State or Oklahoma. So Oklahoma almost got, almost got both those guys. Then lastly, we have Taylor Decker and he's going to go to Michigan. So Ohio State in real life, but he picks Michigan over Michigan State, Kentucky, and um, Ohio State. Josh Garnett went to Stanford in real life. He's leaning Oregon, Utah, or BYU. Okay, moving on defensive end, Dante Fowler is going to pick Miami. So Miami gets Dante Fowler and Amari Cooper so far. Big number three player in the whole country, speed rusher, picks Miami just over Florida State and Clemson. Leonard Williams picks Oklahoma. So they get a couple of big offensive, now defensive linemen, picks Oklahoma, LSU, Tulsa, OSU, and Arkansas. And then lastly, we have Eric Armstead, who picks his real-life Oregon Ducks over Cal and UC. CLA, so he's going to go to his real life alma mater. Okay, moving on to Eddie Goldman. He went to Florida State in real life. Here he is going to go to Wisconsin. So Wisconsin gets the number one overall player in the whole class. Then next up, we have DeForest Buckner. Now Buckner played at Oregon in real life. Here he's looking at USC, UCLA, Stanford, Arizona State as his top four. And then Utah is his fifth. Moving on to outside linebackers, and we have Leonard Floyd, and he is committed to Florida State. So Florida State gets a nice pass rusher. He picks them over Miami. Then we have Shaq Thompson, played at Washington in real life. Here, four-star recruit goes to Arizona State, just picks them over Stanford and USC. And then next up, we have Reggie Ragland, who also goes to Miami. So Miami gets a really good recruiting class so far. They look like they got a bunch of studs. Corner Ronald Darby goes to Florida State in real life. Here he's going to go to Georgia. Picks George over Duke, Clemson, Tennessee, but going to be a dog. Then we get into safeties. First, we have Marcus May. He's top school is going to be Georgia, then Florida State, and then my uh, Florida. So they could get him, Marcus May, and Ronald Darby at Georgia. Then we get into Landon Collins, and he's going to go to Stanford. They are getting a crazy amount of safeties they got tyran matthew in last year's class here they get um landon collins as well so stanford doing work in the secondary i feel like they got a big time corner as well but there we go so that is our recruiting now we are going to look at our uh, college football top 25 here so stan man this team doesn't miss does not miss they are just so consistent throughout this sim they're the only team with two national championships they won in 05 and 2012 they're defending national champs they have andrew luck at quarterback we got auburn miami ohio state michigan washington florida state Oregon, Nebraska, Utah, Kansas State, Baylor. Then kind of on the outside of the top 12, we have Penn State, Georgia, Ole Miss, Liberty, Charlotte, Michigan State, Florida, Mizzou, UCLA, BYU, TCU, Appalachian State, Wisconsin. So for teams that I really want to make it, I really like when the guys with the, our real-life quarterbacks make it just because it's fun to watch those teams. So Stanford with Andrew Luck, Ohio State with Terrell Pryor, Michigan with um, Braxton Miller, Florida State with... Cam Newton definitely want those squads to make it we have no Texas or Clemson I would have liked to see them especially Texas this year with Johnny football but there we go so that's the top 25 Heisman watch so Terrell Pryor in second right now but once again it's gonna be some receiver who gets like 1200 yards who looks like he might win it then we have Cam Newton fifth as well look at just some of the stats here so national point per game, Kentucky scoring 40 a game. That is a ton. Florida State, Miami, Penn State, Utah, Marshall, Alabama, Ohio State, Stanford. Look at defense. Liberty doing work. One of the best offenses and defense in the country. Same with Ohio State, Marshall, Georgia, Clemson, Oregon's pretty high up there as well. Okay, looking at just some season stats here. Here we'll do a deeper dive at the end of the year. So Cam Newton, one of the best seasons right now 32 touchdowns five picks 324 throwing yards or passing yards a game Derek Carr at uh, USC 278 a game 26 touchdowns nine picks we got bro oh, Teddy Bridgewater I forgot so he's starting at LSU right now so it'll be interesting are they gonna start Teddy next year or Jameis Winston also Andrew Luck in there Braxton Miller right here honestly pretty good year for Braxton considering he's a true freshman Luck nice year as well 
rushing usually guys they like rushing is just tuned way down in this game so guys do not rush for a ton of yards LaMichael James kind of high up there Lattimore um that's probably it troll Pryor, actually one of the higher names as a qb so Pryor is just an absolute freak show honestly receiving this guy's already got a thousand yards and, and 14 touchdowns out washington we'll see if we have any of our guys super high not looking like it josh gordon looks like he could get over a thousand again at tcu it's kind of it right now Okay, we'll do a deeper dive on all the stats at the end of the year as well. Okay, so we're going to advance now to conference championship weekend. If there's a really good conference championship game, we can watch it. If not, we'll just get into the college football playoff. Okay, so here's what the conference championship games look like. Is there anything UNLV, Mizzou, Clemson, Georgia Tech, Ohio State, Michigan? We might have to watch this. If Ohio State, so Michigan's the number one team in the country. If Ohio State loses this, they probably aren't in the playoff. And this is two of our real life QBs. So we're definitely going to watch this. And so Ohio State's a 90 overall. Michigan's an 88. Okay, so we are going to sim through the first quarter. That's what I always kind of do. Just sim through the first quarter, kind of see what the score is. Then in the second quarter, we'll start hopping. So it's still 0-0. Zero, zero. 2 nothing Ohio State. So we got a defensive battle here so far. Second and seven, third and three here for Ohio State. We'll watch from here. So prior on he on the Michigan 35 yard line, trying to pick up a first down, go get some points right here. Two nothing Ohio State over the middle, just a little little slant, fires it in, easy yards, keep it moving. Okay, then first and ten again, 12 yard reception down to the 11, loss of gain, then third and 12. So watch here, prior shotgun drops back. Fires, end zone touchdown, TP, hits him on that little skinny post in the back corner of the end zone. That is going to be a Buckeyes touchdown to Hendricks. They are going to be up 9-0 here. So Michigan, Braxton Miller, got to get it going. I'm kind of hoping Ohio State wins because if Ohio State wins, they should get in. Plus, Michigan still should get in. So kind of hoping for that. Third and five, they pick it up. Second and eight, third and six here for Michigan. We'll watch. First time seeing Braxton Miller in at quarterback for the Wolverines. Going to be a dual threat guy. Let's see what he's got. Drops back. Oh, pressure right away. Wow, that got through in an instant. Wow, interior pressure right in Braxton's face. He had no shot. Went down with the sack. Okay, so Ohio State going to get this ball right here. Chance to take a big lead here. They hit for 22, second and six, third and three. Oh, wow, they actually lose yards there and have to punt. Michigan football, second and nine, already third and seven, though. Michigan's got to get it going on offense here. Down 9-0. 333 left in the first half. Um, Braxton in shotgun here on third and seven. Drops back and it's kind of escape. Oh, wow. That was a great play by Braxton. Receiver gets an extra 10, 15 yards on the play. Braxton, little rollout, cross his body on the run. And that's why you have an athletic quarterback there who can make plays like that. Gain four, lose eight on the play there with a sack by Marvin Austin and we got third and long here for the Wolverines so they need to start getting some points here at su oh they're gonna try to set up a screen pass drop it oh wow they might have room here oh he's gonna be a uh, half a yard short I'm probably going for this if I'm Michigan for sure they kicked a field goal. I actually was trying to watch that I accidentally simmed but they ended up kicking a field goal so nine three Ohio State ball First and 10, second and 10 after a big rush. They had a big like 30 yard run. And now they got third and six out of field goal range. So Michigan, you got to get off the field here. Pryor drops back, interior pressure, hit as he throws, he gets it out, breaks a tackle, wow, down inside at like the 11 yard line, great job by Pryor to stick that in there, hits for 27 down to the six now third and five from the six ohio state you can take a really nice halftime lead here prior drops back he's gonna tuck and run one of the best runners in the country dives into the end zone and that is gonna be a touchdown there we go huge play there it is gonna be 16 to 3 ohio state and then they get a sack on Braxton's third and 16, fourth and 15. They're going to have to punt second and 10. Oh my gosh. They got third and 10 right here on the Michigan, like 35. They can get more points right here prior. 
dominating right now over Michigan. Here he's going to take it off, tuck it and run, ton of running room. Oh my God, Terrell Pryor going to slide down. They do have a timeout as well. This kid is just something else, man. Okay, they didn't use their timeout. You have seven seconds, six. Oh, this was a bad use. Oh, there's their timeout. So I think they're just going to kick a field goal now. And good. So Ohio State is dominating Michigan in the Big Ten Championship game right now. So we're actually going to sim through the third quarter now. And then if it's close, we'll hop in some in the fourth. 19-3. So Michigan really just feels like they have no answer offensively. But they are down inside the five-yard line now. Second and goal from the three. So you score here, you make it 19-10. Braxton, shotgun, drops back. End zone, just has him on a little hitch. Fires it in. Michigan, first touchdown of the day. That was desperately needed for the Wolverines. Oh, and they had a big return. They already got it past the 50-yard line now after a Hendricks catch. Second and six, first and 10, second and seven, first and then from the 15, second and one from the six. We'll watch here. Going to be very shocked if Ohio State doesn't punch us, but we'll see. Oh, that could be picked. That got popped in the air. It is going to be third and one. Wow, that was dangerous. Okay, third and one. You'd think you'd just want to run the ball, even just get downhill with Terrell Pryor, one of the best runners in the country. They're going to drop back. Out route. That's going to be a touchdown. Yeah, touchdown Ohio State. Terrell Pryor just throws that out route in there. Okay, 26-9. Let's see if Michigan can answer back. Second and nine, first and 10, second and eight, first and 10. So they're getting some gains. Second and 12, third and eight. Feels like this one's already over, but if Michigan can do something crazy, you never know. Trips to the top here for Braxton. Gonna hand this off, running back. I don't really love that play call. You don't have a lot of time. Are you really gonna pick up eight yards on that inside zone right there? I'm not so sure. Oh, I actually didn't mean to sim that, but there we go. Down inside the eight, inside the seven, and they do score a touchdown there. Seven yard touchdown, down 10 now. Oh my God, 75 yard touchdown pass, Terrell Pryor. That is pretty much gonna put it away unless Michigan does just some wild, wild shit here. Third and eight. Braxton, three minutes left. Did have a good fourth quarter, but Ohio State, Terrell Pryor just played really, really well. Braxton drops back. This is a true freshman. Oh, drops it, but true freshman. It feels like they have a stud on their hands, but uh, yeah, like they could have him for three more years after this. They're still going to probably make the college football playoff. I'm assuming they're the number one seed right now. Braxton up over the top. That's going to be a touchdown. Oh, in... Wow, down at the one, down at the one. So Braxton is still making plays, man. Not going to give up. Braxton Miller, I love it. Okay, down 10 again. Terrell. Gain of 14. Second and eight. First and goal from the nine. Okay, yeah, this one's over. Ohio State's offense has really put it on him here. He actually didn't punch that in, but they win by 10 here. Michigan goes down in the Big Ten Championship game. That should put both teams in the college football playoff, I'm assuming. Um, Terrell Pryor, Braxton, 218, two touchdowns, did throw a pick, but overall I thought he played really well. Added 52 yards on the ground. Terrell Pryor, 46 and a touchdown on the ground, plus 273 and three scores through the air. So Terrell, really, really good game. Okay, so that Kentucky receiver won the Heisman. He did have a crazy year, 1,400 yards and 24 touchdowns, but receivers just win it so much. Okay, so we are going to be looking at the college football bracket now. Let's see who made it. So we got Miami, Nebraska, Charlotte, Appalachian State, Ohio State, Liberty get the buys. Stanford did make it. We don't have Florida State. I really wanted Florida State just because that um, was Cam Newton. So we're not going to get to see Newton. We do have Luck. We have Terrell Pryor and we have Braxton Miller. Some smaller schools. Miami has a ton of our guys on defense. Wisconsin has a few of our guys. Liberty, UNLV, Kansas State, Michigan State, Charlotte, Appalachian State literally have none but that is okay so we are going to advance through this first week none of those matchups really jumped out at me and we'll see we'll probably watch two of these games live so nebraska beats miami michigan wins over unlv andrew luck not gonna you know defend his belt goes out in round one so we got wisconsin liberty ohio state kansas state nebraska charlotte appalachian state michigan we are gonna sim again 
Appalachian State beats Michigan. Nebraska beats Charlotte. Ohio State goes down, so we have none of our quarterbacks left. I'm simming one more week. We I do a bunch of intro stuff and stuff for this uh, for this first season. So we're just gonna watch the final here, the co final college football playoff game. We'll watch three games all the next seasons coming up. So we have Nebraska versus Kansas State. Nebraska has Travis Kelsey. That's going to be the only real life guy on either team. But I mean, Cornhusker fans are going to be happy right here. They have a chance to beat Kansas State in the college football playoff final. Nebraska's an 86. Kansas State's an 86. Yeah, nobody's really the better team. So we'll see who wins. Okay, so here we go. Kansas State, Nebraska. Definitely wouldn't have had that on my bingo card before the year started, but there we go. Okay, so we're going to sim through the first quarter here. 3 nothing Kansas State. 7-3 Nebraska over K-State. Second and seven here. First and goal. There's a huge 40-yard run for Kansas State. We'll watch their goal line offense here. It's down to the two-yard line. Let's see if they can punch this bad boy. Can hand it off. Little, little just power run. HP base type run. Fires it in. Nebraska's got to answer back. One yard. Third and three. They don't convert. They're going to punt back to Kansas State. Who has that at midfield already? Oh, my goodness. 12-yard reception. Wow, this offense for Kansas State is cooking right now. Second and nine. Third and 12 from the 16. So, it looks like they're only got three here unless they get a big play, but... Yeah, all of a sudden, Kansas State's offense is coming alive here. Drops back. Bit of a blitz. Oh, that could have been picked in traffic. But instead, it's first and goal. Just falls forward. That was a risky throw. But he fit it in down to the two. And they punch it. 17-7, Kansas State, Nebraska. You need an answer. They get one. 34-yard run there down to the 10 and then they get a touch in on a 10 yard run so both offenses starting to cook here second and nine third and six punt here for kansas state now nebraska has a chance to go take the lead first and then second and five third and 10 from the 38 so now they need a long third down conversion they're going to be out of field goal range here so they need something nebraska drops back fires over them a wide open that's travis kelsey Travis Kelsey down the seam for 22 yards. Our only real life guy in this game. And he makes a huge play on third down. Second and nine, second and four. And they punch it in now. 10 yard uh, touchdown, 21-17 Nebraska. Yeah, we'll do, we're gonna sim to the fourth quarter here. 21-17, 28-17, 35-17. So all of a sudden Nebraska jumping way out in front. Kansas State, third and five, fourth and three from the 17. The field goal is blocked, so they don't even get points on that drive. Fourth and four, second and nine. Here's a third and seven for Kansas State. So feels like it's, they're letting this one slip away. 7.38 left. You're down pretty big here. Setting up a screen pass hit as he throws. He's going down, and Nebraska is taking this one over. First and 10, second and seven, third and four for Nebraska. Fourth and one, they pick it up. Second and 10, third and eight. We'll watch this, but this one's basically over. They could go up 38-17 right here with just a field goal. Could keep the drive alive as well, though, obviously. Going to do a little screen pass to the outside. Blocker's out in front. He's going to get tackled short, but going to be a pretty easy field goal to go up just pretty big here. 38-17, going to be up 21. Nice return, and then a big play. 29-yard reception, second and seven, third and three, first and 10, second and 12, third and nine from the 22. This is probably the last drive we'll watch of Kansas State unless something really crazy here happens. Down 21, 345 left, not looking great. They got pressure up in the middle. That's a pick six. Oh, he takes a weird angle. It would have been a, it is a pick six. The QB takes a bat. Oh no. Okay. He gets tackled, but still, wow. What a way to end it for the Cornhuskers. That is going to wrap it up. 45, 17 over K state. So there it is. So we've had a lot of like big time schools win it. A lot of teams who, you know, big time schools who have never won it before. Haven't won it in a long time, but get it done here. So I'll just kind of read out the, the natty. So in 03, it was Clemson, 04, Ohio State, 05, Stanford, 06, Penn State, 07, Wisconsin. Then the next video, 08, Oregon, 09, Auburn, 10, Texas, 11, Georgia, Stanford last year in 2012. They are our first repeat champion. And then this year it was Nebraska in 2013. 
So there it is. Nebraska gets it done. Okay, so we're going to look at the final top 25 here. So Nebraska, Kansas State, Liberty, Appalachian State, Charlotte. So some small schools there at the top. Then Wisconsin, Michigan, Stanford, Miami, Michigan State, Ohio State, UNLV, UCLA, NC State, Oregon, Auburn, Clemson. 11-3, didn't make the playoff. Kentucky, Baylor, Georgia, Georgia Tech, Washington, UAB, Ole Miss, Florida State, 8-5. and five. Heisman winner, we already seen the Kentucky receiver. Three, two other receivers on the list. Cam Newton gets fifth. All Americans, Mike Pouncey and Wisniewski on the O-line. Janoris Jenkins at corner. Second team, Cam Newton. And that's kind of it for real, guys. Freshman, Braxton Miller gets it. Central Henderson, Brandon Sheriff. LaMarcus Joyner at Clemson as well. Okay, we'll look at some of the stats here. 42 a game for Ken, Kentucky. I don't know if I've seen anybody average that. 42 is a ton for how these this sim works. 35 for Florida State. That's going to be it for Cam Newton. Look at defense. So my Air Force team somehow gets fourth in the country. What, for my team, I didn't really say that at the start. I'm controlling Air Force. I don't recruit. I don't play any games. I just let the computer do everything. I'm just here to watch. So Liberty, UNLV for ranked. UCLA, Appalachian State, Georgia, UAB, uh, Charlotte for ranked teams as well. So for season stats for players, yards per game, Miami was throwing it all over the yard. Cam pretty high up there. Bridgewater, 300 a game, 35 touchdowns, nine picks. I'm, I kind of forgot Bridgewater was there. So now one of him or Jameis is not going to be starting for a few years. Bridgewater played really good at LSU. That is going to be it for Cam. He might have been the best player we've seen so far in the sim, just most consistent. Derek Carr as well, looking really nice at USC. Andrew Luck, hopefully he doesn't leave early and comes back for one more year at Stanford and maybe go on another run next year. Braxton Miller, really good freshman campaign. I want to see, oh, Johnny Manziel, that's how, so he, oh, it looked like he got injured or something. He only threw 1,700 yards, 13 touchdowns, six picks, so not sure if he got injured or what happened, but I'm assuming injury. Rushing, like we only have one guy in all of college football get over a thousand yards, which is insane. They really got to tune that, in my opinion. Terrell Pryor, 694 as a quarterback, is really good. Braxton Miller had 643. Lattimore had 638. But like he's getting, he's a 90, a, a really good running back, only a sophomore, and he's getting 50 yards a game. They, they really got to change that. LaMichael James, 50 yards a game as well. Receiving, Kentucky receiver led the country, plus he had 26 touchdowns. He did have a crazy year. Josh Gordon does get over 1,000 yards again. Alshon Jeffrey had 978. Okay, move on to defense. There's our tackles. Did anyone have really big numbers? No. TFLs, 11. I wish they would up the TFLs. and The sacks just are so weird. Somehow this guy got... Somehow Bobby Wagner had eight sacks. So Wagner had a good year, but somehow this guy gets 16 sacks and no one else even gets a more than nine. Most guys get under like six and a half. Kind of weird to me. Interceptions, nothing too crazy. Kirkpatrick had three. Okay, now we're going to get into the offseason here. We're going to sim to National Signing Day. We're going to look at where all these final guys end up. We can, we're also going to look at the transfer portal and see... Um, you know, if any of our big guys transfer it out, usually there's one or two of our real life guys who's going to transfer around during the transfer, por transfer portal. Okay, so here's the list. We're just going to go down, see. So Keenan Allen leaves Notre Dame for Purdue. That's kind of an interesting choice. Keenan Allen leaving Notre Dame. See if there's anyone else. Oh, we got Greg Robinson leaves Tulane for Baylor. So Greg Robinson, big old lineman. Stefan Tuitt. Leaves LSU for Alabama. Wow, okay. So, nice pickup. Um, gets him from LSU to Bama. That's big. Okay, so that looks like it. We'll see if any of the QBs... Doesn't look like it. So, that is kind of where we're at with the transfer portal. So, usually we'll see, you know, anywhere from one... Well, sometimes none, but usually it's like one to three guys of our real guys are going to transfer out. But let's look at all the prospects here. So... We got uh, Jameis Winston is going to stay at LSU. Sometimes these guys will flip to a different school, so he is going to stay at LSU. Running backs, Todd Gurley is going to go to Ohio State. So he was at Notre Dame, right? And he flipped. So sometimes guys will flip. He flips to Ohio State. 
And then Kenyon Drake is going to go to Ole Miss. Ole Miss gets a nice running back. Wide receiver, OSU keeps um, Sterling Sh uh, Shepard. Miami keeps Amari Cooper. Florida keeps Stephon Diggs. And then Doriel Green Beckham is going to go to Alabama. Moving on to offensive line, Oklahoma gets uh, Ronnie Stanley. Penn State gets DJ Humphreys. And then Michigan gets Taylor Decker. Oregon gets really good offensive lineman and Josh Garnett. For DNs, Fowler stays at Miami. Oklahoma keeps Leonard Williams. And then Oregon gets Eric Armstead. Eddie Goldman stays at Wisconsin. UCLA ends up with DeForest Buckner. So nice pickup for them. Leonard Floyd stays at Florida State. Shaq Thompson stays at ASU. Miami stays with Reggie Ragland. Georgia holds on to Ronald Darby. Georgia also gets Marcus May, so they get a few nice players in their secondary, and then Landon Collins stays at Stanford. So that is the recruiting class, guys. That is where we're going to wrap up this first season. Basically, now I go put all those recruits, change their names, change their you know some of their heights and weights and how they look, put them on their that roster, and then we're going to get right into season two, and we'll just keep it going. All right, boys. So this is going to be year number two of this episode. This is going to be the 2013 recruiting class. Very good recruiting class over. Overall, some really good players in it. So we are coming off a Nebraska National Championship last year. This is going to be the 11th. This is going to be the 12th year of the sim overall. Uh, uh, second of this video. So got our recruits kind of specified in our list. So we're going to go take a look right now. Now, like I said, very good class. It's pretty balanced overall as far as good players on offense, defense. Um, good QBs, not amazing, but good Good running backs. Receivers are probably the weakest position as far as positions that are usually pretty strong. Um, but we will get into it right now. So for the QBs, the number one QB in the whole class and number one of our real life QBs is going to be Jared Goff. Now, Goff is from California, just like this guy in real life. Goff went to Cal, was the first overall pick in the NFL draft by the Rams out of college. So he's going to be a five-star recruit, fourth player in the whole country, regardless of position. And he's looking at USC, UCLA, Stanford. Stanford, ASU, Oregon. Next up, the number two quarterback in the country is going to be JT Barrett. Now, Barrett is from Texas, but actually played at Ohio State. He was a really good college quarterback, never really made it in the NFL or anything, but was good at Ohio State for sure. He's going to be a five-star recruit here, number 10 player in the country. He's a little smaller. He's not 6'5", but he's going to kind of fit the archetype. And his number two, two schools are Texas, his home state, and then uh, Ohio State, where he went in real life, then Notre Dame, Oklahoma. Oklahoma, Wisconsin. Then the third real life quarterback is going to be Baker Mayfield. Now, Mayfield started at Texas Tech before going to Oklahoma, winning a Heisman Trophy. Then he was also the first overall pick in a different draft uh, by the Cleveland Browns. So Baker is from Texas. This guy's going to be a scrambler archetype, four-star recruit, and he's going to be looking at Ohio State, Alabama, Texas, Texas AM, and TCU. Moving on to our running backs, we only have three, but they are all incredible players. The first one is going to be Alvin Kamal. Kamara. Now, Kamara is from Georgia, but he played at Alabama. Well, he first committed to Alabama before transferring to Tennessee. He's going to be a lucid back archetype. He's going to be a five-star recruit, going to play very similar to Kamara, and he's going to be looking at Georgia, Texas, Florida State, Nebraska, and Alabama. Next up, we have Derrick Henry. Now, Henry is from Florida, but played at Alabama. This guy's going to be a power back archetype. We're going to make him even bigger. He's going to be like 6'3", 240. He's going to be a five-star recruit, number 19 player in in the country and he's looking at nebraska georgia appalachian state alabama and auburn and then the third real life running back is going to be ezekiel elliott now elliott is from missouri played at ohio state uh obviously really good at ohio state really good by the cow for the cowboys in the nfl gonna be a five star 25th player in the whole country we're gonna make him a lot bigger he's gonna be like six feet like 230 and um he's looking at notre dame nebraska wisconsin nc state and texas okay getting into wide receivers we only have two definitely not the best receiver class the first one is going to be big mike williams now mike williams played at Clemson was a top 10 pick by the Chargers in the NFL. Really good at Clemson. Big, like 6'4", 6'5". He's going to be a five-star recruit. 
26th player in the country. He's looking at NC State, UNC, Duke, Clemson, and Georgia. Then the other receiver we have here is Laquan Treadwell. Now, Treadwell is from Illinois, but played at Ole Miss. So he kind of moved around the country. Physical player, really good at Ole Miss. Had some bad injuries. Was still a first-round pick but in the NFL draft. Was kind of a bust in the NFL, though. So he's looking at Texas, Ohio State, Alabama, Oklahoma, and K-State. So all kind of around the country for him. Next up, we have O.J. Howard. Now, O.J. was a very good college tight end. Was drafted 16th, I believe, overall by Tampa Bay in the NFL draft. He is from the state of Alabama and played at Bama. Didn't have a really good group of tight ends. So I just kind of went with the number one overall tight end, even though he's from a little bit different area of the country. Um, he's going to be a four-star recruit, 64th player in the country. O.J. was super athletic. He's looking at Mich Michigan, Wisconsin, Michigan State, Penn State, and Appalachian State. Moving on to O-line, and we only have one O-lineman in this whole class. The number two offensive lineman in the class, it is going to be Laramie Tunsil. He's our number one you know, real life guy. So Tunsil played at Ole Miss, but he's from Florida. So kind of SEC country. He's going to be a power archetype, five-star recruit, 12th player in the whole country. He's not 6'8". We're going to make him a little shorter, but going to really fit this guy well. He's looking at Alabama, Georgia, Auburn, K-State, and Clemson. Okay, moving on to defense, and we have four defensive ends in this class. The first one is going to be Robert Kim Dietschy. Now, Kim Dietschy was kind of an inside outside pass rusher, could play D tackle, play D end. He was actually the number one player in this whole class in real life. Went to Ole Miss, was okay, pretty good in college, not amazing. Got drafted in the second round in the NFL draft by the Cardinals. So, this guy's going to be a six foot four, 297 run stopper, can play inside outside. Top schools, he's the five star 16th player in the country, are going to be Clemson, Georgia, UNC, NC State, and Bama. Next up, we have Jonathan Allen. Jonathan Allen's kind of a similar player. He played at Alabama, but he's actually from the state of Virginia. Um, he's going to be an inside outside guy. Can play DM, be a play D tackle, 6'4, 290, power rusher archetype, five star recruit. And he's looking at Florida, Florida State, Miami, Georgia, and Alabama. So five of the biggest schools in the country. Next up, we have Joey Bosa. Now, Bosa is going to be a power rusher archetype here. Bosa was very good in college, played at Ohio State, drafted in the top 10 by the Chargers. And he's going to be 6'3, 267. His top schools are going to be Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, Wisconsin, Nebraska. And then our last uh, defensive end is going to be Carl Lawson. Now, Lawson's from Georgia, but played at Auburn. He's 6'3", 250, going to be a four-star recruit, 37th player in the country. I believe he was a second-round pick in the NFL draft. He's looking at Clemson, Auburn, Notre Dame, Appalachian State, Tennessee. Okay, then we have one true D tackle in this class, and he is going to be the number one D tackle, number, uh, number two player in the whole country, five-star recruit, power rusher archetype, and it is going to be Chris Jones. Now, Chris Jones played at Mississippi State, has probably an NFL or a Hall of Fame career going with uh, the Chiefs in the NFL, one of the best defensive players in the in the world, and he's going to be looking at Texas, Bama, Oklahoma, A&M, and Ohio State. Moving on to linebackers, first up, we have the number one outside linebacker in the class, five-star recruit, 18th player in the country, and that is going to be TJ Watt. Now, Watt played at Wisconsin. Here, he's going to be a power rusher archetype, uh, outside linebacker, 6'5", going to fit really perfectly, 18th player in the country. He played at Wisconsin, and he's looking at Purdue, Michigan, NC State, Nebraska, and Iowa, so all kind of in that area of the country there. Then moving on to middle linebacker, and we have two. The first one is going to be Jalen Smith. Now, Jalen Smith's from Indiana, played at Notre Dame, was incredible in college, was going to be a top five pick maybe as a middle linebacker at a Notre Dame, blew out his knee, never really made it as a great, great player, got drafted by the Cowboys, I think in the second round, was okay in the NFL, but the injury really screwed him over. He's going to be a five-star recruit, number nine in the country, field general archetype. He's looking at Michigan, Wisconsin, Oklahoma, Georgia, and Alabama. Then the other inside linebacker recruit is going to be Reuben Foster. Right now, Foster played at Alabama. He's from Alabama. Run stopper archetype. Absolutely crazy hitter. Really good at Bama. Was like a late first round pick by the Niners. Had a few really good years in the NFL, but he had some off the field issues that kind of derailed his career. But he was an absolute freak show. So he's going to be a four star looking at Georgia, Auburn, Alabama, Tennessee, and UAB. Okay, moving into corners. And the first corner we have is going to be Vernon Hargraves. Now, Hargraves played at Florida. Really good in college. He's going to be a four-star recruit here. Kind of a different group of schools. He's looking at uh, San Diego State, UNLV, Arizona. Is that Sam Houston and USC? So looking like he might want to go out to the West Coast. Next up, we have Jalen Ramsey. 
Now, Ramsey, really good in college. Played at Florida State. Um, he's going to be a four-star man-to-man archetype corner. Big, long, really good player. Looks like he might go to the West Coast or like he's kind of going all around the country. He's looking at Oregon, who's just recruited so good on defense. UCLA, then Wisconsin, kind of a Midwest team. Washington on the West Coast. And then also Miami in Florida. So kind of looking all over the country for him. Then our last real-life corner is going to be Tredavious White. He played at LSU. He's from the state of Louisiana man-to-man archetype really good in college got drafted by the Bills I think in the second round has been really good in the NFL as well so he's looking at Alabama Georgia Auburn Florida State and Clemson then we have two cornerbacks in this class. The first one is going to be Kendall Fuller. Now, Fuller played at Vaude Tech. Uh, He's kind of a corner safety hybrid, can play both. He's going to be a zone archetype, four-star recruit. He's going to be looking at Oklahoma, Michigan, Georgia, Nebraska, Ohio State, so kind of all around the country there. And then lastly, we have Vaughn Bell. Vaughn Bell played at Ohio State, but he's from Tennessee. He's going to be a five-star recruit, hybrid archetype, do-it-all safety. He's going to be looking at Tennessee, Kentucky, Georgia Tech, Ole miss in georgia so that is the recruiting class guys that is what we are working with here for this year now before we get into the year we can look at kind of preseason all americans i've kind of so andrew luck coming in as a preseason all american bobby wagner at clemson as well look at the top preseason top 25 here as well so we got nebraska miami michigan nebraska is the defending national champ stanford who has andrew luck coming back ohio state's high oregon wisconsin are good Clemson, Washington, Auburn, Kentucky, Georgia's a 90, Penn State's a 90, Texas is a 90. So that's kind of the top schools in the country. Let's look at some of the top players. So just going through some of the teams, Bama should have quite a few of our guys on defense. They got Courtney Upshaw and Patrick Peterson, both as seniors. Good middle linebacker, good wide receiver. Um, They got D Milner as a corner as well. So they got Patrick Peterson and D Milner as their corners. Dominic Easley on the inside, Vic Beasley. They do have Blaine Gabbard as well. So Bama over the last few years has gotten quite a few of our guys guys they do have um Blaine Gabbert starting as a senior quarterback this year so we will get to see a bit of Blaine Gabbert possibly okay keep moving down Clemson's definitely a team we want to keep our eye on Bobby Wagner he's at 97 overall as a junior just truly one of the best players in the country they got Tavon Austin at wide receiver a junior as well 98 speed absolute freak show at Clemson so fast we got Chance Warmack on the inside they got LaMarcus Joyner who's turning out to be a really nice corner safety type player for them 88 overall already and then the big one is going to be at QB they have Marcus Mariota now he's a red shirt freshman so didn't play last year this is going to be his first year as a starter we could see him up to four years starting at Clemson so definitely want to see them go on some runs Florida State they have Ryan Jazier red shirt freshman looks like a good linebacker but Cam Newton is gone so no Cam this year but uh, they do have Leonard Floyd as well georgia hasn't been they're still a really good team they're a 90 overall they haven't been getting a ton of our guys they got that serious on the o-line who looks like a stud oh they did get jadevon Clowney, red shirt freshman so he didn't play last year he's about to step in 6'6 260 i think he's got uh star impact potential so Clowney has a chance to blow up this year so they have a couple of guys on the interior i'd like to see them get a quarterback maybe one of our real life guys marcus may at safety as well oh and they did get ron Ronald Darby so they have been getting a few of our guys now LSU is going to be interesting they have Teddy Bridgewater and Jameis Winston so I don't know who's it looks like Bridgewater is going to end up starting not 100% sure they do have Jameis Winston coming in red shirt our true freshman 82 overall elite development trait crazy gold already abilities a bunch of them as well so Jameis looks like an absolute freak Teddy Bridgewater is a good player. I think I would probably start Jameis, though. They do have Jarvis Landry as well. Really a young group of receivers they're bringing along. Miami, always one of the best teams in the country on paper. Haven't really went on a ton of runs so far, but they have Daquan Bowers, one of the best defensive players in the country this year. Alec Ogletree, only a sophomore, up to a 90. Drake Kirkpatrick at corner. 
one of the better corners in the country. They got Justin Hunter, Ha Ha Clinton Dix, Dante Fowler as a true freshman, 82 overall. Reggie Ragland is a freshman at linebacker. Amari Cooper is a freshman at wide receiver. So they have a ton of our guys right now. QB, they have a 90 overall. Wow. And then they have another guy in behind him, a sophomore as well. So Miami is just putting together really good rosters every year. Michigan, Jake Matthews. They got young Brandon Cooks at wide receiver but it's really they have two quarterbacks that we're going to keep our eye on so they have Braxton Miller and then Paxton Lynch in behind him Paxton actually looks like he could be a really good player 80 overall is our true freshman star development trait then you have Braxton Miller 82 overall he's got impact development trait as a sophomore so they have two of our QBs kind of fighting it out uh do they have a wider they oh yeah and then Brandon Cooks looks like he's going to be their third wide receiver this year as a sophomore as well so definitely keeping our eye on Michigan. Nebraska defending national champs have some talent for sure. DJ Fluker on the O-line might be our only guy now. They did have Travis Kelsey, Timmy Jernigan as well. So they got two of our guys, not really at premier positions, but there we go. Notre Dame, they got Melvin Gordon. I think, oh, I think Ohio State got Todd Gurley as well. Oklahoma, I think they got some O-linemen. They have Ronnie Stanley. So red, true freshman Ronnie Stanley, really good player. Looks like he's going to start for them. Oregon, I don't know. They got Manti Teo, Anthony Barr. So yeah, they've just done a good job getting defenders. Um, Eric Armstead as well. So, oh, and they got Josh Garnett on O-line. QB 93 seniors. They have had a, a great QB. Penn State, they're 90 overall as well. They got Central Henderson. Their O-line is going to be stacked. Wow, look at all their O-line. 96 O line, 95, 93, 93, 93, 93. Holy crap. They have Sammy Watkins at wide receiver, too. Sophomore, looking like he's going to be a stud for them. William Golston, 87 overall. DJ Humphreys, another good O lineman. QB, good senior quarterback. Have a couple of juniors who will be fighting next year as well. And wide receiver, Sammy Watkins is going to be their third wide receiver this year as a sophomore. Stanford, they have two absolute studs. They have a senior receiver, one of the best players in the country. Senior quarterback, Andrew Luck, one of the best players in the country. Um, they do have some guys in, our, in the secondary as well. They got Marcus Peters, redshirt freshman corner. Looks like he's going to be really good. Uh, they got Stephon Gilmore, junior uh, safety. He hasn't developed a ton yet, but he looks like he could be decent. I know they have a few other safeties as well uh, freshman Landon Collins they got red shirt sophomore Tyran Matthew who hasn't developed crazy well yet but I mean this is going to be the Andrew Luck show we'll see if they can go on another run with Luck they have some really good pair of uh, receivers for them good some good old linemen let's see what Andrew Luck can do there they're their fourth team in the country TCU is going to have Josh Gordon, who's had back-to-back -back amazing years, even though he's technically their third wide receiver on the depth chart, but he gets the ball a ton. They have a very, very good quarterback. So TCU's offense could put up some huge numbers. They have a 99 overall running back as well. So look out for TCU. They could definitely go on a run. Texas is another team we want to keep our eye on. They got Johnny Manziel, who actually didn't improve a ton. He did start last year, still only an 80 overall, so he didn't get a ton better, but obviously I'd like to see Texas go on a run this year with Johnny football. They have LaMichael James as a senior running back as well. Oh, they have Quandre Diggs at safety, Bradley Roby at corner as well. So a few guys in the secondary. Definitely want to see, keep our eye on Johnny football. Okay, USC, they have not gotten a lot of our guys, but they do have a quarterback and the quarterbacks are kind of the most interesting. They're who I like to watch. If we have a game where one of our quarterbacks are playing, that is what I want to see. Derek Carr coming into his junior season, 87 overall, really good player. Washington, I don't think they really have much of our guys, but they always have a pretty good team. They got uh, Eric Reed at safety. Wisconsin, always one of the better teams too. They've gotten some of our guys over the sim right now. They have Devontae Adams as a redshirt freshman receiver and Julio Jones. So Julio has never really panned out. He's um, He does have impact development trait, but has never really worked out that great. He will be one of their two starting receivers. So, you know, if Wisconsin goes on a run, they don't really have a great quarterback, but he's got some really good weapons to throw to. Um, yeah, so that's kind of, we'll just quickly look at some of the best players. So Marcus Lattimore at uh, Boston College, one of the best running backs in the country. LaMichael James. Is Mark Ingram still in college? He might have left. Then we got some young guys coming up for them. Receivers. Tavon Austin, one of the best receivers in the country. 
Josh Gordon at TCU, Robert Woods at Arizona State, Sammy Watkins at Penn State, Alshon Jeffrey at South Carolina, Devontae Adams at Wisconsin, so that's some of our guys there. The ends, Daquan Bowers, one of the best ends in the country. Bobby Wagner, just straight up one of the best players in the country. Corners, Patrick Peterson at Bama, Kirkpatrick at Miami, Joyner at Clemson. Pretty good group of corners in the country. Now, Dean Milner at BAM as well. So, yeah, that's kind of where we're sitting, uh, you know, going into this season. Nebraska defending national champs. Definitely going to keep our eye on LSU, Texas, Clemson, Stanford, Michigan. Kind of, a, I, lo I want to keep an eye on where all those QBs, I would like to see some of them, you know, go on a run. So, we're going to sim to the, about the midway point of the season. Take a look at recruiting. Take a look at all that stuff and uh, see where we're at. All right, so we are going to look at recruiting first. Take a look at where these guys are at. So first up, we have QBs. And I honestly, I was even going to say when we were looking at Jared Goff, I'm like, I bet you this guy's going to go to Stanford and take over for Andrew Luck. And that is exactly what happens. Goff going to Stanford. So they're going to go Andrew Luck to Jared Goff. Great, great pickup for them. Next up, we have JT Barrett, and he's going to go to Texas. So they do have Johnny football right now. Johnny's going to be a sophomore by next year, or actually a junior. Yeah, he's going to be a junior. So they can let him start for two more years, then start JT Barrett. Barrett picks him uh, them over Notre Dame and Ohio State. Then lastly, we have Baker Mayfield. Mayfield's looking at Texas, Ohio State, TCU. Hope he doesn't go to Texas. They're just going to have a super packed room. Go to Ohio State. You might have a chance to start there. Okay, getting into running backs. And Alvin Kamara goes to Texas. So Texas gets a few studs already. Picks Texas over Miami and Florida State. So it's a three-horse race down to the wire. Then, wow, Derek Henry picks Appalachian State over Georgia and Nebraska. So that is an absolute shocker, but there we go. Then lastly, we have Ezekiel Elliott, and he goes all the way down to TCU. So is TCU, Wisconsin, Notre Dame were his top three. He picks the Horn Frogs. They've been good through the whole sim. Okay, going into wide receivers. Big Mike Williams going to Clemson. Goes to his real life school. Makes sense. Picks them over Liberty, uh, NC State, and Virginia Tech. Then we have Laquan Treadwell. Still up for grabs. He's looking at Texas, Ohio State, and Stanford. So three pretty good schools all in the running for Laquan. Tight end OJ Howard, he's still up for grabs. Looks like he's going to go to Michigan, though. Not really getting heavily recruited by others, so looks like OJ's going there. For Laramie Tunsil, he is still up for grabs. It's either Bama, Clemson, Liberty, K-State. Um, you know, that's a, that could be a huge pickup for Bama or Clemson. Okay, getting into DNs. First one, Robert Kandichi, he goes to Clemson. So Clemson gets a big five-star in Robert. Then Jonathan Allen, he goes to Miami. So locked in at Miami, picks Miami over Florida and Auburn. Then we have Carl Lawson, and he picks Nebraska. So Nebraska gets a big pass rusher. And then Joey Bosa also goes to Nebraska. So they get a pair of really nice pass rushers at Nebraska. I like it. Okay, moving on to D-tackle. We got Chris Jones still up in the air. He's looking at Oklahoma, Alabama, and AM as his top three. For outside linebackers, TJ Watt still up for grabs. Looking at Purdue, Georgia, NC State. Also Michigan and Iowa in the mix. Then for Jalen Smith, he is looking at Wisconsin, Michigan, Texas Tech as his top three. And then for Reuben Foster, four-star, still up for grabs, Auburn, Georgia, UAB as his top three. Looking at our corners, first up we have Vernon Hargraves, still up for grabs. He's looking at Arizona, USC, and Boise State. Next up, we have Jalen Ramsey, and Ramsey picks Oregon. So going across the country, going to play for Oregon. They just kill it with defensive prospects every year. They are always getting a ton of defenders. Then lastly, we have Tredavious White, still up for grabs. He's looking at Florida State, Alabama, and Auburn. Okay, then for our two safeties, Kendall Fuller still up for grabs, but he's looking like he's going to be going to Oklahoma for sure. Then Vaughn Bell is looking at Georgia. Locked in at Georgia, picks them over Georgia Tech. So that's where we're sitting with recruiting. We'll look at it one more time at the end of the year. 
Okay, let's look at the top 25. So Clemson, 8-0, number one team in the country, led by Marcus Mariota and Tavon Austin. Wisconsin, 9-1, Miami, ton of just really good players on Miami this year. Stanford going on a run with luck. Georgia Tech, Kentucky, Liberty, UCLA, TCU with Josh Gordon. Michigan in the mix with, with Braxton at quarterback. Bama, Georgia, Ohio State, West Virginia, LSU. So I want to see LSU get up there with either Teddy or Jameis. I would have liked to see Texas. Where's Johnny Football? Can Johnny Football go on a run here at the end of the year and get into the playoff? Let's look at the Heisman watch. Marcus Mariota leading the Heisman watch. Julio Jones. So Jones all of a sudden is having a big last year. Uh, but yeah, Marcus Mariota leading the way as a redshirt freshman for the Tigers. Love to see that. Okay, let's look at some team stats here. So number one offense in the country is going to be Miami, then TCU, Kentucky, Georgia, UCLA, Clemson, Stanford, Nebraska, Liberty. U oh, USC is not going on a run either. So they're six and two, so they have a shot. Where's Texas? I just want to see where they are. So their offense is just awful. There they are. They're six and three. So if they have a good end of the year, they could make the playoff. I would love to see Johnny football. Points, Clemson is the number one defense in the country too. So right now it looks like Clemson is just the best team, you know, with a, with a bullet. Look at some season stats here. So pass yards per game. BYU is passing for 383 yards a game. Miami 350. TCU is airing it out. Wow, Braxton Miller, 300 yards a game. 16 touchdowns, 7 picks. There's Mariota, 276, 23 touchdowns, two interceptions as a red, uh, red shirt freshman. Let's look at his stats. I want to see what his rushing yards are like. 250 games, adding another 30 yards on the ground. He looks like just straight up one of the best players in the country already. Carr having a nice year, 22 touchdowns, three picks, 266 a game. There's Johnny Football, 11 interceptions for Johnny. So that's kind of the difference right now. Oh, and Jameis Winston is starting for LSU. So 18 touchdowns, two picks, 77% completion percentage is wild. This is a true freshman at LSU killing it. That is what I like to see. Okay, the rushing number numbers are just never high. Lattimore having a nice year. Blaine Gabbert, one of the biggest rushing numbers in the country as a quarterback for Alabama. Well, Michael James. Okay, let's look at receiving. Two guys already over 1,000. Then Julio Jones, third in the country at Wisconsin. So I don't know where this came from. He'd never done anything in the whole sim. Josh Gordon keeping it up. He's going to have his third straight 1,000-yard season this year unless he gets injured. Robert Woods at ASU having a nice year as a sophomore. Tavon. Okay, so Tavon's at 67 a game. They kind of have two receivers they're going to. That's all good. So they're kind of spreading the wealth. But I'd like to see Tavon go off with... with uh, with Mariota here. Okay, we are going to sim to conference championship weekend. Any big conference championship game, we'll watch it. If not, we'll get into the playoff. Okay, we're in the conference championship weekend. We got Liberty, West Kentucky, AM will miss UCLA, Wisconsin, Miami, Duke. So none of those games really jump out to me. So we are just going to sim through, get to the playoff here. So Miami, Ole Miss, K-State, Wisconsin get by. Stanford does make it. They're going to play Nebraska. Kentucky, UAB, Duke, Liberty, Clemson, UCLA. So I think we only have two of our QBs who made it. It's going to be St uh, Andrew Luck and Marcus Mariota. So you know what? I really want to watch Mariota. He could lose right here in week one of the playoffs. So we're actually going to watch him this week so that's the heisman winner it's going to be the qb from miami 4600 yards 52 touchdowns 11 picks so big year for him okay so we're going to watch this i think ucla does have one of our players they have deforest buckner on d line but other than that we're going to be focusing a little more on clemson in this one I, I want to see some marcus Mariota. okay here we go so we're going to jump through the first quarter here 14 nothing ucla oh no Okay, we got a third and four here that we're going to watch. So here's UCLA ball again, almost at midfield, trying to go take a huge lead here. Motion a guy across, little QB power read, and they're going to pick it up. So UCLA taking it to the Tigers here. Third and 11, we'll watch this. Okay, split back look here for UCLA. I like this uh, jersey combo, a lot of bright colors, orange list, kind of light blue. Okay, fake handoff, pop pass. Oh, that's picked off. Oh, this is a huge 
Huge chance for Clemson. Can this be a pick six? Beats no, doesn't be the line. Oh, still going K. Okay. So there it is. That could get Clemson right back into this one. Huge interception. You see how they really try to force that ball down the field. Looks like they'll go down 14 at the half. But we're going to jump to the fourth quarter. 24 to 3. Mariota and the Tigers need to do something here. Drops back. Deep drop pressure he's going up over the top he's got him no that's like a hail mary and that's probably it i don't even know what that throw was mario is young he's a young player hasn't had his best game but that is just how it goes sometimes ucla goes down and scores that is going to be it we are going to go to the end of this one 38 to 10 was not the Tigers games at the midway point they were 8-0 looked like the best team in the country they had 212 yards of offense today the UCLA's quarterback he's a senior good player 299 yards three touchdowns had a nice day they ran the ball well a couple of receivers over 100 yards Tavon had two catches for 25 yards Mariota, 11 of 22, 143, one touchdown, three interceptions. So I'm guessing the worst game of Mariota's young career. He made the playoff as a first-year player. They were the number one team in the country at one point. So you can't be too mad. But yeah, that is a tough week one for them. Okay, now we're going to have to see if Andrew Luck and Stanford can go on a run here. Okay, so let's look at the bracket. So Nebraska beats Stanford. Stanford, so they're done. Kentucky loses to UAB. UCLA beats Clemson. Liberty beats Duke. So we got Liberty, K-State, Wisconsin, UCLA, Miami, Nebraska, Ole Miss, UAB. We're going to sim through this week. Unfortunate Andrew Luck goes out there. I would like to see his team maybe try to go on another big one. Well, let's look at the bracket again. So we got Nebraska beating Miami. So we got Wisconsin, Liberty, Ole Miss, Nebraska. We'll watch Ole Miss, Nebraska. Not a lot of our guys on it, but we'll check it out. Okay, so here we go. Six versus nine. Book your ticket to the national championship. 87 versus 86. Nebraska did win the Natty last year, so they're trying to repeat. Okay, here we go. We are going to super sim through the first quarter. So three nothing Nebraska. There's a big 30-yard play for Nebraska down to the 9, 3rd and 8 from the 9. So Nebraska trying to be our first repeat national champs of the Sim. Trying to book their ticket to the big game. Going to motion a guy across the formation. Trips to the top. Drops back. Has a guy in the flat. Setting up a screen pass. He might be in. He's in. Touchdown Nebraska. Nebraska takes a 10-0 lead over the Ole Miss Rebels. Okay, third and nine here for Nebraska, and they pick it up. So this Nebraska offense, 28 yards reception there. Second and seven, third and five. Okay, drops back. Oh, in the flat, that is a nice breakup. So they're going to hold them to three here, and they miss the field goal. So that is absolutely massive for Ole Miss. They need to get something going on offense. They get a 16-yard reception, second and seven, third and three. They pick it up first and ten, first and ten, and they score. 19-yard touchdown. Second and eight, first and 10. First and five for Nebraska, first and 10. First and 10, 23, third and 22. Kick is up, kick is good. Okay, we're gonna sim to the fourth quarter. So 13-7, 14-13, Ole Miss, 19-14, Nebraska. So we have a close game here going into the third quarter. Ole Miss out of field goal range here. This might be four down territory, honestly, with three minutes left, probably is. Ole Miss motion the guy out, <clears throat> drops back, up over the top. That's a first down, big first down Ole Miss. Then another big game, 14-yard gain, second and seven, third and five from the 13. Definitely four down territory now. You're down, you know, a full, you're, you're down more than three, so you can't kick a field goal. You need a touchdown. They're going to hand this ball off, get hit in the backfield, goes down, maybe loses a yard. That is huge for Nebraska. And here is the play of the day right here. Fourth and six. Got to go for it. You don't need end zone. You just need the first down if you're Ole Miss. It's not over because you do have three timeouts and they're backed up in their own end. But here it is. Ole Miss drop back. Going to check that down. We got a flag on the play is that defensive something or roughing the passer it's going to be down to the four yard line that is so bad for nebraska wow 
That is so tough. That was a fourth down stop. Instead, you get roughing the passer first and goal from the four yard line for Ole Miss. Holy K, drop back. He's going to take off. Is he going to tuck it and run? He is, and he's going to walk into the end zone. Ole Miss touchdown kind of gifted to them on that on that penalty, but the, hey, that's, that's part of life. You can't put yourself in that position. They do get a two-point conversion as well, so they are going to be up three. Nebraska needs a drive to go to the natty here. 11 yards, second and eight, third and six, fourth and three. We are going to watch right here. This is the ball game. If Nebraska doesn't convert, Ole Miss is going to book their ticket to the national championship. Gula pop pass down the seam. <gasps> Holds on. What a catch. Got nailed up the seam. Almost dropped and said it was a huge game. And then they get picked off the next play. And that is going to do it. Ole Miss is going to go to the national championship. So there it is. Nebraska converts a huge fourth down and then throws an interception the next play. And Ole Miss going to the natty for the second straight year, I believe, even though last year they did not um, did not win it. So look at the stats. Yeah, Nebraska had more total yards. Neither team like destroyed on offense. Their QB played pretty good. Rush game didn't really get going as their receiving numbers. Ole Miss, that's theirs. Honestly, neither team was great offensively. They only threw the ball 15 times for Ole Miss, but enough to get it done. Okay, and we're going to advance and see who they play. So they are going to play Liberty. Crazy. So Liberty beats Wisconsin by one point. We'll, uh, we'll look at Ole Miss and Liberty here just really quick. I want to look at their rosters. Liberty does not have any of our guys. They've actually been on the, in on the mix on a few guys, but never sealed the deal, I don't think. They have a really good QB. Wow. Good DN. They actually have some really good players. Uh, they might be better on paper than Ole Miss, honestly. Ole Miss has good players, though, too. Really good QB. Similar position. I felt they had a wide receiver. They have Mike Evans. So Mike Evans is actually their third wide receiver. He has one catch on the year. So really not playing. Must not actually be playing as their third wide receiver. But over the next few years, hopefully he starts getting more playing time. Okay. Look at how close their helmets are. <laughs> So we are going to have a very similar uh, uniform matchup here in this one. But we'll see. Liberty trying to go on an insane run to win a natty. Ole Miss made it last year trying to win it this year. So not a bad game. Not a, uh, it's always more fun when we have more of our guys in the game, but that's fine. Okay, we're going to go through the first quarter here. 7 nothing Liberty, 7-7. 14-7 seven, seven. Seven, Ole Miss. Second and nine, first and 10, Liberty driving. They got it down to the 14, down to the 11, third and three from the seven yard line. We'll watch here. So Liberty shotgun look here. What do you got for us? Drops back, sets up in the pocket, fires it in for the touchdown. There we go. Ole Miss football. So at least going to get a field goal unless they turn it over here, but they're trying to get more. Stubbs drops back. Oh, hit as he throw. What are they calling that? That's not a, that's not a roughing the passer. Pass interference. Oh, no. That is a tough call to go on Liberty. So two fourth downs we've watched where Ole Miss has kind of got bailed by some penalties. Second goal from the seven, third and goal from the six. Huge down here. Maybe Ole Miss gets bailed out by a penalty, though. Who knows? Okay, Stubbs. Going to take off. Over the middle. Boom. Touchdown. Nice throw. Nice play design. A kind of delay slant there. I've been running those online, and that play works very, very well. Okay, here we go. Third and three. Ole Miss. Out of field goal range. Drops back, throws it far side of the field, stays in bounds, just almost stepped out. So he's able to stay in bounds, get that first down for Ole Miss. Then get a 13-yard gain, second and 10, third and eight, fourth and one. I'm guessing they're going to kick a field goal. They, they do, so they're going to be up 10 here. Liberty pressure is on now, third and three, third and eight. Watch this. Liberty has got to get it going here. You don't want to be down 10. You'd like to even get a field goal here. Make it just kind of a one score, seven point game going into the half. Drops back over the middle, holds on, and that's going to be a first down. Oh, they called that not a first down. My bad. Okay, so then they punted. Going to be Ole Miss ball. Okay, we're at the half here. 
We are going to jump to the fourth quarter. 21-24. Uh, okay, so we have ourselves a really good finish to, on this one. Third and nine for Ole Miss. They don't convert. They punch. Second and seven, Liberty. First and ten. Second and nine. Third and six. Fourth and eight. And they kick a 56-yard field goal and miss. Second and seven. First and goal. And they got a 49-yard rush. Third and goal from the four here. Trying to make it back a two-score game with six minutes left. If you're Liberty, though, you can hold them to a field goal here. Six-point game. You can take a lead with a touchdown. Massive play right here. They're going end zone. Touchdown. Little Looked like a little rub route on the inside there. Got his man lost. And Liberty is going to be down 10. Okay, two-yard rush, third and four, and then they get their own big carry, 31-yard rush. First in town down to the 16, second and six, third and four. We're going to watch here. So third and four, down 10, 421 left, four minutes in the game. Liberty's got a bunch to the top. Direct in traffic. Okay, drops back. Fires over the middle. That's going to be a completion. Puts his head down. That's a flag. What is the flag for? Is that a face mask maybe? I'm thinking that's a face mask. Yeah, face mask. They're going to be down to the one yard line there for Liberty. So we're just, I'm just going to sim for it. I'm assuming they're just going to punch this in. Second and goal from, oh my God, third and goal from the four. So I got ahead of myself there. We'll raw trade here. Liberty, you, I mean, a field goal, at least you cut it down to a three point game, but you wanted a touch on here. You had first and goal from the one end zone. Touchdown. That is huge. Liberty needed that. You did not want three there. Now it's going to be a three-point game. Liberty should have all their timeouts. They do. And first and ten, second and seven. Wow. 24-yard rush. Second and five. Third and two. Here is a massive play. Might get down to the two-minute warning here, but we'll see. They're going pistol. Wow, they snap before the two-minute warning. That's going to be a first down. Oh, miss. Oh, tough play there for Liberty. Not able to get the tackle. First and 10, second and six, third and one from the 29. This is the play of the day. If Ole Miss converts, this one is over. Liberty will be down to no timeouts. So here it is. They basically need a tackle for a loss here. Fake in the middle. Wow, they get it. He's going to be about a half yard short. Huge tackle there. I'm assuming Ole Miss tries a decently long field goal. No, they're going for it on fourth down. Okay, here it is. National championship on the line. This is it. Ole Miss is going to drop back, fires it in for a first down. Get down if you want to hold on to that football. And that is it. That might have been Mike Evans. No, it wasn't. Wow. Okay, so there it is. Ole Miss converts on fourth down. That is going to do it. I didn't mean to watch this play, but they're just going to go victory formation here on out. And that is going to be it. So Ole Miss loses the natty last year. Come back and win it this year. This one is over. Ole Miss gets it done. Liberty had a shot. They were kind of in it at the end there. They had 371 total yards, 331 for Ole Miss, 166. But he had three touchdown passes. Liberty, 118 on the ground with their running back. QB, 14. They just didn't throw the ball enough. You got to throw it more downfield. But there it is. Ole Miss is our national champions. So final top 25. Ole Miss, Liberty, Miami, Wisconsin, Nebraska, Kentucky, Stamford, Syracuse, UAB, UCLA, Florida, Michigan, 7-6 and six at high, Clemson, Oregon State, Georgia, Auburn, West Virginia, Texas finished 8-5, and five. All-Americans, Georgia, QB, wow, we didn't have any first-team All-Americans, Julio, second-team, Brandon Sheriff, freshman, Marcus Mariota, Ryan Shazier, Marcus Peters. Okay, just look at some stats really quick. Number one offense, Miami, UAB, Duke, Georgia, Syracuse, Kentucky, Stanford, Florida State. Defensively, Utah State, Clemson, Oregon State, Nevada, Michigan was up there as well. Get some season stats. So Miami's QB led the country in passing. Braxton Miller, 300. So Braxton had a nice year. Johnny Manziel. 
kind of turned around because he had 11 picks when we checked at the midseason point, only threw one more. So hopefully that makes him develop a little bit. Marcus Mariota had a really good year. Andrew Luck wraps up his career. He's actually someone that's probably worth to look at his just total career stats. This was his four-year run as a starter, 48, 42, 42 touchdowns. <laughs> really good career won a national championship i think made another one as well you know was averaging another you know 400 ish yards on the ground per year as well so luck luck and cam newton i'd say luck has probably had the best overall career out of any player in the sim so far only one player gets a thousand yards Lattimore has a nice year he's a junior so he could be back next year lamichael james is going to be gone receiving Julio Jones has 1,300 yards in his senior year. Josh Gordon, third straight 1,000-yard year. I really hope he comes back next year and we can see if he does it every year. Robert Woods at ASU. Tackles, sacks, 23 sacks. How does one guy get 23 and no one else does anything? CJ Mosley, supposed to be. He's a run-stopper archetype. I guess they're using a 3-4 and he's just pass rushing, doing really well. Interceptions, seven interceptions. There we go. Okay, now we're just going to get into National Signing Day. We will look at the transfer portal, see if anybody's left, and then we'll look at where the big guys signed. Okay, first up, transfer portal. So we have two five-star guys. I wish it would say what their overalls were. Like, you can't even, like, get in and look at them, which is kind of annoying. Um, but we do have William Golston. He leaves Penn State for Michigan. Derek Carr leaves USC to go to BYU. Wow, so senior quarterback, he's going to be like close to a 90, leaves and goes to BYU. That is crazy. That is absolutely massive. Eddie Lacy leaves SMU to go to TCU. And that might be it. We'll just check QBs to make sure. But yeah, that is crazy. Imagine a QB leaving USC, been their starter for three years to go to uh, BYU. He might have put up some crazy numbers, though, because BYU always passes for a ton of yards. Okay, looking at the recruiting class, they wrap this up. So Jared Goff going to Stanford. JT Barrett going to go to Texas. Baker, oh, don't go to Texas. So they're going to have three QBs now. Really wish he didn't go there, but it is what it is. Running back. Okay, so he flipped. So originally, Alvin Kamara was going to go to Texas. He flips to Miami. Derrick Henry stays at Appalachian State. And then Zeke is going to go to TCU, stays there. Wide receivers going to Clemson for Mike Williams. Treadwell going to Texas. So Texas gets a nice receiver to go play with all their freaking QBs. OJ Howard, I think he's going to go to Michigan. He does. Laramie Tunsil is going to go to Bama. So Bama gets a big time O-lineman. The end, Clemson gets Robert Candici. Jonathan Allen ends up at Miami. Nebraska gets both Carl Lawson and um, Joey Bosa. So nice pair of DNs for them. For D tackle, we get Oklahoma gets the number one D tackle, Chris Jones. Outside linebacker, TJ Watts going to Purdue. Jalen Smith is going to go to Michigan. Wow, Michigan gets a big middle linebacker. Georgia gets Reuben Foster. Vernon Hargraves goes to Arizona. Jalen Ramsey stays at Oregon. Tredavious White goes to Florida State. Oklahoma gets Kendall Fuller. And then lastly, we have Vaughn Bell, who I think is going to Georgia. He is. So that is where we're going to wrap up this season, guys. I'm going to go put these players on their teams. Then we are just going to get right into the next one. So right now, Ole Miss defending national champs. That's the second episode of this series. That was the second season of this episode. We got three more on the way. All right, so here we are in episode three of this sim. So this is going to be the 2014 recruiting class, and this is maybe the best recruiting class we will see in the whole sim. It is absolutely loaded, stacked, especially on offense. QB, running back, some receivers that are offensive line. It's not great for defense, but overall, it is just a crazy class. So we are just going to get into that right now. So first, we're going to get into the QBs, and they're only two, but they are wicked. So the first one is going to be Deshaun Watson. Now, obviously, Deshaun, he's a great player in college, really good start to his NFL career, had some issues, but uh, incredible at college. 
went to Clemson in real life. Here he's going to be a five-star recruit, number three player in the country, uh, improviser archetype. And he's going to be looking at Oregon, Texas, Alabama, USC, Stanford. So kind of teams all around the country, you know, five of the biggest schools in, in the whole NCAA. Okay, then next up, we have Patrick Mahomes. So he's going to be the number two quarterback in this class. Mahomes isn't a huge recruit coming out, played at Texas Tech where he was good and then obviously has completely blown up in the NFL. Going to be a five-star recruit, 18th player in the country, out of Texas, going to be an improviser archetype. He's high, taller than six feet, so we'll ump, up his height. Went to Texas Tech in real life. He's looking at Bama Tech, TCU, Texas, Stanford. Go to any of those schools except Texas. I really hope neither of these guys go into Texas because they already have three of our QBs. So that is all I'm hoping for. Okay, then we go to running backs, and we have five running backs in this class. So five, like... Almost everyone's like an all pro level type running back in the NFL. All of them, all of them were incredible in college. So the first one is going to be Leonard Fournette. And he was actually the number one, might have been the number one overall recruit in this class, but was definitely the number one running back recruit. He's from Louisiana, power back archetype. He's going to be a five star recruit, um, killed it in college. Absolutely massive. Just run you over back. He's going to be looking at LSU, Bama, Texas, Tulane and Florida State. Next up, we have Nick Chubb. Now, Chubb played at Georgia. He's going to be a power back, five-star recruit, really good for the Browns in the NFL, was great at Georgia. He was a second-round pick in the NFL draft, and he's kind of looking at kind of all over the country as well. He's looking at Wisconsin, Penn State, Maryland, then Texas and Stanford. So could go sell, or could go to Texas, could go out on the West Coast, could go up north, kind of everywhere. Next up, we have Dalvin Cook. Now, Dalvin played at Florida State. Eight, drafted by the Vikings, really good in college, really good in the NFL. Going to be a receiving back archetype here. He's going to be a five-star recruit. He's looking at Texas, Arizona, Alabama, Georgia, TCU. Next up, we have another five-star back, and this is going to be Joe Mixon. Now, Mixon is from California, but he actually went out and played at Oklahoma. So, kind of all around the country for him, but he is a California guy. He's going to be a looser back archetype, five-star recruit. He's a little bigger than 187, so we're going to up his size, but he's looking at Oregon, Texas, Alabama, USC, Stanford. Then lastly, we have one more five-star running back recruit, and this is going to be Christian McCaffrey. Now, McCaffrey's from Colorado, ended up playing at Stanford, was up for the Heisman, drafted in top 10 by the Panthers. Now he's the best running back in the league playing for the Niners. So this guy's going to be a receiving back archetype, same area of the country. He's looking at USC, Arizona State, Oregon, UCLA, Stanford. So definitely looks like he's going to stay on the West Coast. So those are running backs absolutely super studs all over you know five of them okay getting into wide receivers we got three but all of them are you know all pro level players so the first one is going to be Debo Samuel now Debo played at South Carolina he's going to be a physical archetype he's going to be a five-star recruit number two player in the whole class and he's going to be a physical archetype which is Debo he's six four here we're going to drop him down to like six one two twenty bowling ball Great with the ball in his hands. He, and he's looking at Michigan, Michigan State, Penn State, Notre Dame, Ohio State. Next up, we have Tyreek Hill. Now, Tyreek is going to be a five-star recruit here. Tyreek actually played at Oklahoma State in real life. Wasn't like huge, great in college. Kind of an unknown. Got drafted like a fifth or sixth round by Kansas City. But he's going to be a deep threat archetype. Obviously not 6'4". We're going to drop him down to like 5'10". And deep threat archetype, five-star recruit. He's going to be looking at Georgia, Clemson, Georgia Tech, Auburn, Alabama. Our last receiver here is going to be Terry McLaurin. Now, McLaurin played at Ohio State. Here he's going to be a deep threat archetype, five-star recruit. Um, got drafted by you know, Washington. Uh, I think the second round at Ohio State. We're going to drop his height. Once again, all three of these guys were a little taller, but we're going to drop their height. Um... He's going to be looking at Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, Auburn, Ole Miss. Okay, then we go to tight end. Once again, a wicked tight end. So it is going to be Mark Andrews. Now, Andrews played at Oklahoma. Here he's going to be a five-star recruit, possession archetype. Make him a little, I think Andrews more like 6'5", 240 probably. So up, I'll, I have it all written down, but I'll up it a little bit there for size. But five-star recruit, number 10 player in the whole country. So big-time player here. And he's going to be looking at Georgia. 
Georgia, Alabama, Auburn, Clemson, Tennessee. Okay, moving on to offensive line, and our first real-life off offensive lineman is going to be Cam Robinson. Now, Cam played at Alabama. He's an absolutely massive human being. So here he's going to be a four-star recruit, 6'7", but he's actually heavier than that. Um, and he's going to be looking at UCLA, Cal, USC, San Diego State, and Texas. Other offensive linemen on, uh, for tackle, we have Orlando Brown. Now, Brown is going to be a four-star recruit here. He played at Oklahoma in real life. Absolutely massive human being. Again, he's like 6'7", like 340, so we're going to up his size. But he's going to be looking at Georgia, Bama, Clemson, Ohio State, Auburn. Then actually moved one of the offensive tackle into guards. So we're going to have two guards. The first one, best guard in the NFL right now. He was incredible in college. He played at Notre Dame, and that is Quinton Nelson. Now, Nelson was like a top five, seven pick by the Colts at guard, which is crazy. You just do not see that. So here he's going to be a four-star recruit. He's looking at Mizzou, Illinois, um, Kansas State, Iowa, Kansas. And then our other guy moved inside is going to be Isaiah Wynn. So Isaiah Wynn's more of a tackle. Moved him into guard here. Uh, Isaiah played at Georgia. He's going to be a power archetype. Isaiah's actually like 6'2", 6'3", shorter like this guy. Same area of the country, four-star. He's going to be looking at Georgia, Clemson, Ole Miss, Alabama, and Auburn. Okay, moving on to defensive ends. We only have one D end in this class, but he is a freak, and it is going to be Miles Garrett. So he's going to be a five-star recruit, power rusher archetype, 6'3", you think Miles more like 6'5", will up his size, from Texas, five-star recruit. He played at AM in real life, first overall pick by the Browns. He's going to be looking at AM, TCU, Texas, Baylor, SMU. So definitely looks like he's staying in the state of Texas. Okay, no D tackles, and we only have one linebacker, and it is going to be Fred Warner. Now, Warner played at BYU, second or third round pick by the Niners, probably the best off ball linebacker in the NFL right now. This guy's going to be a five star recruit, field general, 6'3, 220, really just fits Pat, um, fits, fits Fred Warner's like total build an idea and he's going to be looking at Tennessee, Georgia, Clemson, Stanford and the Chippewas, Charlotte. Okay, moving on to cornerbacks and we have three. So the first one is going to be Adoree Jackson. Now Adoree played at USC. First round pick by the Titans in the NFL. Really good in college. He's going to be a four star recruit slot archetype and he's going to be looking at Texas, Stanford, UCLA, Oregon, USC. Then our second corner is going to be Marshawn Lattimore. Now Lattimore played at Ohio State date really good college career drafted by the Saints I think in the first round of the NFL draft going to be a man-to-man -man archetype four-star recruit and he's going to be looking at Georgia Clemson Alabama Auburn Nebraska the other corner we have is Mar uh, Marlon Humphrey so Humphrey played at Alabama he's going to be a zone archetype here four-star recruit first round pick by the Ravens in the NFL draft and that is his top four schools right there so from, this guy's from Georgia real life Marlins from Bama, so same area of the country. Okay, so we do have three safeties in this class, though. So the first one here is going to be Buda Baker. Now, Baker played at University of Washington. Really good college career. Second round pick by um, the Cardinals in the NFL draft. Zone archetype. He's a little shorter, so we're going to drop his size. But he's looking at Colorado, Arizona State, Colorado State, Oklahoma, Nebraska. So that's where we're looking for uh, uh, Buda. Next up, we have Jabril Peppers. So here he's going to be a four-star recruit. Um, Jabril in real life was one of the top recruits in this class like a top five recruit ended up going to michigan here he's gonna be a run support and four star looking at georgia clemson alabama auburn lsu and then our last safety is going to be Jamal Adams. So he's going to be a run support, five-star safety. Jamal was a huge recruit. He was from Texas, but went to LSU. This guy's from Texas, five-star recruit. He's going to be looking at TCU, Texas A&M, Texas, Oklahoma, Texas Tech. So that is the recruiting class, guys. Very, very good recruiting class overall. Just ton of talent a lot of good guys okay we're gonna get into a preseason top 25 here so right now miami is the number one team in the country um old miss defending national champs are fifth we got nebraska in the two hole wisconsin stanford who i think is starting jared goff this year uh kentucky syracuse ucla duke is high uh clemson starting marcus mariota michigan starting braxton miller Florida, Kansas State, Liberty, Washington, Georgia, UAB, Texas with Johnny Football, 
West Virginia, Illinois, Florida State, Purdue, LSU with Jameis Winston. So that is our preseason top 25. We can look at our preseason All-Americans as well. So Todd Gurley at Ohio State up to a 93 overall as a sophomore. Devontae Adams up to a 92 overall as a sophomore at Wisconsin. Robert Woods up to a 95 overall. So, wow, we got some studs right now on offense. Those are their first team. We also have Eric Reed at safety. Second team, we got Tavon Austin, his senior year at Clemson. Chance Warmack, also a senior. Yeah, senior at Clemson. So that's where we're looking for first and second team All-Americans. Okay, so before we get into the season, I want to look at just some of the rosters here. So Bama, they got Dominic Easley and Vic Beasley as pass rushers. So some guys in the front seven. Stephon Tewitt as well on the D-line. Laramie Tunsil, Doriel Green Beckham. So they definitely have some of our guys right now. Arizona's... Arizona State has a few of our guys. They have Robert Woods at receiver, who looks absolutely incredible. One of the best players in the country. They also have Shaq Thompson, who's already at 84 as a redshirt freshman uh, linebacker as well. Clemson, they got Bobby Wagner, who might be just the overall best player in the country right now in his senior season. Chance Warmack, Tavon Austin. Tavon should have a big year. Come on, 98 speed. Like, he just needs to go off for his senior season. Um, LaMarcus Joyner at corner. Marcus Mariota at um, QB. They got Robert Kimdichie, who's an 84 when you get all the upgrades here. 84 overall uh, freshman, which is crazy. DeAndre Hopkins, senior receiver, never really panned out for them. They do have a young Mike Williams as well. So Clemson has a ton of our guys. Florida, not really. Uh, oh, they have CJ Mosley, but I think that's kind of it. They haven't been getting a ton of our dudes. Staying with Florida State, they got Cam a few years ago. They do have a good team. We have a lot of like 90s. Wow. Um, they do have Ryan Shazier, a linebacker. Good quarterback. So yeah, Florida State could go on a run. Georgia. They got Sirius on the O-line, Cyrus. They got Jade on Clowney at outside backer. Ronald Darby at corner. Marcus May at safety. Ruben Foster at middle linebacker. Freshman looks like a stud, so... They got some good dudes. LSU is a team we definitely want to keep our eye on, and it's basically because of Jameis Winston. 87 overall sophomore. Could be a four-year starter if he doesn't leave early. They do have uh, Jarvis Landry playing in the slot, it looks like, this year, so we could see Jarvis getting some run playing here with, um, with Jameis. They have Teddy Bridgewater as the backup as well, so... Good combo. They have Leal Collins on the O-line. So definitely would... Oh, and he's a sophomore only all the way up to an 89. So he's going to be protecting Jameis's blind side. Definitely going to keep our eye on them. Miami, they had a few of our guys who left last year. They have so many 90s. Wow, this team is stacked. We have a 92 overall senior quarterback. Running back, 93 and 90. Receivers, 93, 92, 91. They have young Justin. Justin Hunter is not that young, I guess, anymore, but he's a junior. They have Amari Cooper, redshirt freshman. So they do have some of our guys on offense. I think they have some guys on defense. Alec Ogletree, Dante Fowler, only a sophomore up to an 89. Dre Kirkpatrick in his senior season, one of the better uh, corners in the country. Junior, Ha Ha, Clinton Dix, Justin Hunter. Jonathan Allen, 83 overall freshman right now. Reggie Ragland at middle linebacker up to an 83 as a redshirt freshman. So they have a lot of our guys and just a lot of talent overall. Michigan, Brandon Cooks at wide receiver, Matthews on O-line, William Golston on D-line, but it's Braxton Miller with Paxton Lynch. So they have two of our quarterbacks. No matter what, one of these two is going to be playing over the next few years. It looks like Braxton should be starting again this year, though. Throwing to Brandon Cooks, 94 speed, big weapon on the outside for him. So definitely would like to see Michigan go on a run. Nebraska's got DJ Fluker. So they got Timmy Jernigan at D on D tackle. And then they got a pair of RDNs. They got Carl Lawson, 80 overall freshman. And they got Joey Bosa this year, who's a 78. So a couple of our, our DNs went there this, this past year Notre Dame they have Melvin Gordon at running back who looks like decent um, as a junior I don't think they really have anyone else Ohio State Todd Gurley up to a 96 as a sophomore played one year and just absolutely exploded star development trait what were his stats last year he only had 191 yards so didn't even really he had 280 yards receiving so like 500 total yards back 
one of the best players in the country, Todd Gurley, right now already. So it's basically the Todd Gurley show. Oklahoma. We got Leonard Williams, sophomore. Ronnie Stanley on the uh, D O line. Chris Jones on the D line. So they have some guys kind of in the trenches. Ole Miss defending national champs. They are not as talented as some of these other teams, but uh, they've made, made two in a row. They have Mike Evans playing in the slot for them this year. So they do have a receiver if they do make it, we could check out. Oregon, what, just consistently one of the most talented teams in the country. They got Manti Teo right now, Anthony Barr, Josh Garnett. Um, they did get Jalen Ramsey as well. So they got Jalen Ramsey, freshman in a corner. Their QB position is just kind of okay this year. I actually don't think they're as good as some of the other teams we've been looking at here, but they are the number one team in the country right now, technically. Penn State, Sammy Watkins Jr. That's kind of the only guy for them. DJ Humphreys on O-line. Stanford, they've been very consistent. They just play really well every year. And uh, yeah, it looks like they are going to be starting Jared Goff this year, which will be super interesting. They're just going to go from Andrew Luck to Jared Goff. Obviously, Goff might not be as good, but still a really good next option to go to. Go to TCU. Oh, Josh Gordon is still here. So he's only an 88. So he's still not technically even the number one receiver on his team. But his career has just been absolutely sick he has got 1100 yards basically every single year his freshman year he just got two yards under but just the picture of consistency between 11 to 13 touchdowns and between 1098 to 1188 yards three straight years so i kind of i'm really hoping he does that again this year still a pretty good quarterback only a sophomore but yeah tcu's just consistently really good offensively texas Definitely a team we're going to be keeping our eye on. Johnny Manziel went up to an 88 overall. They have JT Barrett and Baker Mayfield. So they have three of our QBs. They have Alvin Kamara. So in National Signing Day, it said Alvin Kamara went to Miami, I think, but originally went to Texas. I looked and the guy who I assigned Alvin Kamara actually already had went to Texas. So I don't really know how that works. I don't know if they can flip again, but he's got elite development traits. He could pair up with Johnny Manziel and then Baker or whoever. They got Laquan Treadwell as well. So I definitely want to see Texas go on a run here over the next two years with, with Johnny football. Wisconsin, Devontae Adams, one of the best players in the country, 93 overall right now. They got Luke Keekley at linebacker, Eddie Goldman at D-tackle. So they do have some of our guys, but Devontae's the one we definitely want to keep our eye on. They don't have a great, they have a really good running back. They have Devontae Adams. They don't have a great quarterback this year, but they're the number three team in the country. So that'll be interesting to keep our eye on. Just as far as QBs, so they, oh, we also have Carr at BYU. So he transferred there from USC. Johnny Manziel, Jameis, Brack, Paxton at Michigan, Paxton's at Mich Michigan, Mariota at Clemson. Those are really the teams I like. I like watching the QBs. It's just more fun seeing them try to throw the ball around. Um, but those are some of the teams I would definitely like to see go on some runs here. Running back, Todd Gurley, only a sophomore up to the second best back in the country. Marcus Lattimore has been really good at Boston College. Robert Woods, best receiver in the country. Devontae, Tavon right there. Brandon Cooks as well. Keenan Allen at uh, Purdue. Okay, so that's kind of where we're sitting right now. We are going to sim now to the midway season point, and we'll take a look at recruiting, all that. So there's the preseason, actually, Heisman look right now. So Robert Woods leading the way, then Todd Gurley and Devontae Adams is on the list as well. Okay, here we are, week 10 right now. So... We will start with recruiting, see where some of this is a great class. So we'll see where some of these dudes ended up. Then we'll check one more time at National Signing Day. So first off, we have not seen a big QB go to Oregon and they get Deshaun Watson. I actually love that. Oregon is just consistently one of the best, most talented teams in the country. They finally get a big time QB. The other one goes to TCU, and this is another team that has been really good, really well built. They throw the ball a ton, and they get Patrick Mahomes. Okay, moving on to running backs. First up, we have Leonard Fournette. Now, he's still up for grabs, but it looks like LSU, Georgia, and Texas, three of the biggest teams in the country, might go to LSU like he did in real life. Nick Chubb locks in at Stanford. So he just had guys could go anywhere in the country, kind of was looking at 
all over the place. Power back, ends up with Stamp. We're going to go play with Jared Goff. I like that. Joe Mixon goes to Oregon. So he's going to go to Oregon, tear up with Deshaun Watson. I love it. Okay, I like that. I, I really do. Oh my goodness. And then <laughs> Dalvin Cook is going to go to TCU and team up with Patrick Mahomes. So I'm loving how this class is working out so far. Absolutely getting some really cool pairs. Honestly, Leonard Fournette, if he goes to LSU, he'll be playing with Jameis Winston too, only for like a year or two, but. And then lastly, we have Christian McCaffrey and he's going to Oregon. Okay, so Joe Mixon, Christian McCaffrey and Deshaun Watson all going to play for the Oregon Ducks together. Wow, let's see these receivers. First up, we have Debo and Debo is gonna go to Michigan. So they have have, uh, Braxton Miller they have Paxton Lynch now they get a big time number one wide receiver weapon then this is insane I can already see it on the side here Tyree Kill ends up at Duke pick Duke over Clemson which is kind of a wild choice kind of wish he went to Clemson just because we'll probably I don't know if we'll ever see him at Duke hopefully maybe but we'll see then our other guy is going to be Terry McLaurin he actually ends up at Alabama so just picked Bama over Clemson in as well so that's where this is at sometimes these guys will flip though so maybe we'll see Tyreek flip to Clemson or Shaq Terry McLaurin will flip something like that okay tight end Mark Andrews still up in the air looking at Tennessee Georgia Florida offensive tackle Cam Robinson ends up at Arizona Orlando Brown ends up at Bama moving on to guards and we have Quentin Nelson he's still up in the air looking at Kansas State Iowa Illinois and then Isaiah Wynn ends up at Ole Miss nice old lineman for Ole Miss the end we got Miles Garrett going to Texas. So Texas locks up Miles Garrett. Huge five-star DM pickup for them. Fred Warner is going to go to Miami. So the U locks up Fred Warner. Big middle linebacker recruit there. Moving on to corners. First, we have Marshawn Marlon Humphrey. And he goes to Memphis. So picks Memphis over Auburn. Big four-star recruit for them. And then we got a Dory Jackson. He locks in at Texas over Oregon. So big pickup for them. Then Marshawn Lattimore goes to Nebraska. So Nebraska gets a big time corner. Moving on to safeties. Number one safety here for free safeties is going to be Buddha. Buddha is looking at Colorado, Arizona State are his top two. Then we have Jabril. Jabril is looking at Tennessee, Bama, Georgia is his top three. Then lastly, we have Jamal Adams and he locks in at Oklahoma. So Oklahoma gets Jamal, picks them over Tech and TCU. So that is where we're looking like. I really like where a lot of those recruits are ending up so far. So definitely happy with that. Okay, let's look at the top 25 here. So Wisconsin, number one team in the country, Tech, Texas with Johnny Manziel. Love to see it. Clemson with uh, Marcus Mariota. Michigan's up there. TCU, USC, UAB, Kansas State, Georgia, Maryland, Bama, Auburn, Stanford, Duke, Ohio State, Louisiana Tech. Would like LSU. I don't know where they are. I'd like to see LSU. I want to see Jameis Winston. But other than that, I'm liking that top 25. Heisman Watch, Illinois QB. So it is a bunch of quarterbacks. None of our guys, though. That's all right, though. It's early. Okay, we'll just quickly look at some stats here. So Kansas State, number one offense. Georgia, Ohio State, Ole Miss, Illinois, Clemson. Defensively, Maryland, Louisiana. Louisiana Tech. That's where we're at. Quickly look at some stats here just really quick pass yards per game Derek Carr at BYU second in the country I wish he would show their record there like I don't know what BYU's record is but I knew Derek Carr would put up some stats at BYU Mariota 311 a game 26 touchdowns six picks Braxton over 300 game Manziel over 300 a game so we have some quarterbacks balling out right now Jameis Winston at 278 a game 13 touchdowns four picks not as much touchdowns as some of the other guys but that is kind of our big, big QBs right now. Jared Goff, there's Goff. So Goff sat uh, 230 a game, 15 touchdowns, four picks. You know, freshman starting, not bad at all. Running back, Melvin Gordon, second in the country in rushing at Notre Dame. Gurley up there as well at Ohio State. Receiving a couple of thousand yards receivers already. Wow, none of our guys very high here. Brandon Cooks, maybe I'll look at yards per game. Brandon Cooks looks like he's the highest though. Wow, none of our guys. Yeah, Brandon Cooks at 86 a game, which is pretty good. 
Tavon is getting 76 a game. So we'll see at the end of the year if those if those numbers get higher. Okay, so we're going to go to uh, conference championship weekend. See if there's a really good conference championship game. If not, we'll get into the playoff. Okay, here we are at conference championship weekend. Let's take a look. Oh, Tulane UAB, Auburn Ole Miss, Stanford, B Boston College, Michigan, Maryland. So... None of those games super jump out to me. Really hope Stanford beats Boston College because then I think they guarantee themselves one of the top four seeds and they will be in. Um, so yeah, we're just going to sim and we'll, and we'll take, a, look, take a look at uh, what playoffs are looking like. Wow, Braxton Miller at Michigan wins the Heisman Trophy. I wonder if he ran for a lot of yards too because that passing number isn't insane. There we go. One of our guys wins the Heisman. I think him and uh, Cam Newton, I think, are the only two of our real-life guys to win it so far. Okay, let's look at the college football bracket. So we got Texas, USC. Winner plays Michigan. Maryland, Auburn play Tulane. Kansas State, Liberty, Wisconsin, UCF, Illinois, Purdue. So Texas and Michigan are our only um, schools with our QBs. So no LSU, no Clemson. Really wanted those two in, especially Clemson with Mariota, Wagner, Tavon. But um, we're going to watch, I want to watch Johnny football. So we're going to watch Texas USC right here, right now. And then we'll probably watch the winner of Michigan Texas or that Michigan game, watch Braxton. And then we'll probably watch the final. So SC loses Derek Carr and finally makes the playoffs. This would have been cool if it was Derek Carr still as their QB, but... I mean, Texas USC, pretty wicked matchup. Obviously, 04, 05 Rose Bowl, classic game. So let's uh, let's see this. I'm gonna jump through the first quarter here. Zero zero. Wow. So nobody really doing much in the first quarter. Fourth and 12, 35 yard punt. Okay, we got Texas football, three yard rush, first and ten, and they score a 36 yard touchdown. Johnny football to Taylor Fuentes. 7 nothing. Now USC ball, second and eight, first and 10, second and eight, third and 16. We can watch here. Not obviously a great spot if you're USC, but we'll see if they can convert a long one. We are in Texas right now for this game. Drops back, sets up, fires over the middle. Wow. Oh, great hit. Really like that throw as far as trying to thread the needle, but you're throwing your guy into a lot of big bodies. Huge hit. Knocks it out. There we got Johnny Manziel to Alvin Kamara for 28 yards, second and four. Okay, we got a third and seven. So this is our first time watching Johnny Manziel in at quarterback for the Texas Longhorns. Glad we got to see him. Drops back, sets up, fires. There we go. Just drops it right in along the sideline. Big conversion there. Okay, we'll jump one more. Okay, let's see if Johnny Manziel has some magic in his arm. Drops back slides up over the top touchdown touchdown johnny football on third and one along threads the needle manzel magic i love it there we go so i'm glad we watched him that's a 30 yard dime by johnny manzel great throw okay usc trying to answer back here first second and ten third and four they do not convert they punt second and six third and five here for texas we'll watch again here Let's see if Johnny got another third down conversion. And we got a 14 nothing lead for Texas. Going to run a little fake RPO up over the top. Fires it in. Holds on. Breaks a tackle. Really like what Johnny Manziel is doing right now. Looks like they're playing Alvin Kamara quite a bit as well. I don't know if their running back got injured. Got another third and four. We'll watch. Let's see if Johnny can drive him on a 21 nothing drive right here. Okay, Johnny drops back, fires in the slant, holds on. So they're just doing what they need to do. Second and five, third and five. Okay, we'll watch another Johnny uh, third down. He's been absolutely nails on third down so far. Let's see if he keeps it going. Drops back, fires it, and they hold on in traffic. They have been so good at just holding on to those balls in traffic right now. And they are just moving this football. There's another 10-yard reception, and there it is. 27-yard touchdown pay. Next pass. 21-0 here for Texas. USC needs to get some points here. We got a third and two. They're kind of getting blown out here. But if they could get it down to 21-7 before the half, I mean, it's doable. Drops back. Kind of fakes the run. Picked. Oh, that might be it. Picked off. 
Texas. Johnny Football could drive down and make it 28 nothing right here. First and 10, second and 30, third and 13. Johnny has been so good on every third down we've watched. Looks like maybe press man up on top for, for USC. Manziel fires it underneath. Need to break a tackle. He breaks one. Oh, the fourth in inches. I'm assuming they'll just take their points here. Go up 24 nothing. Wow, it looks like they went for it and didn't call a timeout. Wow, okay, so they get no points out of that somehow. Okay, we are going to jump ahead here to the fourth quarter. We'll see if this game's any closer. 24-0, 31 So it is not any closer. We're going to go to the end of the game here. Texas just takes it to USC. 31-7 here. 38-7. 45-14 is the final. Glad we got to watch some Johnny football. Kind of blow out um, USC. Johnny, 288 rating, 16 of 20, 340 yards, four touchdowns. Wow. Kamara had 79 yards on the ground in a touchdown. Johnny also had 17. Receiving, Kamara had 28 yards. Um, this guy had 175 and two touchdowns. So... Now, we are going to get to see Texas versus Michigan in the next round. So we're going to see Braxton Miller versus Johnny Manziel. Heisman winner against in Braxton versus Johnny freaking football. Number one overall seed Michigan versus... This is a great game. I'm super excited for this one. So we're just going to advance weeks right away. So Maryland loses to Auburn. Uh, Wisconsin beats UCF. They're going to play Liberty and then Kansas State versus Illinois. Honestly, on the right side of the bracket, I'm hoping Wisconsin goes on a run. They have a few of our guys. We could see Devontae Adams. Um, I don't even know. I don't think Kansas State, Illinois, or Liberty have one of our guys. Liberty's been just playing great, though. They've made the playoff a few years now. They went pretty far last year as well. But we're definitely watching Texas, Michigan. Johnny Manziel, Braxton Miller, bunch of other guys on the team's 12 and 1 Michigan. They're trying to go down as a, like an all time team right here. Texas trying to go on a run. Absolutely wicked matchup. Rose Bowl here between Michigan and Texas. Awesome. Okay. We are going to sim here through the first quarter 0 0, 7 0 Michigan. And that's where we're at. So 7 0 Michigan after one. 34 yard run and Michigan's got it down to the two yard line. So they're trying to punch it. They got Braxton in shotgun. Obviously, he's going to be a running threat at QB. He could just take off. He's going to try to take off then throws on the run out of bounds. Braxton is exciting, though. Gonna fakes the kind of the run gets towards the line of scrimmage, tries to throw it out on the edge. OK, second and goal from the two. Michigan trying to take a 14-0 lead. Just going to hand it off in the inside. Dives into the end zone. Michigan touchdown, and they take a 14-0 lead. Johnny Manziel has to answer back here. Second and seven, third and seven. So, looks like the uh, Texas offense is struggling a little bit here. Let's see if Johnny can go, you know, make something happen. Directing traffic, drops back. Manziel up over the top. That's wide open. Oh, he dropped it. It is raining. I mean, maybe these Michigan guys are handling it a little better. Has a third down conversion, drops the ball. Going to have to punt it back to Michigan here. They're in third and four right here. Two-yard reception by Brandon Cooks. So Brandon Cooks is one of their big-time weapons at wide receiver for Michigan as well. Okay, good motion across the field. Braxton drops back. Just wide open. A little rail route into the backfield. Picks up like 40 yards. Michigan is taking it to Texas right now. We need an answer by Texas. Third and 10 at the 21. Even if you don't convert, pretty easy chip shot field goal right here. Braxton. What do we got? Little, oh, screen pass. Luke makes a guy miss. Oh, he fumbles. Texas recovers. What a giant play. Quand or that's uh, Quandre digs for Texas as well. Recovers the football. That is massive. That could be the play of the day so far. Second and six. Then Johnny answers back. 19-yard reception and then a touchdown. 56 yards. Johnny Manziel to Terrence Jeffrey. 56-yard touchdown. Texas is right back in this one. 14-7. You know, they have a chance to go tie it. You want to take some of this momentum back. Braxton going to tuck it and run. He's got the first down and more. Braxton, he is fast and slides down. He's an excellent athlete. Second and seven. Third Third and 13 midfield point here for Michigan trips to the top. Okay. What do you got for us here? Braxt 
Drops back. Screen pass. Blockers out in front. He might. Ooh. Ooh, they come up. Wow. Great rally tackle. I think the running back got a little too ahead of himself there. You want to slow that down a little bit. Let your blockers pick up some of those guys and then kind of explode forward. So not the best job by the running back there. And it is fourth and six. Going to have to punt it back to Johnny Manziel here. First and 15. And then they get a 16-yard reception. Second and nine. Third and 11. 402 left. Johnny bunch to the top what do you got here my guy manzel four-man rush from michigan going up over the top deep bomb open no he underthrew him he had him but he underthrew him johnny didn't have the arm to get it there he had to throw that half a second earlier because his dude was wide open johnny manzel lays that up and michigan picks it off then they get a 23-yard gain to Brandon Cooks. Four-yard rush. Third and four. Fourth and nine. Pretty much shake us to the half unless Michigan wants to get really crazy with it, which I doubt they do. Second and ten. Third and five. First. Oh, they could get points here. They score a touchdown. A 30-yard touchdown as time expires. Oh, no. If you're Texas, that is an absolute killer. Okay, we're going to go to the fourth quarter here. 21-7. 24 7 so it is go time for texas for four yard rush johnny third and six could watch this play they need some points right here haven't dealt with the rain we've seen some drops just some sloppy plays johnny under threw a touchdown turned into an interception holds on there gets the first down if johnny can converts that touchdown that deep bomb who knows but Right now, it looks like they're in trouble down to the 18. They lose. They get a penalty there. 28-yard rush. Oh, and that's a touchdown. Okay, so 10-point game. Michigan ball. And then they get a 58-yard run, second and seven, third and three at the 10. So even if they get a, a, touch, a field goal, they'll be up 13. Touchdown, obviously, or you know, great spot. Braxton, only a three-man rush here for Texas. He's going to just take off and run. Just great athlete knows when to tuck it heisman trophy winner looks like he's gonna punch it here as well for second goal from the one third and goal from the three this is the play of the day if you're texas you stop them you keep it at a two score game if they score a touchdown it's up to a three score braxton man coverage he's gonna tuck it and run them throws in the end zone holds on touchdown I have been so impressed with Braxton Miller. This guy looks like an absolute superstar. Won the Heisman. It's Texas football, second, six, third, and two, fourth, and eight. They go for it. They do not convert. That is going to be it. That is going to be it for Texas. 31-14. That is the ball game. So, Michigan. You know, if it wasn't raining and Johnny hits that bomb instead of getting picked off, I don't know what would happen, but Braxton had a great game. Every time we watched Braxton, he was killing it. They had 509 total yards. They just outplayed, outplayed um, Texas. 300 yards, three touchdowns for Braxton. Also ran for 42 yards there. Running back had a great day. Bra Brandon Cooks had 70 yards. Looking at Texas there, Jeffrey had a big game for them. He also had a long touchdown run. Johnny Football had 33 yards on the ground. 237 yards, touchdown, and a pick. So Braxton definitely outplayed him. Was in Texas's day, and Michigan advances to the semifinal. Okay, so national championship. Let's see where we are at. And it is going to be Michigan versus Illinois. So Michigan beats Auburn 28-22. Uh, Liberty goes down to Illinois 27-7. So we are going to watch Michigan one more time, see if they can win the natty right here. So Michigan is 14-1. Have the Heisman Trophy winner, trying to just cap off an insane season. Okay, going to go through the first quarter here. 0-0, 7-0 Michigan, and 7-3. So that's where we're at. Second and 13, third and 11 here for Michigan. Let's see if they can convert. Braxton bringing a heavy blitz. Going to fire deep down the field. Got a man. Braxton Miller. I freaking love this guy. Stands in for the, versus the blitz. Fires at 35 yards down the field. Second and 10. First and 10. Second and 13. Third and 10 from the 16 here. Braxton freaking Miller. Man. 
Ohio State fans gotta hate watching this. Going to play for Big Blue, their rival, and just shredding down to the two right there. Braxton on the little comeback. Trying to win a natty at the Michigan 14-3 here over Illinois. Oh, and then they answer back with a huge touchdown run. Wow, okay, so 14-10. First and 10, second and third and three, first and 10, second and five, third and one. They convert, and then they answer back with a 29-yard Braxton Miller 30-yard rushing touchdown. Super freaking star. Okay, Illinois, four yards, first and 10, second and eight, third and eight here for Illinois. Let's see what they got. No, I know we should have probably looked at Illinois' roster here. I know nothing about them. I don't think they have any of our guys for sure. But oh, that's a nice little out route there. Fires it in. Oh, what do we got, Illinois? Trips to the top. Direct in traffic. Drops back. Fires over the middle. Incomplete. So maybe field goal range there. Go for a field goal missed. Yeah, that's a long field goal for college. 54. Yeah, that's long for the NFL. Second and five. Third and five. Braxton. It gets picked off. 22-yard return down to the 22nd and six. And they score a touchdown. 16-yard touchdown, Illinois. We are going to jump to the fourth quarter here. Close-ass game. 21-20. 23-21. Illinois has a fourth quarter lead over the number one team. Has the Heisen Trophy winner. They punt it. They put him down at the six-yard line. Get Braxton Miller pick six. Braxton Miller pick six, and they're down eight. Oh, my goodness. Braxton's thrown two picks, third and seven from the 28, 349 left. It is technically one score still. You can tie it with a two-point conversion and touchdown. But Braxton, two interceptions here. Going to take off and runs right into a sack. Braxton has fallen apart. He looked so good in the first half. Illinois can put this one on ice right here. Any points and this one is over. Touchback. Second and 18. Braxton gets sacked again. Third and 16. Braxton is falling apart here. Literally. Illinois' defense is playing incredible. Braxton they, trying to set up a screen just gets it out. He doesn't have anybody blocking though. Oh my goodness. Illinois defense is everywhere. They're going to punt. First and 10. Second and 19. What? What happened there? Okay. Somehow Michigan got the ball back. So they have it third and 13 on their own seven. I don't even know. What, oh no. It's Illinois. Oh. Oh, they went for it on that fourth down. I see. Okay, I thought they were going to punt because you had three timeouts. They went for it, which is a bad decision. You need a pick here. Because now a field goal, it's going to be a two-score game. You got to try to block it. I don't know. You're not scoring two scores in two minutes. They do make the field goal. Illinois knocks them off. And that is it. Illinois. The Fighting Illini win the national championship over Michigan. I thought Michigan was going to take it for sure. Illinois. Wow. Crazy finish. The, the Michigan offense just fell apart. The further we got into that game, they just looked worse and worse. Our guy Braxton, they had three. I mean, they actually out yardage to them, but Braxton had two picks that really cost them. Um, he did have 80 yards rushing. Brandon Cooks, only a junior. So hopefully, Brandon Cooks and um, Braxton come back next year. I mean, they had a, their running back had a 20, 123 yards. Their QB threw for 112 yards. I don't know how Michigan lost that one, but they did. Wow. Okay, getting into our end of the year stuff. So final top 25, Illinois, then Michigan, then Texas, Liberty, Wisconsin, Maryland, UAB, UCF, USC, Ole Miss, Purdue, Clemson, 10 and 3. It didn't make the playoff. TCU, Stanford finished 9 and 5. Nebraska, Duke. No LSU was high, so they must just not had a good year at all. All Americans, Braxton, first team, Brandon Sheriff at Charlotte. Uh, Eric Reed at UW. Second team, Mike Evans at Ole Miss. 
freshman Derek Henry at Appalachian State. I wish it would just show us our stat, the stats, or we could wrote like that really annoys me. That is that it? Wow. Oh, and Leonard Floyd at Florida State. Okay, best offenses, K-State, Ole Miss, Auburn, Illinois, TCU, Purdue, Charlotte, Clemson. Defensively, Louisiana was the best ranked defense, Liberty, Cal, Western Michigan, Tulane. Season stats, so pass yards per game, Miami, Derek Carr, nice year at BYU, Marcus Mariota, 47 touchdowns, 11 picks, huge year, Johnny Football, 42 touchdowns, 11 picks, 300 yards a game, Jameis, 30 touchdowns, 5 picks, only 5 interceptions for Jameis, 286, Jared Goff, 25 touchdowns, 8 picks, 230 a game, definitely is not a bad true freshman campaign, Johnny Manziel had the best QB rating in the country for guys who actually threw the ball, 201, just really good. Mariota was right there too, 194. So they both are playing really good. Russian yards, Melvin Gordon, 903. Gurley, 880. Uh, Braxton ran for 784 and nine touchdowns. Wow. He better freaking come back next year. I really hope he does. Receiving, this guy freaking at Texas had 1,600 yards. Brandon Cooks had 1,000. Was our only guy who got 1,000. Mike Evans had 951, 16 touchdowns. So... Fortunately, it looks like Josh Gordon didn't get a thousand yards this year. Sacks. Bobby Wagner had four and a half sacks this year. I think they got to update these the defensive stats a little bit. You got to up the sacks and stuff like that. So there's a little more interesting stuff to look at. But there it is. Okay, we are going to advance to National Signing Day. Let's take a look where our recruits go. Take a look at the transfer portal and then we'll get into the next season. Okay, transfer portal first. Outside linebacker. Oh, Brandon Sheriff. Gonna leave Charlotte and go to Clemson. So Clemson, he was an All-American last year. Absolute stud is gonna go to Clemson. That is a huge transfer portal pickup. Is that the only one of our real guys? It might be, but that is massive. One of the best guards in the country going to Clemson. Clemson needs to go on a run next year. They have so many good players. QBs, just check. Yeah, there's like nothing for QBs. Okay, well, let's look at our recruits here. So let's see, did both QBs stay? So yeah, Deshaun gonna go to Oregon. TCU is going to get Mahomes. Running back, LSU picks up their guy, Leonard Fournette. Stanford is going to stick with Nick Chubb. TCU is going to get Dalvin Cook. Joe Mixon going to go to Oregon. And Christian McCaffrey going to go to Oregon. So there we go with running backs. Let's go receivers. Michigan is going to hold on to Debo Samuel. Duke is going to hold on to Tyreek, and Alabama is going to hold on to Scary Terry. Mark Andrews, he is going to go to Tennessee, gets the number one tight end. Arizona holds on to Cam Robinson. Alabama gets Orlando Brown. Kansas State gets Quentin Nelson. Isaiah Wynn's going to go to Ole Miss. Miles Garrett going to go to Texas. Miami for pa uh, Fred Warner. Marlon Humphrey going to go to Memphis. Texas going to hold on to a Dory Jackson. Nebraska gets Marshawn Lattimore. Colorado gets Buda Baker. Jabril Pepper is going to go to Clemson. There we go. That was one of the ones that was up in the air. And then Oklahoma gets Jamal Adams. So that is where we're going to end this season, guys. I'm going to put these recruits on their team, and then we're going to get right into the next one. All right, guys. Next season, we have the 2015 recruiting class. We're just going to get into this bad boy right here, right now. So for this class... This has the best group of quarterbacks over any recruiting class in this whole sim. We are about to get just a flood of QBs. We have six of them here. Let's get into it. Now, the number one quarterback in the class is going to be Kyler Murray. Now, Kyler's out of Texas. Played at Texas A&M originally, transferred to Oklahoma, was the number one overall pick by Arizona, top 10 pick in the baseball draft, undefeated high school player in like triple six A high school football in Texas. So one of the best high school players I've ever Great college player, really good so far in the NFL as well. So this guy's going to be out of Texas. Five-star, number two player in the country. Scrambler archetype, we're obviously going to drop down his size. He's going to be like 5'9". But other than that, this guy fits absolutely perfect. He's going to be looking at Texas, Oklahoma, Texas A&M, Alabama, and Illinois. 
Our second quarterback recruit here is going to be a five-star number three player in the whole country, and it is going to be Lamar Jackson. Lamar's out of Florida. This guy's out of Florida. Scrambler archetype, five-star recruit. Going to make him a little smaller, but other than that, this guy fits absolutely perfectly. We all know who Lamar Jackson is. Played at Louisville. Heisman Trophy, two-time NFL MVP, and he's going to be looking at Alabama, Miami, Georgia, Oklahoma, and Florida. I miss Florida. Next up, we have Sam Darnold. Now, Darnold is going to be an infant Supervisor archetype here, 12th player in the country, five-star recruit. This is where it got a little bit harder to assign these guys because there was only one guy really from California who is one of the high, high recruits, and three of these dudes are from California. Plus, I had to match them up to be white guys with white guys, so got a little bit tougher here just where they're from in the country, um, but... Sam Darnold was the third overall pick. He played at USC here. He's going to be a five-star recruit, improviser archetype. Sam is a really good athlete, could run around. He's going to be more like 6'3", 6'4", and he's going to be looking at Clemson, Alabama, Maryland, Michigan, Auburn. Next up, we have Joe Burrow, Joe Cool. Now, Burrow started at Ohio State before transferring to LSU, became the first overall pick. 2019 LSU Tigers, maybe the most exciting college football team of all time, made a Super Bowl already in his career. Now, he's going to be a five star field general archetype. Real life, Joe Burrow's from Ohio. This guy's from Michigan. So, same area of the country, 6'3, 207. Definitely looking like he's going to stay in those North schools with Michigan, Wisconsin, Purdue, Penn State, but also maybe go to LSU, which would be kind of crazy. I'd actually kind of like that. Then next up, we have Josh Allen. Now, Josh Allen is going to be a five-star recruit. In real life, he was a zero-star recruit, so he's going to be a little different here. Field general archetype, 6'6", 222. So already this guy's a big guy. We'll adjust his size a little bit, but that's going to be matching up pretty good. Five-star recruit. Played at Wyoming. Top 10 pick by the Bills. One of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. This guy's from Cali, just like um, Josh Allen. He's going to be looking at Cal, Stanford, UCLA, Oregon, USC. So basically the five biggest schools in the west coast and all california other than oregon as well um then our last one is going to be josh rosen now rosen played at ucla really high recruit he was a top 10 pick out of ucla by the arizona cardinals wasn't really good in the nfl but was very good in college and he's going to be looking at texas oklahoma a m lsu and bama and he's going to be a four-star recruit the rest of the guys are going to be five stars so absolutely loaded QB class really interested to see where these guys go I hope they don't end up on the same team like I hope they all spread out um, but yeah very very interesting this is overall is a really good class but especially at QB that's kind of what makes this class okay now we're gonna get into the running backs and we have three first one here the number one back in the class five-star recruit is going to be um Saquon Barkley so Barkley played at Penn State top five pick by the Giants the NFL draft he's him and Reggie Bush I think have the two sickest running back highlight type tapes in college football history Saquon was incredible at Penn State gonna be an elusive back archetype will make him a little bigger and he's looking at Clemson Auburn Georgia Alabama Michigan as his top five schools okay next up we have Damian Harris now Damian Harris power back he's gonna be a five-star recruit and he is from the state of Kentucky in real life. He um, played at Bama, second or third round pick, I think by the Patriots in the NFL draft. He's going to be looking at Tennessee, Ole Miss, Wisconsin, Stanford, Clemson. So kind of a wild, weird group of schools. Then our last running back recruit is going to be Ronald Jones. Now, Ronald Jones played at USC, but he's actually from the state of Texas. Here he's going to be a four-star recruit. He's like a second round pick by the Bucks in the NFL draft. Elusive back, really good at USC. He's looking at Texas. Texas, Bama, LSU, TCU, and Stanford. Okay, getting into wide receivers and the number one real life rec receiver here is going to be Calvin Ridley. Ridley out of Florida, but played at Bama. First round pick by the Falcons. Had some stuff going on with gambling in the NFL. Kind of bounced around now, but first few years in the NFL and at Bama, he was an excellent, excellent player. Going to be a five-star 15th player in the country. Florida State, Clemson, Florida, Alabama, Georgia for him. Next up, we have DJ Moore. Now, DJ Moore played at Maryland, um, but he's from Pennsylvania. He's going to be a four-star recruit, 41st player in the country. Played with the Panthers, now with the Bears. Just signed like a new contract actually a few days ago. He's looking at Michigan, Michigan State, Purdue, Wisconsin. Then last but not least, we got Christian Kirk. 
Kirk played at Texas A&M. He's going to be a four-star recruit, 58th player in the country, drafted by the Cardinals, played Jags. Nah, I don't know if he's played with anyone else. For sure, Cardinals and Jaguars. He's going to be looking at Florida State, Clemson, Florida, Alabama, Georgia. Okay, we have no tight ends here. Only one offensive lineman, and it is going to be the number one offensive lineman in the class, 13th player in the country, five-star recruit, Connor Williams. Connor Played at Texas from the state of Texas. Pass protector archetype. This guy fits perfectly. He is going to be looking at Texas, Bama, Oklahoma, LSU, and Texas Tech. Moving on to defensive ends, we have three of them. The first one is going to be Clellan Farrell. Now, Farrell, he's going to be a five-star recruit, eighth player in the country, good player at Clemson, got drafted in the top 10 by the Raiders. A bit of a bust in the NFL draft, but that's all right. He is going to be looking at Illinois, Kansas State, Oklahoma, Texas, Ohio State. So two kind of smaller-ish schools and then three of the biggest schools in the country. Next up, we have Josh Sweat. Now, Josh Sweat played at Florida State, but he's actually from Virginia, Good NFL career, really good in college. First round pick, I believe. He's gonna be a speed rusher archetype. He's looking at Wisconsin, Ohio State, Penn State, Alabama, Kentucky. And then our next defensive end is gonna be Christian Wilkins. Now, this guy's gonna be a 6'6", 292 power rusher, five-star recruit. Christian Wilkins played at um, Clemson as well. He's actually more of a D tackle. This guy will drop his, his height a little bit. He's more like 6'3", 6'4", but Still kind of a power rusher, inside, outside, three tech type player. So this guy just kind of matched up better as a defensive end, but that is fine. So he's going to be looking at Alabama, Georgia, Auburn, LSU, and UAB. And we have one true D tackle in this class, and it is going to be De'Aaron Payne. Now, De'Aaron Payne played at Alabama, really good college career, got drafted by the Washington Football Club or whatever they were called at the time. Power rusher, kind of inside, outside player as well, can rush the pass or stop the run. He's going to be looking at Texas, Oklahoma, A&M, Alabama, SMU. Okay, we have one outside linebacker. It is going to be Tremaine Edmonds. Now, he played at Virginia Tech, first or second round pick by the Bills, now playing with the Bears, one of the better linebackers in the NFL right now. More of an off-ball linebacker, can rush the passer though too. He's looking at Texas Tech, Alabama, Illinois, Liberty, Wisconsin. Then we have one middle linebacker and it is going to be Roquan Smith. He's debatably the best middle linebacker in, in the NFL right now. Played at Georgia, really good in college. First round pick, I think, as well by the Bears. He's going to be a run stopper archetype, six feet, 240. That pretty much matches up with Roquan as well. Five star recruit. He's looking at Bama, LSU, Arkansas, Tulane, and SMU. Okay, getting into corners. First up, we have Dante Jackson. He's played, he played at LSU, man to man corner, super fast. Played by with the Panthers, I believe, in the NFL. Looking at Texas, Texas AM, TCU, Oklahoma, LSU. Then we have Denzel Ward. Denzel played at Ohio State. He's going to be a four-star recruit here. Drafted by the Browns in the top five of the NFL draft. He's four-star, 75th player in the country. He's looking at Florida State, Florida, UAB, Georgia, Mississippi State. Okay, then we got two safeties. First up, we have a four-star recruit. 37th player in the country, hybrid, and this is going to be Derwin James. Now, Derwin drafted like 16th overall by the Chargers in the NFL. One of the best safeties in the NFL right now. He's looking at Alabama, Clemson, Auburn, Georgia, Michigan. Then our other one is going to be a five-star recruit. He played at Alabama, but he's from the state of New Jersey, so actually from more up north. Zone archetype, five-star recruit, and this is Minka Fitzpatrick, one of the best safeties in the NFL. He's looking at uh, Penn State, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Notre Dame, Florida State. So there it is, guys. That is our recruiting class. That is what we are sitting with. That, though, Like I said, those QBs, that is what we're really going to be keeping our eye on with this class. Those are going to be massive where all those dudes go. Now we are going to look at our early season top 25, preseason top 25. So Illinois coming off a national championship. They are number one in the country, but they they're an 82 overall. We've got Texas up to a 91, Michigan 89, 88 for Wisconsin, Ole Miss 87, 84 for USC, Florida State, Clemson's an 88, Stanford's an 89, 88 for TCU, 80, uh, 90 for Georgia. And remember, TCU has Patrick Mahomes now. Um, okay, so that's kind of where we're sitting there. Look at some preseason All-Americans. So we got Todd Gurley, who's up to a 97 overall as a junior, which is just absolutely cracked. Robert Kimdichie looking really good for Clemson. 
Ryan Shazier at linebacker for Florida State. Second team, Johnny Football at Texas. Sammy Watkins and Brandon Cooks at receiver on the second team. Brandon Sheriff, who just transferred over to Clemson from Charlotte um, on the second team as well. Okay, now we're just going to look at some rosters here. So Todd Gurley right now is the best player in the country absolute freak show at ohio state would love if he put up some crazy numbers but we'll see okay first we'll look at bama they got vic beasley stefan to so guys along kind of their defensive front laramie tunsell uh dorio green beckham at wide receiver i feel like they have another wide receiver as well do they have a qb this year decent senior quarterback not great clemson brandon sheriff on the o-line robert kimdichi d-line uh lamarcus joiner Big Mike Williams, red shirt, freshman, up to an 88 overall, playing with Marcus Mariota, who's in his junior season. Hopefully, he stays for two years. Um, do they, they don't, I don't know if, oh, they got Jabril Peppers at safety in this last class, but they got Marcus Mariota, really good running back. They lost Tavon Austin, but they have a 94 overall senior receiver along with Big Mike Williams. So definitely a team I would like to see go on a run here. They have some guys, you know, Robert Kimdichie on D-line as well. Florida hasn't really been getting any of our guys lately. Neither is Florida State. They do have Ryan Shazier, who's one of the best players in the country. 95 overall linebacker, 89 speed. Really good player. Uh, Georgia, Cyrus on the O-line. Ruben Foster went up to a 90 overall redshirt freshman linebacker for Georgia. They got Jadavon Clowney. They got Ronald Darby at corner. They got Marcus May at safety. So they, oh, and they have Odell Beckham, who's a senior receiver. So Odell never really improved much, but uh, they, they honestly have a ton of our guys yeah odell's not even like playing for them this year um running back is just okay they have a really good really good senior quarterback though so there we go georgia definitely could go on a run this year we have a they have a ton on defense lsu this is definitely a team we want to keep our eye on jarvis landry 90 overall junior receiver layout collins on o-line Jameis winston at qb in coming into his junior year right here teddy bridgewater as his backup i think oh and they just brought in leonard fournette so Jameis starting quarterback obviously for this year running back Leonard's a little bit buried on the depth chart right now, but he's on there. And then Jarvis Landry, one of their top two wide receivers. So could have a big year playing with uh, with Jameis Winston. Miami, this is one of the talent, most talented teams in the country every single year. Haven't really been going on runs, but really good running back. Some receivers, O-linemen. They got Alec Ogletree at linebacker, Dante Fowler on the D-line, Amari Cooper at wide receiver, only a sophomore up to an 87. Ha ha, Clinton Dix. Uh, Jonathan Allen at defensive end. Justin Hunter at wide receiver. Fred Warner, absolute freak. 84 as a true freshman. Reggie Ragland at other outside linebacker. So these guys, especially on defense, have a ton of our guys and a ton of talent. Michigan, now this is interesting because when I was making the rosters, I already seen, but they got Jalen Smith at linebacker, only a sophomore up to a 93. They got Brandon Cooks, where QB is very interesting. So Paxton Lynch in the offseason actually passed Braxton Miller, who won the Heisman last year and made the national championship game. And Paxton passed him on the depth chart. So I don't know if that means for sure Paxton is starting. I'm assuming it does or it didn't pass him on the depth chart, but passed him. He's a higher overall now. So we'll have to see, but it looks like Paxton Lynch might be starting. Oh, and they do have Debo Samuel. So it looks like he's going to be their third wide receiver. So a Brandon Cooks and Debo Samuel this year. Paxton Lynch throwing him the ball. Notre Dame, they have Melvin Gordon who had a really good year running the football last year, but that's about it. Ohio State, they have Todd Gurley, maybe the best player in the country right now. They have a decent team this year, but hopefully they just ride, ride Todd Gurley. That's what I'd like to see. They have decent offensive players, but it's really the Todd Gurley show there. Oklahoma, they got Ronnie Stanley, sophomore, 91. Leonard Williams, junior, 89. They've gotten some guys in the trenches the last few years. Oregon. Now, this is a team from now on we are keeping a pinpoint eye on. They've been so good at recruiting defense, but they do have Deshaun Watson right now, and they have a young Jalen Ramsey, but I think Deshaun might be starting this year. Had to keep our eye on that, but Deshaun Watson there for Oregon. Would love to see him start and just kill it there. Would love to see Oregon go on a run. 
Penn State, they got Sammy Watkins still at receiver. Um, decent QB. Stanford, they still have Tyron Matthew, but he's he just never really developed. They got Marcus Peters at corner as well. But the big one, why we're gonna keep our eye on them for the rest, you know, for at least the next two, three years, depending when Goff leaves, they have Jared Goff at quarterback. Another team we're gonna start watching super close is TCU. This is another team that's consistently one of the better teams in the country, consistently making a playoff or around it. Don't really have a lot of our guys right now, except for Patrick freaking Mahomes, who's going to be their starting quarterback this year. He's an uh, 80 overall with the upgrades. He's got star potential. They gave him a weird ass number and you can't change the numbers, but he's number 22, which obviously is kind of a weird QB number, but I try to make him look like Patrick Mahomes too. Going to hopefully play like Patrick Mahomes got 78 speed so decent speed good throw power um got some nice abilities as well for a qb so we will see with him moving on to texas we got johnny manzel in his senior year at texas 89 overall really good year last year they got alvin kamara at, at running back they got quandre Diggs at safety JT Barrett, Laquan Treadwell, Miles Garrett, uh, red shirt or a true freshman this year. So they got Johnny Manziel this year. JT Barrett should start for them yet the next year, unless maybe they get one of those other QB recruits, something like that. Running back Alvin Kamara, receiver Laquan still kind of far in the depth chart, but three guys are seniors ahead of him, so he's going to be playing by next year. So Texas got Miles Garrett as well on the de defensive side of the ball. They're 91 overall. Washington, 89 overall. One of the better teams in the country. Wisconsin, they got Eddie Goldman. Maybe it, honestly. One other team that we actually didn't look at that we'll look at really quick. It's going to be Nebraska because they've been getting some of our recruits. They got some D linemen over the last years. They got Timmy Jernigan, unless they cut them, which just gets so annoying when they cut these guys. They got Joey Bosa, Carl Lawson, and then they have... Timmy Jernigan, who's a backup as a senior. So there we go. That's where we're at in Nebraska. So now we are going to sim ahead here. We're going to sim to the first poll. There's the Heisman watch right there. Todd Gurley's number one. We are going to advance to the first poll. We'll look at recruiting. We'll look at the top 25, see how the teams are doing. Okay, we're at week 10 here. We're going to look at our recruiting again. Let's see where these QBs are at. I hope none of them go to Texas because they have JT Bear. We'll just have to see. I hope they don't go to the same school and I hope they spread out a little bit. <laughs> First one, Kyler Murray going to Texas. Kind of makes sense. Texas guy going to Texas. Kyler, I do like the fit. Him and JT Barrett will just fight and we'll see who comes out on top. Next up, we have Lamar and he's going to Miami. I love the fit. The U gets Lamar. They have been so good at recruiting. They're getting so many guys on defense. Now they have their stud QB. Next up, Sam Darnold's going to Michigan. So they have Paxton Lynch right now, but Paxton will be a senior next year. So they're going to get Sam Darnold Arnold in the building and they're going to get Joe Burrow. So Joe Burrow and Sam Darnold going to Michigan, fighting it out to be the starting quarterback. He also was looking at Wisconsin, Penn State. He was looking at Clemson and Alabama. Then we have, oh no, Josh Allen. Josh Allen heads to Oregon. They already have Deshaun Watson. Deshaun will be a sophomore. So maybe they'll, if they redshirt Josh and then maybe he'll play two years, hopefully maybe three if he really got kind of wild with it, but he's going to be backing up Deshaun for a while unless Deshaun ends up being kind of a bust. So we'll see. And then our last one is going to be, <laughs> of course, um, Josh Rosen ends up in Texas. So we do have quite a few of the guys going to similar schools, unfortunately, but that's just kind of how it goes sometimes. Oh my gosh. Then Saquon goes to Michigan. So they get Joe Burrow, Saquon Barkley, and uh, Sam Darnold all in this class. Crazy. Then Damian Harris goes to Stanford. Oh, that's another guy Stanford has is they got Nick Chubb last year. So Chubb's actually at Stanford, Damian Harris now as well. Then Ronald Jones going to Texas. So Texas gets another nice recruit. Looking at wide receivers. Calvin Ridley is going to end up at Florida State. So nice pickup for Florida State. Miami was right there with him as well. Wisconsin is going to get our guy DJ Moore. They've done a really good job of recruiting our real life receivers. Then Florida State also gets Christian Kirk. So they get two of our guys right here. Okay, now we have offensive tackle. I'm going to bet all my money that Connor Williams is going to go to Texas. Let's see. No, Texas Tech. 
Texas Tech beats out LSU and Texas. Okay, so there we go. Connor Williams. Defensive end, first one. Clellan Farrell is going to go to the Ohio State. So nice pickup for them. Penn State is going to pick up Josh Sweat. So nice pickup, pat, fat, uh, pass rusher for them. And then Christian Wilkins is going to go to Clemson. So Clemson picks up kind of the inside outside pass rusher. D tackle Payne is going to go to Texas. So Texas gets a nice guy for along with their D lines. They're going to have De'Aaron Payne playing next to Miles Garrett. Moving on to linebackers. Texas Tech gets Tremaine Edmonds, so nice pickup for them. Roquan is going to go to LSU, so LSU over Mississippi State for Roquan. Getting into our corners, and Dante Jackson's still up in the air. He's looking at Texas, ASU, and, and SMU. Denzel Ward still up in the air. Florida, Mississippi State, at UAB. Clemson picks up Derwin James, so they get another nice safety. I think they already have Jabril Peppers as well. And then the Ohio State gets Minka Fitzpatrick over Wisconsin. So a lot of guys already committed. Most of them already, actually. There's only a few that weren't. So we'll check on that one more time at the end of the year. Okay, looking at the top 25 here. So Florida State, 8 no Ole Miss, Texas going on a run with Johnny Football. Michigan up there. Uh, Clemson, 6-2. and two. I like to see it. Oregon, 7-1. Bama, Ohio State, Wisconsin, Oklahoma, Miami, LSU. We need LSU to keep winning. I would really like to see Jameis, Johnny, Marcus all in the playoff. Oh, and I'd like to see Deshaun. No TCU, right? No TCU right now, but still some time. Heisman watch, Johnny football in fourth, Illinois QB, wide receiver at Texas. He must be having a huge year. Look at some season stats really quick. Just quick little overview. So pass yards per game right now. Miami leading the way. Paxton Lynch. So Paxton is starting over Braxton Miller. Having a pretty good year. Patrick Mahomes. 300 yards a game. 24 touchdowns. 11 picks as a true freshman at TCU. I'm actually pumped he went to TCU. They've been a really good team through the whole sim. And they throw the ball all over the yard. Marcus Mariota. Almost 300 a game. Deshaun Watson. 285 a game. 24 touchdowns. 2 picks as a true freshman wow Jameis Winston nice year so far 25 so we just have so many good quarterbacks at right now 29 touchdowns three picks 267 yards a game for Johnny football crazy now uh, Melvin Gordon second in the country in rushing yards so having a big year Derrick Henry to have uh, playing well at um, Appalachian State Nothing for Gurley. Wow, Gurley's down at 48 yards per game. He might be the best player in the country, and they just don't use him. Receiving Jarvis Landry having a big year at uh, LSU so far. Kind of the best real-life guy, it looks like, receiving yards-wise. Brandon Cooks, 80 a game. Shepard at OSU having a nice year as well. Big Mike Williams at Clemson, 70 a game, seven touchdowns. So... Quick little overview there. Now we are just going to get to conference championship weekend and then we will see good conference championship game. We can check it out or we'll get into the playoff. Okay, here we are. Conference championship weekend. TCU, Kansas State. That actually is debatably watchable. Texas, Auburn, Washington, Illinois, Clemson. I, should we watch TCU, Kansas State? Just watch Patrick Mahomes. We might never get to watch him. Like TCU 7 and 5, you never know. Maybe they'll never go on a run. So I, I think we're going to watch that game right now. Very similar colors here for these two. TCU, Kansas State, bunch of purple and silver here. Uh, let's get into it. Both 88 overall. TCU's got the better defense, a little bit better offense for Kansas State. They have a much better record, but let's watch some Patrick Fick, frickin' Mahomes throw the rock. Okay. Gonna sim through the first quarter here. Seven nothing K State. Kansas State football. Third and seven. They're punting. Second and ten. Oh, there it is. Ninety yard touchdown pass. Patrick Mahomes. Ninety yard touchdown pass right there. Fourth and six from the thirty four yard line. That'd be a long college field goal. We'll see. Fifty one field goal is good. So they nail that one. Okay. First and ten. Second and eight. Okay. We'll watch this. So this is our first time watching. Patrick Mahomes in at QB for K-State. I don't know why they're not giving him the sleeve. Because same with, thing with Johnny Manziel. I gave him a sleeve, and then when we get in game, he's not wearing it. So I don't know what's going on there. Huge conversion there on third down for Patrick Mahomes. Okay, we'll watch this. First and 10. Let's see if Mahomes airs this out. Trips to the top of the screen. 
Holmes drops back, getting some pressure in the end zone. Wow, I love that. A little dagger concept. So the streak, have the dig coming in behind him right on break. Throw that dig underneath the streak. Mahomes uses his big arm to fire in that football. And we might have a superstar on our hands as a freshman. Not a great record for TCU, but this kid can sling it. Okay, K-State football, third and four. They pick it up, second and five, first and ten. First and goal from the six. And they punch it in. Okay, so 17 14. Second and six here. Third and six for K State. We can watch this play. Big 12 title game. TC, you want to get off the field here. You don't want to be down two possessions going into the half. It's been a close game. A little RPO out to the side. That's a pick six. Oh, he turned. It would have been a pick six. Just had the hitch pass. Picked it off, going the other way. He did a little stop, or that should have been a pick six. But there we go. Probably out of field goal range if you're a TCU. So you need at least five, six yards for a field goal. Obviously, you want to get the first down, though. Holmes drops back, has time over the middle, fires it in. Easy completion. Mahomes has 164, two touchdowns in the first half against the number four team in the country right now. Looks like an absolute freak show. And then he go in the end zone. 25-yard touchdown pass there for Mahomes. 21-17. Now we're going to jump to the fourth quarter. 28-21 is where we are at. So Kansas State has the lead. Mahomes second and eight. Second and 18. Second and 28. Third and 24. We'll just let it rock there. Punt it away. K-State. Third and four. They convert. Second and seven. First and ten. Second and seven. Now they're in field goal range already. Third and four. Pick it up. Second and seven. And they score a touchdown. 18-yard touchdown. Now TCU's down two scores. You really got to get busy here. Third and seven here for Mahomes. I mean, this is a young TCU team. They got Cal Dalvin Cook, Patrick Mahomes. Only going to get better. But, uh, hey, we'll see if they can do something crazier. Down over the middle. Oh, my gosh. That could have been picked. That was a super tight window that Mahomes threw that into. Is able to complete it, though. Oh, and then they scored the two plays later. Tried a two-point conversion. Didn't get it. So, Mahomes did a huge pass down the field. Second and one. They convert. Second and two. Third in inches. Huge play here. TCU's out to, down to no timeouts. Third and in inches. They need to get them right here. They need a TFL. Fake RPO, a wide open hole shot in behind the corner. And that's probably going to do it for K-State. And they just take a knee. So there it is. TCU falls by eight. Close game. Mahomes played very well considering he's a true freshman. Number four team in the country. The QB for Kansas State played pre pretty good. 332. He had two interceptions though. Mahomes, four touchdown passes, 267 yards. He, was only, he only had 11 completions. They didn't let him throw the ball enough. They just didn't really have the ball a ton either, though, but they ran too much. But there we go. So TCU does get knocked off there. Kansas State going to be you know one of the top four seeds probably in the college football playoff. Okay, let's look here at the college football bracket. So we got Alabama, Michigan, Washington, Florida State, Kansas State, Auburn as our top four. Texas, Appalachian State, Clemson, Nebraska, Ohio State, Illinois. So no LSU and no Oregon. Oregon, I thought, had a chance. Michigan made it at 7-5. and 13-0 Appalachian State. There we go. Okay. So we are going to sim through this first round and then we'll see where we're at. Okay, second round, what do we have? Michigan beat Bama, Texas won, Clemson won, Kansas State, and Ohio State. So Nebraska goes down, Bama, Appalachian State, and Illinois. So next round, we got Washington, Michigan, Florida State, Texas, Clemson, Auburn, Kansas State, Ohio State. My dream is we get Michigan, Texas versus Clemson, Ohio State. Then we can watch Todd Gurley, Clemson, Michigan, and Texas. That's my goal. That's my dream. We'll see. Okay, next round, Michigan, Texas, Clemson goes down. Okay, so we do get Michigan, Texas. So you know what? We'll watch Michigan, Texas. I think they played last year, right? And then uh, we'll watch, the, and then we'll watch the final too. So that's fine. We do get to watch a double QB matchup here with Paxton throwing to Brandon Cooks, Texas with Johnny Football once again. Yeah, I think this was the exact same game, too. I think it was the semifinal, Texas versus Michigan last year. Michigan won, and then they made the final. 
But now they have Paxton instead of Braxton. Now they have Joe Burrow and Sam Darnold coming in as well with Saquon Barkley. And then Texas is bringing in Kyler Murray as well. So both these teams, really good young QBs coming in the door. And they already have JT Barrett at Texas. Okay, we are going to sim through the first quarter here. 14 nothing big blue. Okay, Texas stuck at zeros. Johnny, this could be our last game. You want to get to a national championship. Can you do something? You're up over the top. Oh my gosh, that could have been picked off by Michigan. He tries to undercut it and then he's gone to the races. Could have been maybe picked off. It was a tight window. That's why they say DB coaches say, hey, hand on the hip, play the ball unless you're 100% sure you are going to pick that off. Let's take a little look at this. You know, Johnny lays that up maybe could have been no the guy just kind of took a bad angle at it honestly and then the texas receiver jeffrey turns the corner and he is gone and texas is right back into this one first and ten second and ten third and 15 so paxton gets sacked there big boy paxton lynch right here a junior took over for braxton miller Gonna drop back, set up a screen past the outside. He's got blockers out in front, but the tech, once again, these guys, this kind of happened last year, I remember too, one of the games, the, the running backs aren't letting their blockers kind of set up on those screen passes. He had a lot of, he had a caravan out in front of him. First and 10, second and nine, first and goal from the four. So Texas can tie this after being down 14, nothing. We got empty here, Johnny Manziel at the four yard line, 230 left. Manziel gonna run QB draw and he gets hit pretty hard there. Um, no, no dice there. We're going to keep watching this. So second and goal from the four now. Now they're going a bit more of a jumbo heavy look. Only one receiver on the field. Three tight ends. Motion the receiver across. Going to run jet sweep. Oh, he breaks a tackle and he's in. There it is. Actually, maybe could have been tackled in the backfield. Breaks a tackle though. Texas ties this one 14 all right before the two minute warning here to end the half. Second and seven, third and four here for Michigan. This is a low key big play. You want to convert this just in the back. You do not just want to punt this ball back to Texas right here. Paxton drops it down. That is going to be very close. They're calling it fourth in inches. Wow, that is huge. So I'm assuming they're going to have to punt that. You can't really go for it on fourth down on your own 35 yard line. They do punt. Johnny Manziel has a minute 30 here to go try to make some magic, but it's already third and seven. Already third and seven. Okay, Johnny, what do you got for us here? On your own 30, third and seven. Drops it over the middle, slant, boom, fires it in. Keep those chains moving. 158 yards right now for Johnny Manziel. Oh, 40. Okay, so I was going to watch the next play, but there it is. 14-yard touchdown. 21-14 all of a sudden for Texas. Okay, that's going to put us to the half, and now we're going to jump to the fourth quarter. So 21-17, Michigan gets a field goal. Michigan gets a touchdown. So 24-21, Texas down again. But now first and goal, and then they score on this next play. Yeah, so now Texas has a four-point lead. First and 10 from the 14, second and eight, third and four from the eight. Your Michigan, can you punch this bad boy in and take the lead? Paxton drops back over the middle. That's going to be a first down, down to about the one and a half, two-yard line. And they punch it in the next play, two-yard touchdown. So Michigan takes the lead. We have a back and forth ball game here. Third and three, they convert. Second and seven, third and ten. Not an easy spot here for Texas. Third and 10, five minutes left. You're stuck three. Don't want to give Michigan the football back. Johnny Manziel drops back. They get pressure. He has to roll out, kind of hit as he throws that inside pressure. Forced Johnny to leave the pocket. Couldn't find anything down the field. Going to be Michigan football. Already second and seven from the 47, 46. This is a massive play for the Wolverines. You could go up 10 on this drive and put this one away. This is the play of the day so far. They got a swing pass, little slant over the middle, breaks it out. He's gone. He's going to be gone. Touchdown, Michigan. Oh my gosh, Paxton. They had the little swing pass. Try to pull that those linebackers out of the middle of the field. Fire in that slant. And there it is. Wow. That is crazy. All of a sudden, big blue up 10. Big kickoff return there for Texas. Then they hit a big pass play. They need to score and score in a hurry here. First and 10 at the 21 already. Second and seven. Third and inches from the 12. Now you could 
kick a field goal here, but I'm going to go for it on fourth down. You want to be you want to be down three, not seven here. Oh, no, they're running. Oh, it was a fake draw. End zone touchdown. Great. I thought that was a draw all the way. And I seen the linebacker coming right through that a gap. Instead, play action. Johnny hits his receiver over the middle of the field. Wide open. This is a great game right here. Crazy. Third down back down three. Kickoff. Here's Michigan football. First and ten. Second and ten. Fourth and six. Oh, that was third down. I missed that. Okay. So now Michigan has to punt this football. Johnny Manziel, two-minute drill, second and seven, three-yard rush, third and three here. We're going to watch right here. So Johnny Manziel, one minute left, has a chance to go win this one. Either win it or this is your last college game for Johnny Football. They're out oh, fake draw again. Out to the sideline. Get out of bounds. Stop the clock. 300 yards, four touchdowns for Johnny Manziel right now. Minute left. Then they hit a nine-yard reception. First and 10 at 36. Second and 18. Third and two. We're going to watch here. One timeout left for Texas right now. Field goal does tie it, I guess, but you want to go for the jugular. Throw it into your running back. That's going to be a first down. He kind of gets suplexed, but that's fine. Okay, we'll jump ahead of play again. Oh, we're going to watch right here. Well, I guess we can just watch. One timeout, Texas. 25 seconds left. Johnny can't take a sack. Can't take a sack, Johnny. He fumbled. That's it. Oh, my God. What a way to end your college career, Johnny Manziel. You are in field goal range. Throw it away. Do not take a sack. Look at Michigan. Oh my God. They're posing. They're going to the natty again. Johnny Manziel, you're in field goal range. You cannot, cannot take a sack there. What a finish. Second year in a row, Michigan beats Texas, advances to the natty. Now with Paxton Lynch, that is going to be Johnny football's last play of his career absolute heartbreaker and now we're gonna see can michigan they got beat last year by illinois now they're gonna play auburn or k-state we'll see if they can get it done this year so it's gonna be michigan auburn in the natty michigan doesn't have a natty so this would be their first one of the sim so let's see if they can get it done big blue led by pax and lynch they got brandon cooks they could have a crazy fun offense in a few years. They could have Joe Burrow, Debo Samuel, and Saquon Barkley. Okay, we're going to go through the first quarter. 10 nothing Michigan. Second and seven, third and six. Auburn punts. Oh, and a big return. They got it to the... Okay, so now Michigan's in. Michigan's, Michigan's messing around now. They got it at the 21-yard line. They'd have a chance to go up 17 nothing here. That's Brandon Cooks at the top of the screen. Let's see if they know they're going to run draw. Oh, and he picks it up, makes a guy miss, and he picks up the first down. I hate those draws on third down, but hey, when they work, you can't say too much about it. Second and six, third and one from the three. Shotgun drops back, four man. He's going to have to run a little bit, throws end zone, throws it out of bounds. So Michigan going to go up 13-0 here. We are going to sim to the fourth quarter here. 13-0, 13-0, 19-0. So this one feels over. Auburn just never felt like they were on the same level as this team. Michigan, 10 and 5. They were 15 and 1 last year and lost. Now they're 10 and 5, and it looks like they are going to just skate to a national championship right here. We are just going to sim through this bad boy now. We'll go to the end of the game, unless, like I said, Auburn starts to do something here, but they don't. They get 19 7. Oh my God, they got a late touchdown there to make it 19 14. But Michigan wins the national championship so they actually benched braxton miller who is a three-year starter for paxton lynch and it pays off they came up short last year against illinois this year they beat auburn they actually did they actually had less total yards paxton had 97 yards passing 91 brandon cooks had 25 almost nothing receiving so oh debo did get uh Debo did get a touchdown. Debo got a touchdown as a true freshman in the national championship. Auburn, their one receiver had a big day. Um, but just, I think they got a lot of kind of yards at the end of the game to get those late touchdowns that were kind of garbage. But there it is. 
Michigan wins the national championship. Almost won it last year. They get it done. They're bringing in Joe Burrow and Saquon Barkley. They got Debo Samuel last year. So Michigan Wolverines look like playing. They're in a great spot right now. Okay, so that is going to be the end of this season. Michigan wins it. We'll look at the final top 25. Michigan, Washington, Kansas State, Illinois, Texas, Clemson. How does Oregon finish as the number eight? Oh, no. Yeah, they didn't even make the playoff. How are they the number eight team and don't make the playoff? That's so annoying. LSU is nowhere to be seen. So we haven't seen anything from Jameis Winston. Um, hopefully his senior year, if he doesn't leave early, he goes on a bit of a run. Heisman. QB at Washington wins it. Wide receiver from uh, Texas is on the list as well. Look at some All-Americans here. Wow, like none of our guys. Kind of crazy. Second name, Jarvis at LSU. Robert Kimdichie, Ryan Shazier. Look at freshman. Deshaun Watson gets it over um, over uh, Patrick Mahomes. Robert Kimdichie. So Robert Kimdichie was a, tr a freshman this year and got second team All-American. Okay, we'll look at some stats real quick. So, pass yards for game. So, this guy, he's a senior. He's going to be gone. They're going to have Lamar Jackson last year, and they were leading the country in passing. So, we could see Lamar just do some crazy shit. Patrick was fourth in the country in yards per game as a true freshman. 51 touchdowns, 15 picks. And Deshaun Watson got first freshman All-American over him. What did Deshaun do? Jameis, nice year. They're just not winning enough games at LSU. Paxton, nice year, wins the national championship. Mariota, 29 touchdowns, four picks, good year. Jared Goff, 35 and 15 at Stamford. Johnny Manziel, he's going to be gone. 269 game, 46 touchdowns, seven picks. Deshaun, 36 touchdowns, six picks. So I think the Mahomes is better, but both of them had really good years. So whatever. Gordon, 1,100 yards at Notre Dame. Derrick Henry, 965 at Appalachian State. Yeah, they just do not give Gurley the ball at Ohio State. So whatever. Oh, wow. This guy got 1,700 yards. And Jarvis Landry at LSU, 1,600 yards, 18 touchdowns. And he should be back. They're both juniors, him and Jameis. So hopefully they're both back for LSU next year. Big Mike Williams first year as a starter 1100 yards at Clemson Mike Evans his last year at Ole Miss a thousand yards Shepard at Oklahoma State as a junior had 974 look at defense tackles Reggie Ragland at Miami had a lot TFLs sacks then interception seven just not any crazy numbers there okay now we are going to go to National Signing Day we will see look at uh, where these dudes sign and we'll look at the transfer portal stuff like that there was really only a few guys that were uh, were not signed to a specific spot yet. Okay, we'll go through transfer portal first, though. Sterling Shepard goes to Kansas for his last year. He had almost a thousand yards last year. Might be it, though. I'm surprised it's not a little bit more for the transfer portal. QBs, especially the QBs. I think they should adjust it. So if some of these QBs are buried, like Joe Burrow and, and Sam Darnold, they're both going to go to Michigan. If Burrow beats out Darnold, Darnold should want to transfer out. Like I think if you're like, especially if they're like, you're a five-star recruit and you're not starting by your sophomore, junior year, you should be looking to transfer. So I, I would like them to adjust that probably. Okay, let's go through. So QBs, Texas for Kyler. Lamar goes to Miami. Sam Darnold goes to Michigan. Joe Burrow goes to Michigan. Oregon gets Josh Allen, and they already have Deshaun Watson. And then Texas keeps Josh Rosen. So they're going to have Rosen, Kyler, and JT Barrett. Running back, Saquon going to Michigan. Stamford gets Damian Harris. Texas going to hold on to Ronald Jones. Calvin Ridley is going to stay at Florida State. Wisconsin going to hold on to DJ Moore. Christian Kirk going to go to Florida State. Offensive tackle, Connor Williams, Texas Tech. Clellan Farrell going to go to Ohio State. Josh Sweat going to go to Penn State. And then Georgia gets uh, Christian Wilkins. De'Aaron Payne going to go to Texas. Yep. Tremaine Edmonds, I think he was going to Tech. Yep, staying at Tech. LSU for Roquan. Yep, staying at LSU. Texas gets, so the corners were still up in the air. So Texas gets Dante Jackson. Denzel Ward goes to Florida. Then for our safeties, Clemson gets Derwin James. And Minka Fitzpatrick ends up at Ohio State. 
So that is it, guys. That is going to be the fourth season of this episode. So we have one more season upcoming for this episode. Then that is going to wrap it up. And then we have one more on the way as well. So we still have after next year, we still have six more seasons of The Sims. So that is it. Michigan wins a natty. They got Joe Burrow coming in the door. They got Saquon Barkley. They got Debo Samuel last year. So Michigan is definitely going to be a team we are keeping our eye on. And that is it. We're going to make the guys. We'll get to the next year. All right, guys. We are in the last season of this episode. So, so last year, Michigan coming off a national championship. We are going to be doing the 2016 recruiting class right now. Very good class overall. Some really fun players. More QBs added to the mix. We're starting to just get in every year. We have good. Last year, we had six. Here, we have three more quarterbacks. So QBs getting spread all around. Let's just get into the class right now. So the first QB in the class is going to be Jalen Hurts. Now, Jalen Hurts played at Alabama, transferred to Oklahoma. Really good quarterback, star for the Eagles right now. He's going to be a five-star recruit looking at Alabama, Georgia, LSU, Clemson, Stanford for him. Next up, we have Dwayne Haskins. Now, Haskins played at Ohio State, was a first-round pick by the Steelers in the NFL draft. He's going to be a five-star recruit, 10th player in the country. He's going to be looking at Wisconsin, Ohio State, Notre Dame, Penn State, Michigan. Then our last QB is going to be Justin Herbert. Now, Herbert, five-star recruit from Oregon, played at Oregon, going to be a scrambler archetype. He can move, good power arm, five-star recruit, really good prospect. He's going to be looking at Washington, Oregon, Cal, Stanford. Hope he doesn't go to Washington, they, or sorry, Oregon. They already have um, Deshaun Watson and Josh Allen. I'm really, go to Washington or Stanford, Cal, wherever. Don't go to Oregon. Okay, running back. Number one running back in the class is going to be Miles Sanders. He's going to be a five-star number one recruit in the whole country. Uh, Miles Sanders played at Penn State, was a second-round pick by the Eagles in the NFL draft. He's going to be looking at Auburn, Alabama, LSU, Oregon, Clemson. So five of the biggest schools in the country. Okay, moving on to wide receivers, and we have four of them. The first one, the number one receiver in the class, is going to be DK Metcalf. He's going to be a deep threat. We're going to up his size, but he's going to be a five-star recruit. He's going to be looking at 10 Texas, Oklahoma, TCU, Alabama, LSU. D Real life DK played at Ole Miss. Second round pick by the Seahawks in the NFL draft. Next up, we have Chase Claypool. Now, Claypool here is going to be a five-star recruit. Claypool in real life is from Canada, Br British Columbia, and he played at Notre Dame. Here, he's going to be a five-star 15th player in the country. Going to be looking at some of those northern schools. Makes sense. He's Canadian. Illinois, Wisconsin, Michigan, uh, Purdue, and Michigan State. We're obviously going to up his size. He's actually like 6'4", 220. Next up, we have DK's teammate at Ole Miss, one of the best receivers in the NFL right now with A.J. Brown. Brown played at Ole Miss, second round pick by the Titans, traded to the Eagles, going to be a physical archetype, four-star recruit. He's going to be looking at Virginia, Virginia Tech, UNC, Ohio State, and Boston College. And our last receiver prospect is going to be Michael Pittman Jr., Played at USC, drafted by the Colts in the second round. Deep threat archetype, four-star recruit. Going to be looking at Tech, SMU, AM as his top three. Okay, we have no tight ends. We have two offensive tackles. The first one is going to be the number one offensive tackle in the class, Makai Becton. Absolutely massive human being. Top 10 pick by the Jets in the NFL draft. He played at Louisville. Power archetype, 6'6". 330 gonna even probably be a little heavier make him like 350 he's gonna be looking at michigan state michigan purdue wisconsin Pitt, and then our other one is gonna be jonah williams he played at alabama four-star recruit here he's gonna be looking at texas oklahoma smu texas a and tcu we have one guard it is gonna be elijah vera tucker first round pick by the jets played at usc really nice guard good in the nfl from cali played at usc gonna be looking at texas stanford oregon bama lsu so kind of all over the country country for him then we do have one center landon dickerson now dickerson started at florida state then transferred to alabama plays for the eagles right now unbelievable offensive lineman in college good in the nfl so far he's a five-star eighth player in the country looking at Ole miss auburn lsu illinois and bama okay moving on to defensive ends first one is going to be brian burns speed rusher archetype five-star recruit played at florida state drafted by the panthers in the first round he's going to be looking at missouri illinois 
Illinois, Kansas State, Oklahoma, and Notre Dame. Then we have Quinn and Williams here. I put him at D end. He's more of a D tackle, but they didn't. We, our D tackle class was pretty weak. Going to be a power rusher, though, 6'5", almost 300 pounds. We're going to make him a little shorter, make him a little heavier. Played at Alabama, top five pick by the Jets in the NFL draft. He's going to be looking at Oklahoma, Arkansas, Kansas State, Illinois, and Nebraska. Next up, we have Rashawn Gary. He was one of the number one recruits coming out of high school in this class. Drafted by the Packers, played at Michigan. He's going to be a run stopper archetype, 6'4", 285, four-star recruit. Penn State, Clemson, Maryland, Alabama, and uh, North Carolina for him. And then our last one is going to be Nick Bosa. Bosa is going to be a four-star power rusher out of Florida. Actually played at Ohio State. He's uh, looking at Georgia, Clemson, Alabama, Florida State, Miami. Plays for the Niners in the NFL right now. Okay, getting into D-tackle, we have one. It is going to be Ed Oliver. He's going to be from Texas. He played at University of Houston, top 10, 15 pick by the Bills in the NFL draft. Going to be a five-star recruit. He's shorter. He's not 6'6". He's like 6'1", 6'2". Run stopper. Going to be, he's a good pass rusher from the inside. Five-star looking at Texas, Wisconsin, Alabama, Penn State, and Clemson. Getting into linebackers, and we have two in this class. First up, we have Isaiah Simmons. Now, Isaiah Simmons played at Clemson, top 10 pick in the NFL draft. Four-star recruit here. We're going to make him a little taller. He's like 6'4", super big, super long. He's going to be looking at Clemson, NC State, Vautech, Duke, and Wake Forest. And then our other linebacker is going to be Devin White. White played at LSU, top 10 pick by the Bucks in the NFL draft. Four-star recruit, and he's going to be looking at Alabama, Texas, TCU, Oklahoma at Texas A&M. I made him an outside linebacker because the middle linebacker class was absolutely trash. They had one top 100 recruit. He's a white guy, so that's kind of why I did that. Moving on to corners, we have three corners in this class. The first one is going to be Travon Diggs. Really good in the NFL for the Cowboys. Played at Alabama. He's going to be a five-star recruit, six player in the country and he's going to be looking at Bama, Clemson, Georgia, Notre Dame, LSU. Next up, we have Byron Murphy. Murphy, West Coast kid, played at Washington. Um, going to be a five-star recruit, 19th player in the country. Second round pick by the Cardinals in the NFL draft. He's going to be looking at Alabama, Texas, TCU, Oklahoma, and Georgia. And then our third one is going to be Jeff Okuda. He's actually from Texas, but played at Ohio State. Five-star recruit, man-to-man -man archetype. He's going to be looking at Oklahoma, Tulsa, K-State, TCU, Texas, Tech. Then we have one safety. It is going to be Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Really good in the NFL. Played at Florida. Played for the Saints, Eagles, Lions. Going to be a four-star recruit. And he's looking at LSU, Alabama, Texas, Tulane, and the Raging Cajuns. So that is where we're sitting with our recruits. Okay, now we're going to go over just kind of our preseason stuff here. So we got Michigan, number one team in the country, defending national champs, Washington, Auburn, Kansas State, Texas, Oregon, Oregon with Deshaun, um, Nebraska, Clemson with Marcus Mariota, Bama, Ohio State, Penn State, Miami, Miami with Lamar Jackson, I think is starting for them as a freshman, Oklahoma, UCLA, Tulane, Georgia, LSU. I already looked at the rosters though, and Jameis Winston left LSU early, which is kind of shitty. We never really got to watch him. Jared Goff coming in as a first team All-American as a junior. Same with Leonard Williams and Robert Kamdichi on the D-line. Ryan Shazier at line backer for first team preseason second team Lael Collins on O-line Leonard Floyd at outside linebacker for Florida State okay let's just look at some of these rosters here so Bama they have some guys on defense Stephon Tuitt Laramie Tunsil and Orlando Brown at on O-line Doriel Green Beckham at wide receiver decent sophomore quarterback too so we could see Bama go on a run we haven't really seen much of them in a while Clemson this is one of our teams that we definitely would like to see do something Robert Kamdichi one of the best players in the country 93 overall sophomore and they have big mike williams sophomore wide receiver senior starting quarterback marcus mariota so definitely going to be keeping our eye on them we want to see mariota have a big year throwing to big mike williams on the outside clemson do something this year Florida State, they have some good linebackers. They have Leonard Floyd and Ryan Shazier, who's up to a 97. So their pair of linebackers are absolutely nuts. Um, two of the best players in the country. I think that's really, I think they have some young receivers and stuff as well, but that's kind of their big guys. Georgia, Ruben Foster at middle linebacker, 92 overall sophomore. They got Jadavon Clowney, another linebacker, Ronald Darby, Marcus May. So kind of a bunch of guys on defense for our guys for them. Von Bell at safety as well. They do have a pretty good quarterback. So maybe we'll see Georgia go on a run. 
LSU, like I said, they uh, they lost Landry and Jameis Winston. Both went to the draft early, so lost a lot of talent. They don't really have. They got Roquan Smith at linebacker. They do have... Oh, they cut. They had Leonard Fournette, and they cut him. I hate that cutting shit. They really got to fix that, but that's where we're at there. Miami, always one of the most talented teams in the country. They got Jonathan Allen, Dante Fowler on D-line, Amari Cooper at wide receiver, Reggie Ragland at linebacker. I think they have, a, they have Fred Warner, freshman linebacker. Uh, and then they are starting, I believe, Lamar Jackson at quarterback. So we're going to see true freshman Lamar Jackson playing for one of the more talented teams in the country. Running back, Amari Cooper, one of his two receivers, or a ton of talent on defense. So I, Miami, go on a freaking run this year so we can watch you. Michigan, Jalen Smith at linebacker. And they still have, they have Taylor Decker on the O-line and they have Paxton Lynch at QB. Now where it gets interesting, they also have Joe Burrow who looks like he could be the truth. 84 overall is a true freshman, impact development trait, really good abilities, looks like he could be good. They also have Sam Darnold, uh, slightly lower overall, but he's star development trait, true freshman. So they have two studs in behind Paxton Lynch. Running back, they got Saquon Barkley, who looks like he might start this year. I don't know. And then they got wide receiver. They got Debo Samuel, who's their number two wide receiver as a sophomore. Michigan is one of our main teams I would like to see do good. They just, their offense is literally littered with our guys. Let's see them go on some runs here over the next few years. Nebraska. Should have some guys on defense. Yeah, they got Joey Bosa. They should have uh, the other D end as well. I think it was Lawson, right? Did they cut him? There's no way. He must have transferred or something. There's no way they cut him. He was like an 84 or something. I don't know what the cutting, man. It's annoying. Notre Dame, they had Melvin Gordon the last few years. They lost him. They don't, I don't think they have any of our other guys. Ohio State, Todd Gurley left for the draft, unfortunately. Um... Uh, they, they don't have a lot of our guys. They got Clell and Farrell right now in this last recruiting class. That's about it. Oklahoma has Ronnie Stanley. They got uh, Chris Jones. And, man, they have just some talent on O and D line. Because they got Chris Jones and Leonard Williams, who's a 95 senior, as on their D line. That is crazy. Oregon, another team we are going to be keeping our eye on. QB, Deshaun Watson, Josh Allen, both in the room. Please, Herbert. Herbert, do not go to Oregon. Just don't go to Oregon. It would be insane. Running back, they got Joe Mixon as a backup, senior starter right now. I don't think they have any of our receivers. They should. They usually have, they have Josh Garnett, Deshaun. So not as many real-life guys on defense. They do have Jalen Ramsey right now, but Deshaun Watson alone, that is... That is enough to make us want to watch them. Uh, Jalen's starting in the slot, it looks like, for them right now. Stanford, they got Jared Goff, one of the best players in the country. He's a junior. Um, they should have Marcus Peters right now at corner as well. That should be about it for, for real. Oh, and then they have two running backs. They got Nick Chubb and Damian Harris. So they got two of our real-life backs playing, playing with them as well. TCU, wow. A 98 overall sophomore tight end. So that is going to be Patrick Mahomes' main weapon. Sophomore quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. And he, they got Dalvin Cook at wide receiver, or at running back. None of our wide receivers, decent group, but they're tight ends. A 98, and a 90, and an 87. But this guy, this is literally his Travis Kelsey. And he's got a sick running back in Dalvin Cook and Patrick Mahomes as a sophomore. TCU, go on a freaking run. I want to watch you. Texas, this is another super interesting team. They got Alvin Kamara. They got JT Barrett with Kyler Murray and Josh Rosen. JT Barrett's only a sophomore, which kind of sucks. So, I mean, I'd rather watch Kyler, but Josh, JT is a really good player right now. So, we'll just kind of have to see going forward. They do have Alvin Kamara. Uh, they got Laquan Treadwell is one of their main wide receivers, and he's only a sophomore. So Texas, go on a run. I want to watch you. Wisconsin, they got Eddie Goldman. Who was the receiver they got? I don't think he ended up. Yeah, they got DJ Moore, but he ended up kind of being a bust. He was a five-star recruit or four-star recruit. Normal development is 69 overall, so we probably won't see much of him through this whole thing. Quickly, I just want to make sure. So the QBs, we're going to, the teams with the good QBs that we're kind of keeping our eye on. Jared Goff at Stanford, Paxton at my eye. Uh, Michigan, Oregon with Watson, Mariota at uh, Clemson. We have JT Barrett at Texas, Mahomes at TCU, 
Lamar at Miami. I think those are all our starters. Joe Burrow's a backup. That's like seven or eight really good guys on some really good teams. So that is where we're sitting right now, guys. We are going to sim to, oh, there's the Heisman watch, none of our guys. We are going to sim to kind of the midseason point. Look at recruiting. Look at where everyone's sitting. Okay, so here we go. Midseason point. We'll look quickly at recruiting. My biggest thing, Herbert, please don't go to Oregon. Please don't go to get Oregon and get buried. That is all I'm asking for here. So Nebraska gets Jalen hurts i like that no competition as far as real life guys picked him over oregon and clemson but hurts there you go dwayne haskins goes to michigan you're never gonna play so i hope, really hope these guys transfer out and then okay perfect stanford just has a qb just picks him over Oregon and Utah. They literally go from Andrew Luck, Jared Goff. Now they get Justin Herbert. Absolutely sick. Love how that worked out. Running back. Um, Miles Sanders ends up at LSU. So LSU gets their back. Wide receiver DK is going to go to TCU and play with Patrick Mahomes. I hope he ends up being a badass. He could be play with T Mahomes for two years. Wisconsin gets another good receiver in Chase Claypool. Play Claypool going there. AJ Brown still up in the air looking like UNC or Ohio State is his top two and then but michael pittman jr looking like a&m north texas or colorado state for him okay o-line makai becton locked in at michigan best offensive lineman in the class going there tcu gets uh, jonah williams to help protect patrick mahomes elijah vera tucker number one guard is going to go to bama bama locks him up over U usc and stanford landon dickerson goes to ole miss so ole miss gets a really good offensive lineman Ryan Burns goes to Kansas State. Kansas State's been really good through the sim. They get a nice recruit here. Quinn and Williams ends up at Texas Tech. Picks him over Kansas State. They almost got both those two. Then we have Rashawn Evan or Rashawn Gary, and he goes to UNC. So nice pickup for them. And then Florida State gets Nick Bosa. So nice DN for them. Picks it over picks them over Miami and Bama. Then we got Ed Oliver. He picks. He's still up in the air. Could go to Florida State or Nebraska for him. Linebackers. First up, we have Isaiah Simmons. He's going to go to NC State. And then Devin White is going to go to Georgia. Nice, nice pickup for both of them. Cornerbacks. So there's really good corners here. Firstly, we have Clemson getting Travon Diggs. Picks him over Nebraska and Georgia. TCU. TCU's doing great in this recruiting, man. Byron Murphy going to TCU. They're getting, becoming like an elite team. And then we have Jeff Akuda. He is going to go to Oklahoma. So they get him. Then lastly, safety Chauncey Gardner Johnson is going to go to still up in the air, looking like LSU's his main school, though. So that's where we're at with recruiting. Look at the top 25 here. So UW, eight and two, number one team, Texas, Clemson, Michigan. So Clemson, Michigan, looking like they have a good shot to make it. Florida, TCU, eight, no, keep going, TCU. Oregon, four and four. We need them to pick it up. Stanford, six and two. Uh, Alabama, USC, seven and one. So that is where we're sitting right now. No Miami. Miami's so talented and they never like go on runs. I don't know what's going on with them. Heisman watch. Paxton Lynch leading the Heisman race. Marcus Mariota in third. So Paxton could win Natty last year, win the Heisman this year, try to repeat. So Paxton Lynch looks like a baller at Michigan. Quickly just look at some of the stats here. So Paxton Lynch passing for 391 yards a game. I haven't, that's the highest mark we've ever seen. 234 QB rating, 41 touchdowns, five pits. Patrick Mahomes just behind him, 340 yards a game. So those two are on a whole nother level. Jared Goff doing really well, almost 300 yards a game. Marcus Mariota, 27 touchdowns, three picks, 293 yards a game. So all of those guys are absolutely blowing the hell up. Uh, JT Barrett at Texas, 251 a game. Rushing. Alvin Kamara, 590 right now at Texas. Receiving. Debo Samuel, his first year playing as a sophomore, averaging 104 yards a game at Michigan. So absolutely blowing up there. Amari Cooper at Miami. Miami, 90 yards a game as well. Okay, so that's what we're kind of looking like. Now we are just going to sim to conference championship weekend. If there's a good game, we'll watch it. If not, we'll get into the playoff. Okay, conference championship weekend. Colorado up to number five. Texas, Arkansas, Washington, Nebraska, Stanford doesn't look like they're going to make... I guess if they win that game, I think they get a bye. Um, Nebraska, Washington. So nothing really unless we wanted to watch Stanford uh, versus Georgia Tech.
back, but we'll let it rock. Okay, let's look at the bracket here. Cincinnati, so Miami makes it with um, Lamar. Washington, Baylor, Liberty, Colorado, Texas. Lamar, oh, and Clemson, okay. So we could get Clemson versus Texas in the second round. Those were our only QBs to make it, though. It was Miami, but Nebraska, Liberty, Texas, Colorado. Okay, okay. So actually, we should look. I just want to look at the top 25 because I never do this. Like, who didn't make it that had a good record? Because just like Miami made it, Clemson, Michigan just missed it. Oregon missed it. Stanford missed it 10-3 and three after winning the ACC. How does that even work? They're 10-3. and three. Like, why would Cincinnati make it over them? Or even Clemson, honestly. Or mm, Miami, honestly. Why would Miami make it? Odd, weird, but uh, I wish Michigan or Oregon would have made it, but it is what it is. Okay, so we are going to watch Miami here, though. I, I want to watch Lamar Jackson. So there it is. Paxton Lynch wins the Heisman Trophy. 51 touchdowns, 11 picks. They don't make the playoff, though, to try to, you know, defend their title. Though they have had two of the last three Heisman winners. Braxton let won it two years ago. Then he got benched for Paxton. They win the Natty, and then they win the Heisman again. And now they have Joe Burrow going to step in next year, most likely. Okay, so we got Miami Cincinnati. Miami is the better team on paper, um, but we'll obviously see. Okay, we're in Cincinnati, so Miami's on the road for this one. Let's get through the first quarter. Oh, yeah, it's raining, too. You got to think this favors Cincinnati. 3 nothing Miami right now, though. There's a big kickoff return. Second and eight, third and seven. Okay, Cincinnati ball, third and four, fourth and three. They're going to punt. Miami has it on the 20-yard uh, line. Okay, let's see if they let Lamar do something. I think this, this rain is really affecting maybe their game plan a little bit here. But here's Lamar up over the top. That's a touchdown touchdown Lamar Jackson the first pass we ever see him throw is gonna be a touchdown right there just drops it in over the top gonna be 10-3 here Alex Cash gets up over the top Lamar fires it in nice little rainbow drops it in for the score Okay, third and six, Cincinnati. We'll watch this. Tough spot to be in. A lot of talent on this Miami defense. Just a ton of athletes, you know, coming out of that area of the country. So let's see what Cincinnati can do. Up over the top. They beat press this time, and this guy's going to be gone. Wow. Up over the top. Very similar pass as Lamar's. Just beat the press, gets over the top, and gritties on him. That's a 70-yard touchdown pass. All of a sudden, Cincinnati is alive. Third and six, Cincinnati. They don't pick it up. Punt it back to Miami. Second and seven. There we go. 23-yard pass to Amari Cooper. Second and 10. First and goal to the nine. There's another 26-yard gain to Amari. So this Amari-Lamar Jackson connection is looking strong here. 37 seconds left here in the half what do you got for us Lamar drops back bit of pressure throws it in the flats and that is going to be a touchdown so Lamar great drive for the Hurricanes here okay we are going to jump ahead to the fourth quarter sim through 24 10 Miami and that's where we're sitting so 24 10 after I sim that third quarter Miami has a pretty big lead well, 14 point lead but other than that one really long pass. Okay, but Cincinnati's on a drive here. Okay, here's going to be second and goal from the four. Drops back. Kind of a mesh. He's going to leave the pocket. He's going to tuck it and run. You better come meet him. And that's going to be a touchdown. Bearcats. Cut it to seven here with five minutes left. Is Miami going to do something on offense? Are they getting just 10-yard penalty? What? Okay, I don't know what happened there. So, it's yeah, they're down seven. Three-yard rush. Third and four. Fake motion. Lamar drops it in. Okay. Second and eight. Third and ten. After a minus three yard run. Okay, Lamar. They're just going to run the ball straight ahead. He's going to gain five yards. And you're going to punt to Cincinnati. 32 carries for 76 yards for this guy. Second and inches. Third and inches. They pick it up. Second and three. Third and three here. 136 left. Hey, Miami's defense kind of has got to be the ones who win this. I just have not liked what they've been doing offensively to, in this whole fourth quarter. Here's Cincinnati. Over the middle. That's picked. The linebacker stepped him. He might be gone. This is going to be a pick six. Wow. So the defense puts it on ice. Christian Cedar steps in from 43 yard pick six. And that is going to do it. Miami is going to win this one. The U gets it done. Cap it off with a pick six. Okay. Miami advances. Okay. Let's look at the bracket here. So it's going to be Nebraska, Miami. We got Clemson, Texas. That is huge. 
So we got JT Barrett, Alvin Kamara, Laquan Treadwell against Marcus Mariota and Mike Williams, Robert Comdici. So we are definitely watching that game. We got Miami, Nebraska, Liberty, Washington, Oklahoma, Colorado. Okay, so 89 versus 88. These are just two of the straight up most talented teams in the country. JT, sophomore quarterback. Obviously, Marcus Mariota is in his senior season. So a ton of talent on both sides. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're going to go through the first quarter here. It's going to be 7-0 Clemson to start. So sack, third and 10, and then a 36-yard run by Alvin Kamara down to the 15, and then third and inches from the five. So we'll watch here. So JT Barrett, Alvin Kamara in the backfield. They have Laquan Treadwell at wide receiver as well. So a lot of offensive talent here. Here's Barrett. Oh my God, that's a horrible throw into coverage. Picked off by Clemson. So that's our first ever throw we see JT Barrett make. We know they have um, Kyler Murray on the bench as well. So we'll have to see how long. Like I, JT's good, but is he Kyler freaking Murray? Okay, we're going to jump to the next play. Second and 13. Third and 11 here for Clemson. So they're kind of backed up here. You don't want to get too risky with it. We got Mariota in at quarterback. I think that's big Mike Williams at the top of the screen there. Drops back. Fires it. That should have been picked off. Okay, so both quarterbacks. First throw we see are not great. Clemson's going to have to kick this ball off. Texas has it at midfield already. There's a 21-yard rush by Alvin Kamara. Zero yard, And then a 19-yard pass by JT Barrett in at quarterback. Alvin Kamara beside him. Going to run read option. Little pop pass in into the end zone. Wow, great play design there. Little read option. Pass it out to, on the little bubble screen there. 7-7 seven, seven here. Let's see if Clemson can do something. Second and six. First and ten. There's another big game. 20-yard reception. Second and seven third and five on the 36 Mariota just gonna run a little play action boom it gets in the backfield sacked going down on the defense too they have Miles Garrett on Texas I don't think that was Miles Garrett but they do have Miles Garrett they got De'Aaron Payne they have some corners as well so Texas has a lot of talent on their defense second and eight third and five here for the Longhorns I think that's Laquan Treadwell at the top of the, the bunch or the stack there that almost was oh breaks the tackle though that was a dangerous throw by Barrett they do pick it up though second and six first and ten Kamara has had some huge rushes that's like his third 25 plus yard run second and nine third and nine here Drops back. Kamara's going to pass block. Up over the... Oh, my God, man. Barrett has thrown some balls. Just odd, weird balls. So they are going to kick a field goal there. They convert. There's a rush by Mar Marcus Mariota. Picks up 18. And then throws a pick the next play. Texas football. Second and 15. Third and 23, though. So... Mariota throws a pick, but a couple of negative plays here for Texas. So neither offense is playing great. A lot of good defenders on both sides of the ball. Robert Kimdichi is on the D-line here for uh, Clemson. Alvin Kamara. Oh my God, Kamara might be gone. Why do you have two hands on the football? Alvin, what are you doing? Wow. And he's got 172 yards rushing in the first half for Alvin Kamara. And there's an 11-yard pass to Laquan Treadwell. Next play, 17-7. Halftime, 17-7 lead for Texas. We are going to sim 24-7, 20, oh my God. So it's 34-14. Texas is kind of running away with this. Okay, we'll go next play. Fourth and one, punt, kick, Clemson. Can you do something here? Third and one, first and 10, first and 10, second and seven, second and 12, third and nine from the 19. You need a touchdown here though. Field goal really doesn't do much. You know, you can cut it down to a 14 point lead with a touchdown. So maybe you have a shot. Field goal literally does nothing. Up over the top, picked off. That is going to be it. Marcus Mariota in his last college game just does not play very well. 41-21 final. That is it for Marcus Mariota as a Clemson Tiger. JT Barrett and the Texas Longhorns along with, you know, Alvin Kamara, Laquan Treadwell, Miles Garrett, De'Aaron Payne advance um, to the semifinals. 274 yards of offense for Clemson. JT Barrett didn't 
really need to do much. He threw three picks, but it was the Alvin Kamara show. 233 yards, 10 yards of carry. Even their backup running back was doing stuff. Um, receiving Laquan Treadwell had a touchdown, 27 yards. Clemson, big Mike Williams had 34 yards, really didn't do too much. I mean, their, their offense was just bad today. Texas just had an answer for everything that Clemson was trying to do. Okay, let's look at the bracket. I'm hoping Miami advanced. Miami did advance. So we're going to have Texas, Colorado, Washington, Miami. I'm really hoping we get a Texas, Washington final. We are going to sim through this week and then see where we're at. Okay, so let's check it out. And we do, we get Miami, Texas. So Tech, Miami kind of beats up on Washington and Texas kind of beats up on Colorado. So two of the best teams in the country. Most talented Miami nine seed, but on paper, they're just straight up one of the best teams. Let's just quickly look at these rosters because they are both honestly stacked. First up, Miami left tackle, right guard, Jonathan Allen on D-line, Dante Fowler. So two really good linemen, Reggie Ragland, Amari Cooper, and Lamar. Fred Warner, who's I don't even think playing for them. Oh, he is. So their linebackers are Warner, Ragland, DN, Jonathan Allen, Dante Fowler. 290 plus defensive tackles. Nobody in the secondary, I don't think, but man. Then for Texas, middle linebacker, out like JT Barrett, Kyler is his backup. Alvin Kamaro, Ronald Jones is his backup. Laquan Treadwell, one of the, his top receivers. Moving on to defense, Paris, who we see make that nice sack. Miles Garrett, only a redshirt freshman. De'Aaron Payne, one of their D tackles. Adoree Jackson and Dante Jackson, two young corners. And then some nice safeties as well. So, man. Okay, 88-87. My, Texas got a better defense. A little bit better offense for Miami. So, this is going to be a bloodbath here. Okay, we're going to go through the first quarter. 3-0 Texas, so bit of a defensive battle here. Both defenses are very good. Okay, and then Miami gets a 20-yard touchdown. First play of this, this third, second quarter. So 7-3 Miami, Texas ball, second and 13, third and 10. We'll watch here. You got trips to the top, empty. JT drops back, four-man rush, fires over the middle. Wow, great hit, but he holds on. Then they get a four yard rush, third and three, and they don't convert. They're gonna have to punt Miami ball. Oh, and there's a big pass, 22 yard reception for Amari, second and seven, third and 10 from the 22. So let's see if they unleash Lamar a little bit more here. They didn't really let him throw the rock in the first time we watched him. Let's see. Lamar, third and 10. Are they going to just run screen and draw? Or are they going to let you throw? Drop back up over the top, right down the seam. Great throw, great tra catch in traffic. Wow, throws up the U after. Was that Amari? That was Amari for 28. The Amari Lamar Jackson connection is insane. Here we go. First and goal from the four. I, I think Amari's a junior. I really hope he comes back to Miami next year. Okay, going to run a little pop pass here. Gets tackled. Not much. Going to motion the guy out. Got a swing. Going to throw the swing. No, does not follow his back. I do not like this McNabb guy at all, this running back. He seems just ass to me. So Miami's going to be up 10-3 here. Texas ball. Second and eight. Fourth and one. And they punt. Wow. Second and 13. Third and nine for Miami. Going to run. No, fake. Fake Lamar. Oh, that's a pick six. Lamar, you cannot throw that ball. Lamar, you can't throw late across the field. Lamar Jackson, the true freshman, has got his team here. But you can literally not throw that football unless it is completely wide. Like, no, everybody's 20 yards down the field. Lamar with the awful throw. And Texas has not been good offensively, but they jump right back into it here. 10-10. Now, Texas ball or um, Miami ball again, and Lamar gets sacked by De'Aaron Payne. Third and 13. Three minutes left. 10 10. Lamar drops back, fires over the middle, breaks a tackle. Going to be about two yards short, though, and it's going to be Texas football. And a huge punt return. 78. Oh, it was a touchdown. 76 yard punt return touchdown by Texas. Wow. 
absolutely crazy turn of events a 14 point swing here for texas and all of a sudden they have a seven point lead and then we have a couple big plays here for miami second and 14 third and 14 from the 34 so they're close to field goal range i don't know how good their kicker is but you want to go tie this up miami kind of had control the whole first half couple of plays here for texas and they're right back in it lamar has all the time in the world gonna make it a manageable field goal not able to pick up the first down though and you are going to leave texas some time so they they do nail their field goal texas starts out with a 19 yard pass then another 19 yard pass to laquan treadwell then another 15 yard pass down to the 12 and then a 12 yard touchdown to laquan treadwell so i was literally going to start watching the next play but all of a sudden it's 24 13 second and 19 third and 19 fourth and 16 that is going to take us to halftime wow so looked like miami was going to just kind of have control here going into the half and now texas has just taken this game over so we're going to go to the fourth quarter here 24 13 texas still 24 13 fourth and three for miami they're gonna have to punt oh no they kick a field goal so it's 24 16 now so they're down eight texas football second and ten third and nine here for texas so miami has cut it down to a one score game texas jt barrett shotgun here four man rush up over the top drops in that little curl to laquan treadwell nice catch there 13 yards first down second and six after a four yard run third and nine though okay so another third down here for the longhorns trip to the bottom laquan treadwell at top up top four man oh and they break in wow huge sack jonathan allen again i think that's his second sack of the day interior pass rush they get to jt and, and miami has a chance to go tie it with a touchdown and two-point conversion here what do you got for us lamar second and 12 there's a nice pass into nazir waller second and 12 third and 15 so probably not going to get too aggressive lamar has thrown a pick six today he's a true freshman quarterback for miami but let's see lamar drops back kind of slides hit as he throws checks that down it just feels like maybe this is a little too much of a big stage for lamar as a freshman punt that away first and second and four first and ten my uh texas second and eight third and four so if they convert here you can really start to run the ball take time out of the clock and if you get a field goal that'll probably put this one out of reach jt drops back four man rush he's got time but he kind of just throws that away did not find any opening miami's defense is doing its job They've only allowed 17 points the one touchdown was obvious oh no and one was a pick six the other was a punt return for a touchdown so really the miami defense has been incredible now the miami offense oh they're on their own two yard line third and five from their own five so great pump by texas puts them way back in their own end lamar's in shotgun here motion his guy across guessing they're just running oh my god and they lose freaking three yards they've ran the ball 28 times for 69 yards with their running back so their run game is just not good enough they punt already it was actually a nice punt but it was a 17 yard return texas ball on the 41 third and four from the 38 so probably out of field goal range if miami can hold them to zero yards or a loss here you still have a shot a first down here they're going to be able to kick a field goal probably done wow wide open on the corner route it's not over over but it's close here for texas they are on the brink of winning the national championship they just need a field goal here to make it a two score game third and nine two minutes left not this is gonna this play will happen just before the two minute warning they can go to alvin kamara here one of the best running backs in the country and try to pick up a first down go to no gets nothing there once again, Miami's defense has played really well. This is not on them. The offense has just been a little anemic. Fourth and nine. They kick a field goal. It is now a two-score game. Second and ten. They hit a pass there to Amari. Second and eight. Third and six. Fourth and three. So this is it. Game's basically over already, but this will be the final play unless um, Lamar has some magic in him. 
Mar drops back. They're bringing a blitz. Does pick up a first down to Amari Cooper, who has had a nice day. Nice day. I really hope. I think he's a junior. I really hope he comes back next year. Second and 10. Oh, and they do score a 37-yard touchdown. Okay. They get the two-point conversion. So they're down three. Let's watch the onside kick. Who knows? If they get this, they need a field goal. It's alive. No. No. About the worst onside kick of all time. That is going to do it. Texas Longhorns are going to win the national championship. That is it, folks. Texas wins their second natty of the sim. They get it done. Boom. So... Texas has won in 2010 and now this year as well. So this is going to be the last uh, season we do in this video. We have next video still coming up. Don't leave though, because we're still going to do, look at the final recruiting for this year. Look at the kind of end of the year stuff for this season as well. Okay, let's look at the final top 25 here. So we got Texas, Miami, Oklahoma, Washington, Colorado, Wisconsin, Auburn, Oregon just misses out on the playoff, Clemson, Florida State, Michigan, Stanford, Ohio State, UTEP, Charlotte. Heisman winner, we saw Paxton Lynch. Let's get all Americans. Paxton gets it. Is that it for first team? And Ryan Shazier at Florida State. Second team, Marcus Mariota, Leal Collins, Leonard Williams, Jonathan Allen. Freshman. Oh my goodness. Tremaine Edmonds, about it. Okay, let's look at some team stats here. Michigan, number one offense in the country. I can't believe Michigan didn't make it. Clemson, Texas, pretty good as well. Defensively, Western Kentucky, Liberty, Wisconsin, best uh, ranked defenses. Season stats, so passing. Paxton Lynch, 350 a game, 55 touchdowns, 12 picks. Mahomes at TCU, 318 a game, huge year. Jared Goff, 300 a game, 42 touchdowns, 8 picks. All three of the, oh no, Paxton will be gone. The other two could be back. Mariota, he's done, 46 touchdowns, 12 picks at Clemson. Lamar, as a freshman, 28 touchdowns, 9 picks, 255 yards a game. Pretty good year. JT Barrett as a sophomore, first year starter, 43 touchdowns, 14 picks, won the national championship. Deshaun, so they must have really kind of run the ball. 228 yards, pretty decent year, but not incredible. Alvin Kamara led the country in rushing, one of the best players in the country, only a sophomore as well, 1,300 yards. Derrick Henry, just under 1,000. They just don't give him the ball enough at Appalachian State. Receiving Amari Cooper, second in the country in receiving yards, had it seven touchdowns as well. Debo, first year at Michigan, 1,239 yards, 17 touchdowns. So those two had huge years. Laquan Treadwell, 1,000 yards for uh, Texas. I think he's only a sophomore as well. Oh, Tyree Kill, missed him, 1,000 yards at Duke. So he was right there. We're probably never going to get to see Tyreek live, but he did have 1,000 yards this year. Laquan, 1,000 yards. He is only a sophomore, sophomore for Tyreek as well. Defensively, uh, Roquan Smith is a true freshman, one of the best uh, tackle numbers in this, in this season. There's tackles for loss. Here's sacks. There's interceptions. So that's where we're sitting. Okay, we are going to get to National Signing Day here. We'll look at where all our guys ended up and we'll look at the transfer portal. Okay, so here is the transfer por portal first. Uh, TJ Watt leaves Purdue to go to Illinois. So there's the first real guy. Usually there's one, sometimes like three. Cam Robinson leaves Arizona to go to Texas. So they get a nice offensive lineman at Texas. National champions. Looks like it. We'll just look at QBs here. See if there's any. No, nope. I don't know why. I know I say it every time, but I wish the QBs would transfer more. Okay, let's go through recruiting one more time. So Nebraska ends up with Jalen Hurts. Yup. Dwayne Haskins goes to Michigan. And then Stanford ends up with Herbert. I like that fit. LSU is going to get Miles Sanders, the number one player in the class. DK is going to go to TCU. Hopefully do well with Mahomes. Wisconsin gets Chase Claypool. AJ Brown ends up at North Carolina. And then Michael Pittman ends up at North Texas. Offensive tackle. Michigan gets uh, Makai Becton. Jonah Williams ends up at TCU. Alabama gets, um, gets Elijah Vera Tucker. Landon Dickerson ends up at Ole Miss. Defensive ends, Brian Burns ends up at Kansas State. Texas Tech ends up with Quinnen Williams. Rashawn Gary ends up at UNC. And then Florida State ends up with Nick Bosa. Ed Oliver ends up at Nebraska. Outside backers, Duke gets Isaiah Simmons. Devin White ends up at Georgia. 
Cornerbacks, Clemson gets Trevon Diggs. Byron Murphy goes to TCU. Oklahoma gets Jeff Okuda. And then lastly, our safety, LSU gets Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. So that is where we're going to end this season, guys. We got one more episode upcoming for this whole series. Going to be a really good way to end it off. I really like kind of the flow and how everything's going right now. Now, if you guys are playing college, so if you have made it this far, definitely leave a like on this video. Sub if you watch the whole like four hours you might as well sub and if you guys are actually playing college football if you're playing online and trying to win more games i actually have another channel where i actually break down gameplay and how to get better at the game playing against real opponents and just the other day i broke down how to run the chip kelly oregon offense in college football 25 so if you guys want to check that out i will link that right here